a little bit more so we can get a look at this entire warning because as the storm continues moving northeastward, this is going to keep riding up Highway 70, approaching places like Glenwood and areas of southern uh, southern Garland County. So there's a, there's a look at that where it's headed. It's 1253. It'll be moving into Lodi. Let's get a track that includes Glenwood and I want to get a track that also includes Hot Springs. I'm sure the tornado sirens are going off in the city of Hot Springs now. A lot of folks are in town right now for the Arkansas Derby. All those folks who are in town, they need to be at least alerted of what's happening. This storm, it's moving to the north and eastward uh, there. Uh, if we could get a cone track on that, that would get some uh, other locations there on this. Uh, Daisy, Daisy State Park, that's closing in right now on you. Lodi Missionary Baptist Church, Lodi. We've got several churches here on this list. We want to make sure that everybody, you know, we want to make sure that you have landmarks. We want to make sure that you know where this is. So there's the rotation. There's Daisy State Park. The rotation, this is just south of Highway 84. 84 runs parallel to the Montgomery Pike County line. This is in Pike County, but it will continue working its way north and eastward here through northern sections of Pike County and southeastern sections of Montgomery County. We're going to need to zoom out a little bit more here and uh, get a better look at uh, the entire warning that we have in place here, uh, which does include uh, much of Garland County as well. Right now we're still really zoomed in on Pike County. There we go. Uh, so this is going to keep working its way northeastward. Let's get a track. If we can get a cone track on this, Carmen, that'll take it up through Glenwood and make it up into parts of Garland County. So this will include hot springs. This does include hot springs. Uh, the possible tornado, it's already working its way through Daisy. Glenwood, you're up next at about 105. Amity, around 108. And then, of course, from there, it continues working its way northeastward. Plata, Maz Mazarn, I'm probably saying some of these town names wrong, so please just bear with me. Point Cedar, Bismarck, Pettyview, Lake Hamilton. Of course, at that point, you're getting into Hot Springs. Hot Springs, if this storm holds together, and these storms are most capable of hanging on with their strength, Hot Springs, this will be moving in at around 135, perhaps. Give or take about 5 or 10 minutes there, but that's what we're looking at now. For Hot Springs, around 135, Donaldson, around 139, Fountain Lake as well. So we're zooming in a little closer. Uh, you can hit F12 to clear that if you'd like. There we go. Uh, that rotation is just north of Highway 70. And it'll continue working its way north and eastward. And you'll notice that this warning, it's a large warning. It includes hot springs because, you know, this is heading that general direction. A lot of folks from out of town are in town for the derby. So we want to make sure that they have that heads up. So that circulation there, that rotation south of Highway 84 now. This is going to be near County Road 603, working its way north and eastward toward Lodi right now. Uh, is this, can we look at the last few scans of how this has played out since it's been in northwestern uh, Pike County? I think it reached its peak intensity right about right there at 1240. It's 1252 now. It looks like it's weakened a little bit. Let's also look at correlation coefficient. That'll get us a look at the debris in this storm. I believe it may have briefly touched down when it reached that peak intensity back here in northwestern Pike County. Uh, there somewhere along Highway 70. If someone in the newsroom, by the way, we need to be reaching out to uh, crews in Pike County to see if we have any damage confirmed there in northwestern Pike County. So we need to be calling Pike County emergency managers, uh, officials in that area just to get an idea as to what has happened there. So that rotation there, it's still holding together, still warrants a tornado warning. Whether it's still on the ground or not, still hard to say. But y'all, this is a significant day, a day that of course can produce multiple tornadoes. So we need to treat this seriously. It'll continue working its way to the north and eastward. So it'll affect uh, places like Glenwood, Seeger, Plata, as I mentioned, Mazarn, Silver, Point Cedar, Percy, Maddox, as well as Royal Avant Lake Hamilton, eventually at around 1.30-ish there. So there's that circulation. And if we can remove this list here, you might be able to see that circulation a little bit better. It's kind of hard to see because we're so far from the Little Rock radar site. Can we switch to the Shreveport just to see how that looks? Does it look any better? Sure. Can and, and I did want to update. I know, Joel, you just mentioned this too. You were focusing on how that looked a lot tighter rotation a little bit earlier around 1240. That has broadened out. They're going to continue the warning. So they're not dropping the warning. You'll still hear those sirens. Uh, but again, that has broadened, like you said, but as 
far as we know, the warning is still going to continue here uh, for what we're watching currently. All right, thanks, Carmen. Mm -hmm. Let's zoom out a little bit. I want to do a reset. I want to make sure that we are not missing any other warnings. We do have other storms out here that may eventually become tornado warned. Right now, it doesn't look like there's a lot of rotation with the storms that are moving through Yell County, Pike, uh, Perry County, up here into Conway and Eastern Pope counties. Those are severe thunderstorm warnings capable of producing quarter size hail, capable of producing damaging wind and may eventually become capable of producing a tornado. But right now, the only tornado warning we have in place is this one in northern Pike County crossing over into Montgomery County now near Glenwood. This has got a pretty nasty supercellular shape to it. You can see it kind of has that kidney bean shape to it, almost a hook on the backside at times that has closed off and we've seen, uh, you know, what could be a tornado earlier that touched down. Uh, let's let's put that. Let's look at velocity one more time. We're going to look at it many times here through the day. That strengthened just a little bit there to the west of Glenwood, right on the Montgomery County line. We're putting a track on that now. How fast is that moving, Carmen? All right, this is moving 60 miles an hour. Imagine you've got a vehicle going 60 miles an hour up Highway 70. So this is north of uh, days north of Kirby now, really. And that's moving towards Seeger, Plata, Plata, uh, Mazarn, Myers, Percy, Lofton, as well as Royal, Rockwell, and eventually Lake Hamilton around 127. That circulation is right here. Here's Oak Grove Road in southern Montgomery County. That rotation has gotten a little tighter here near Cub Hollow Road. If you are in this part of southern Montgomery County and this part of northern Pike County, this is right there. Is that Killian Loop right there? That's where the possible rotation is. Can we look at uh, debris? Let's see if there's a tornado, if there's any sign of a tornado on the ground. Angels Way, that's where it would be right now. Holmes Bluff. I don't see any indication that we have a tornado on the ground right now, but if we switch back to velocity, you can see this is strengthened again. We believe it may have touched down briefly along Highway 70 just to the west of the Daisy area. This will keep moving toward the north and east. Carmen, if you can, let's pop up so your safe places. I want to make sure that everybody mm -hmm. has an opportunity to look and see uh, where they should go. Uh, again, this is heading toward, and if you can remove the... Uh, if you can remove the tracks there so we can see this a little bit better. So find your safe place. You want to find a sturdy structure, not a mobile home. You want to be in the lowest floor of your home or a sturdy structure. And you want to find that middle of the lowest floor. For some of you, it's a bathroom. But if that bathroom has windows, it's not a good place to be. Uh, you want to find a small room with no windows, no glass in it. Wrap up with blankets, pillows, maybe a mattress. Do something to cover up to protect yourself from flying debris and uh, stay put until you're given the all clear. That rotation just to the north of right over Killian Loop W290. Not exactly sure if that's a road there, exactly what that stands for, but for those of you who live there, you probably know what that means. That's gonna take it north and eastward. Let's take you, let's take you a little farther northeast. I wanna get some of these street names or road names. Thunder Mountain Road, Glory Mountain Road, north of County Road 185, right there in southern Montgomery County, northern Pike County. That'll keep moving north and eastward. So Glory Mountain Road, Mountain View Road, south of Slate Mill Road, or really around Slate Mill Road, I want you to be in your safe place, away from windows, lowest floor, site-built home, not a mobile home. You want to be in a site-built home. And by the way, if you're watching us from another part of Arkansas, we do have a significant risk for tornadoes today. You want to make sure that you are within steps of that safe place in case a tornado warning does eventually come out. So places like Seeger and Welsh here very soon or like like within the next few minutes, this will be moving through your area. So there's the rotation right here that's moving to the east and northeast toward Thunder Mountain Road. And uh, like I said, that'll keep working its way to the north and east. So it'll be kind of, it almost looks like it's trying to run parallel to Highway 70. There's Highway 70 here. Uh, Glenwood is just uh, to the east of there. Uh, so here's your rotation and you can see that is going to be trying to take it up into southeastern um, Montgomery County. So uh, again, that is a tornado warning that will go until 115 and it looks like they're going to hold on to that warning. I would imagine Carmen that this rotation may not make it to hot springs by the time this warning is expiring, so they may issue a new one at some point. Uh, here's a look at some of the towns that are going to be in the track of this storm. 
Glenwood, Seeger, Plata, Mazarn, uh, Silver, Myers, Percy, Lofton, all of those places between now and about 125. So make sure you're in the lowest floor of your home away from windows. Uh, if you're watching us from another place and you have family and friends in this part of southeastern Montgomery County, along Highway 70 there between Daisy and Kirby, as well as Hot Springs. Go ahead, give them a call. Maybe take a picture of this screen and send it to them. In fact, let's go ahead and get some safe places up here again. I want to make sure that everyone knows exactly where that safe place would be in your home. You're going to need to find a sturdy structure and go to the middle of the lowest floor. The middle of the lowest floor and by a sturdy structure we're not talking about mobile home mobile homes are mobile because they can easily be moved mother nature can easily move your mobile mobile home so you need to be in a uh, in a site built home lowest floor away from windows you want to avoid these places cars and trucks i would not want to be driving along highway 70 right now as this rotation works its way along mobile homes I know that those are, you know, affordable places to live most days of the year, but on a day like today, they can become death traps. So we want to make sure that we are staying safe and being in a, in a site built home, lowest floor away from windows in that interior room, though, that's where oftentimes the walls are less likely to collapse if you do get hit by a tornado. So there's where that circulation is right there near Angels Way, Killian Loop. I would imagine we'll probably have a new scan update here very soon. I would imagine this is probably near Thunder Mountain Road by now as this continues working its way to the east and northeast. So there's Glenwood right here, Mountain View Road, Thunder Mountain Road, Slate Mill Road. I want you in your safe place away from windows. Treat all these tornado warnings seriously, folks. This is the first storm that's really gotten into our area that's produced a uh, possible tornado and it's already showing some significant signs of strengthening there. So I think this rotation now, it's looking a little bit broader. What that means is, rather than the rotation being really concentrated and tightly packed like you would expect for a tornado to actually be happening, it's a little bit more broad. And so that tells me maybe it's not on the ground, but it's trying. And it has, at one point, we believe, maybe touched down briefly over northwestern Pike County, still waiting to get word from local officials there in Pike County as to whether we actually saw a tornado or not. But for those of you who are under this tornado warning right now over southeastern Montgomery County and in right here in Garland County, we want you in your safe place and just hang on there until you're given the all clear. There is also a part of far north, uh, far western Hot Spring County that is included in this. That includes the Highway 70 corridor, you know, where Highway 70 comes out of Montgomery County into Hot Spring County briefly before it gets into Garland County. That area right there is under the warning. I think this is going to stay mostly north of Highway 70 or it's going to run right along Highway 70. Carmen getting another track on this. We'll get a list of names here for you for towns that it'll be heading to. Glenwood, Seeger, Welsh, Mazarn, Old Bonnerdale, that's another town we haven't seen pop up here. We want to make sure that you're covered as well. Myers, Percy, Maddox, Royal by around 124. Avent, 127. Rockwell at around 123. That'll keep working its way toward Hot Springs, perhaps right at or a little after 130. So looking at that again, it's broadened out a little bit, but we still have that rotation here on the back side of the supercell thunderstorm. You're probably seeing some hail up here to the south of, uh, I believe that is Highway 270 here. There's probably some large hail within that core, but the rotation is going to be just to the north of Glenwood. This is a tornado warning. If you're just joining us, you're watching Arkansas Storm Team team coverage. I'm here alongside Chief Meteorologist Carmen Rose, as well as Meteorologist Juliana Cullen. We're tracking a thunderstorm that is capable of producing a tornado. That rotation there is over south central or southeastern sections of Montgomery County. There's Caddo Gap. This is going to be just southeast of Caddo Gap. The possible tornado or the rotation that may tighten up and produce a tornado, it's working its way through southeastern Montgomery County. And it's going to be following or generally staying just to the north of Highway 70. And this will eventually work its way over into um, Garland County. So the question is, does this strengthen? Does it warrant a new tornado warning? Because it's 103 right now. This warning will be expiring at about 115. So we're going to be watching it. Of course, keeping you updated here along the way. Again, that's a tornado warning for Garland. Far extreme western sections of Hot Spring County, Montgomery County. That's the southeast part of the county. Pike County, 
right now that rotation is kind of right on the county line pretty soon. I would imagine Pike County will eventually be dropped from this tornado warning. So again, tornado warning for until 115 that is tracking toward the north and east and uh, eventually going to make its way into uh, Garland County and maybe just sideswipe that northwest or far western corner of Hot Spring County. You see how Hot Spring County has a panhandle there that northwest corner. So if you hear the sirens going off in Malvern right now, it's not affecting you just yet. That's going to stay north and west of you. But uh, back here, just north and west of Bismarck, we're going to be watching for you. So these towns here, I'm going to step out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, Seeger, Welsh, Plata, Mazarn, Myers at about between now and about 120. Now, by the time the storm gets to Mazarn, this tornado warning will have expired. So the question is, is the National Weather Service going to issue a new tornado warning that will include areas a little bit farther to the east and northeast into Garland County? So there's that supercell right there. This is a supercellular thunderstorm. This is one that's really just getting started. It's moving into that level three risk zone. And uh, so for that reason, it is going to likely continue strengthening. Carmen, let's go to the state view. I want to look at this whole picture and let people know where we stand right now. We have a line of several thunderstorms here moving through parts of the River Valley. There is a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Conway County, Van Buren County. That's a severe thunderstorm warning. It does not have a uh, rotation. Well, it may have rotation with it. Uh, let's zoom in a little closer to that, Carmen, and get a little uh, better idea. Uh, that storm there capable of probably producing some hail and damaging wind. It's approaching Culpeper. Let's go a little farther south and west toward that storm that's coming up out of Yell into Perry County. That storm, let's get velocity on it. I want to make sure there's no rotation with that as it moves into Perry County because this is going to be probably to the south of Ola right there along the county line. A little bit of rotation. We're going to have to watch that as it continues to track toward Perryville. Uh, not a lot of rotation, but we're going to be watching it. Now, Carmen, let's go farther south. We want to make sure that we're getting this covered here. Uh, and by the way, here in a moment, we need to show that tornado watch again. I want to make sure everybody across the rest of the state is covered. So we're tracking a tornado warning that goes until 115. And uh, that rotation right now should be just north of Highway 70 near Glenwood. By the way, if you have any family and friends in this area and you're watching from somewhere else, go ahead, take a picture of the screen, give them a call and uh, tell them, hey, you need to be in your safe place there along Highway 70. If you live in Glenwood, Mazarn, some of those areas there south and west of Hot Springs, that rotation is near Bumblebee Road, Seeger right now, Cato Point or Cato Point Road, I'm sorry, Caddo Pond Road and uh, Welsh, that general area there. That is where you have that rotation. It looks pretty broad right now. I, you know, the question is, is it producing a tornado right now? Maybe not at the moment, but it has at one point it looked like it tried to produce a tornado and it may continue to do so or it may try to recycle as it continues working its way back toward the north. Really quickly, since this has broadened out a little bit, let's uh, zoom out just a minute. I want to show that tornado watch that's in place right now because this tornado watch is a bit more switch urgent than most one. tornado. If we can switch to max one, we have our tornado watch that's loaded on that map there. Uh, this is a tornado watch and it is not your run of the mill tornado watch. This is a particularly dangerous situation. We talked about this during the noon show earlier and we're going to be talking about this through the afternoon. This is a special tornado watch on a day that is exceptionally capable of producing tornadoes and this includes most of the state of Arkansas. So we're really just getting started. Hopefully Hopefully we don't have any more tornado warnings, but I think you and I both know that that's probably not going to be the case. Let's go back. We got to talk about that tornado warning right now that's in effect for southeastern Montgomery County working its way up Highway 70 here toward Hot Springs. Let's zoom in a little closer. That rotation may have tightened up a little bit more, Carmen, here to the north and east of Glenwood. So right there is where we're talking here. There's a uh, town or street names, Old Caddo uh, Road or C Old Caddo Gap Road. That rotation is going to be right in that general area. Pigeon Roost Road right around well strong inflow winds again this is a tornado warning that goes until 115 and is tracking toward the north and east here soon going to be affecting old Bonnerdale that's on the very southwest corner of Garland County so that rotation is right there Carmen if you can let's pull up uh, let's pull up uh, the uh, debris mode of radar 
And you can see that is some tight rotation. Let's take this a little bit more seriously. Starting to question whether this is trying to produce a tornado uh, right now. I don't see indication of that yet, but this is certainly tightened and we're going to continue tracking this for you. Mazarn, Old Bonnerdale, you're under this tornado warning that goes until 1:15. This warning will be expiring according to the National Weather Service in the next little bit, but I wouldn't be shocked if they allow it to extend a little bit farther because this is restrengthened here over southeastern Montgomery County. As it gets out of Montgomery County, it's going to continue tracking toward Hot Springs. Now, Hot Springs right now, you're right on the edge of that tornado warning, but you've been included in the tornado warning that was for uh, Montgomery County because you know, this is a, this is moving in that general direction. The storm is expected to intensify as it gets into this environment more capable of producing a tornado. So old Bonnerdale, that'll be reaching you at about 113 Myers, Percy between then and 120, then Maddox at around 120. So let's find our safe place. Carmen, let's get some safe places listed up here on your screen. Uh, again, uh, find a sturdy structure and go to the middle of the lowest floor and uh, find a room with no windows. Uh, you don't want to be in a room. If a bathroom has a window, you don't want to be there because that glass, if it breaks, it becomes a projectile and that can be extremely dangerous. Uh, you want to find a small room, no windows, wrap up with blankets and a pillow and, uh, you know, that could protect you from flying debris. You may also want to even put on a helmet. I know that sounds silly, but athletes use helmets and bikers and whatnot. They use helmets to protect themselves from, you know, head trauma. So we want to make sure that we're protecting ourselves from what could be flying debris here with this possible tornado. Let's look at debris mode. This has looked a little bit more stout. I'm seeing your uh, something over there that looks pretty menacing to me. Uh, right now, not seeing debris. Let's switch to the rain mode of radar really quickly because what I'm seeing is what we call a bounded weak echo region. And for to put this in layman's terms, when we look at the rain mode here, if we can zoom out just a little bit right there, donut hole. That's where we have that rotation. It is pulling that precip around the rotating updraft. So this may become what we call occluded. It may choke off the rotation for a little bit and then re-strengthen it. But right now, if we have a tornado, it's probably near Old Caddo Gap Road, near Pump Station Road as well. This is southeastern Montgomery County. If you're just joining us, there's Highway 70. Seeger is here. Welsh is here. The possible tornado is near Old Caddo Gap Road and is tracking to the north and east toward Mazarn. It is strengthened a little bit in terms of rotation and it's moving into an environment that is capable of uh, sustaining these tornadoes. So let's uh, take the safe place uh, wording down before we pop up the uh, town names. Uh, you definitely want to avoid cars and trucks. You don't want to be driving down the road in this event there. Mobile homes as well. Uh, again, this is moving to the east northeast toward Bonnerdale at 116. Myers at 119. That'll be making it to Percy at around 121. Oma probably moving into your area around 122. Now, like I said, the National Weather Service will likely be issuing a new tornado warning. And Carmen, we have new information right now. Carmen, what do you have? No, that's that's precisely it too. More than likely this tornado warning is going to be reissued here because that rotation is still indicating that. We also want to point out too, uh, Southwest Arkansas, uh, it's of course environment and more than likely this did touch down this cell that's producing that rotation, that tornado. And so it's still moving into an environment, of course, that is very favorable for that. So we we still need to watch what's coming out of southwest Arkansas. National Weather Service is watching that very closely for that rotation. And again, of course, the warning that we're watching currently still seeing enough of that rotation that will likely have a downstream warning that's going to be issued because of that. So uh, this is still a very serious situation. We're really in kind of the peak and the height of this where we're starting to see that rotation. Again, the storm that we've been watching that is south and west of Hot Springs more than likely did produce that tornado. We need confirmation of that, but uh, based off of what we're seeing and what we've been tracking. That's what likely happened. Joel. Yeah, thanks, Carmen. Again, that would have been over northwestern sections of Pike County. Pike County, at least for right now, you're not uh, in that. Well, let's zoom out just a minute. Let's clear these town names really quickly. We've got a new tornado warning that's been issued here. This is including the city of Hot Springs. The original one did include Hot Springs, but this new one has been repositioned because it does look like maybe it's trying to turn right a little bit. Would you agree with that? It's been taking that northeasterly track. Now it may be trying to take more of an east northeast track. Lake Hamilton, Hot Springs. We got to watch this, y'all. This could be moving right up your general direction. Hot Springs, if this, if this strengthens, 
That could be a tornado or certainly some strong gusty winds that will be moving through Hot Springs right around 138. Again, this is a brand new tornado warning for southeastern Montgomery County until 145. This is going to be moving out of Montgomery County soon and riding right along or just north of Highway 70. So if you live along Highway 70 in Garland County, west of Hot Springs, you need to be in that safe place. Let's clear the screen and now let's get some safe. I want to show you where that safe place is. Let's talk about that. If you live in a mobile home and whether you are in this tornado warning or not, if you live in a mobile home, now's the time to seek a more sturdy structure so that you're within steps of that safe place. But if you're in this tornado warning, you need to be there now. You need to be in a sturdy structure. Like I said, not a mobile home. You need to be in a site built home with a sturdy structure in the middle of the lowest floor. A lot of times that's a closet, a bathroom. If that bathroom has window, it's not a room you want to be in. This circulation right now is 22 miles to the west southwest of Hot Springs. So Hot Springs. This is getting closer to you. This has actually maintained its rotation for a little while since it may have touched down briefly over northwestern Pike County. We're talking about this rotation now that is closing in on Bonnerdale and Old Bonnerdale there, right there where Hot Spring County, Garland County, and Montgomery County come together. So it's moving to the east northeast. It seems like it's going to be riding right along Highway 70. Old Bonnerdale, this is moving in right about now. Percy at about 123. That'll be moving through Oma at 124. Maddox at 125. Lofton. If you know where Lake Hamilton Primary School, it'll be in that general area at about 128. Royal 129. Petty View 131. Rockwell Lake Hamilton at about 134 to 136. This is a tornado warning that goes until 145 p.m. And unfortunately, the second of what will likely be other tornado warnings to come. So this tornado warning does include Garland County. It includes Hot Springs. The tornado sirens are likely going off in Hot Springs, the city of Hot Springs, and they should be because you are in the direct line of this rotation here. That rotation is near Dollar Road. I would imagine it's probably already over Old Bonnerdale right now. Um, if we can get the name of some of these streets here is that Yukon Pass there, uh, southwestern Garland County, Yukon Pass, that general area that's moving northeast. There's Caddo Gap Road here in southwestern um, Garland County. So this rotation is right over Old Bonnerdale. We've got a little bit of a hook echo with this system that's over southwestern Garland County, and that is taking it now right north and eastward, almost right along Highway 70. Here's Percy. Let's get Hot Springs on the radar here. And uh, repeat that one more time. Uh, okay, we've got a live look right now. This is going to be Highway 270, I believe, the bypass there in Hot Springs, just north of Lake Hamilton. You can see those dark clouds there. The rotation with this storm is still about... I would say about 20 miles to the west southwest. It was about 22 miles uh, southwest just a little while ago. Uh, and right now, that's moving your general direction. So all of these vehicles here, folks who are driving in Hot Springs, I would go ahead and find that sturdy structure, get to the lowest floor away from windows, and stay there until you're given the all clear. This is a tornado warning that's going to go until 145 for Hot Spring Hot Springs, the city of Hot Springs. Now, Hot Spring County, that's going to be right on the northwest tier. So Bismarck is right in here. It's just north of Bismarck. There's a rotation near Bonnerdale, and that keeps moving to the east and northeast. So Hot Springs right around 140, 141. We need to be in our safe place. And if you have family and friends who are visiting Hot Springs today, Getting ready for the big Arkansas Derby. Uh, if they're in Hot Springs, you might want to give them a call. They may not be paying attention to the weather. Don't assume that your friends are paying attention to the weather today. This is a serious, uh, serious active day. We have a PDS tornado watch in effect. What does PDS mean? That acronym means particularly dangerous situation. This is, this is the first tornado warning of what could be multiple, and we expect more today. Carmen. I just want to give you a heads up, Joel. We're going to be moving the radar around a little bit. We obviously have that active tornado warning that does include hot springs in Lake Hamilton, but they are likely going to issue a new tornado warning for that storm that we were monitoring up closer to Perryville. Okay. That's just north of that tornado warning. So Joel's pointing it out right now. Uh, so we need to watch that very closely uh, again for that. As soon as that's issued, I'll change over the radar. We're going to be balancing back and forth between these two storms, yeah. just so everybody knows. All right, we're going to be watching these two storms. We have one supercell that's coming out of Montgomery County. 
County moving into Garland County rotation, I believe is probably farther east of where this is showing it now. It's probably to the south of Myers moving to the east northeast. Percy, you need to be in your safe place. You should have been in your safe place earlier, uh, but certainly want to be in your safe place now along 70 heading toward Hot Springs and bear with me Garland County. I'm going to have to move to another storm that has just been tornado warned. There will be multiple of these today. Uh, this is a new tornado warning now for Perry County and Southern Conway County. So this uh, is around Applin. Uh, tornado warning goes until 2 o'clock. Can we switch over to the rain mode? I want to get a look at that really quickly uh, and get that tornado warning a little more centered so we can get a look. Where is that rotation? Is that there we go? So we've got that hook echo that is right there as a very well pronounced hook. Let's zoom in a little closer to Homewood Applin right there. So this is Arkansas Highway 10 that is around uh, Homewood. We need you in your safe place. Applin safe place Highway 60 that possible rotation or that rotation. This is clearly a hook that's moving in. That's going to be moving to the east and northeast here through the Washita Mountains. So this is going to be moving uh, toward Adana Cherry Hill. Perry, Opolo, Ada. Now, right here, this is Moralton. You've got Pettigene State Park. This should stay mostly to the south and east of Pettigene, but there is a hail court. And by the way, a strengthening area of rotation there near Applin. So let's get a track on this really quickly. That is rotation near Applin. And while I rem while I talk about this, remember Hot Springs, you're still under that tornado warning. We're going to be bouncing back and forth between these multiple storms, but Applin, Cherry Hill, Perryville, Perryville High School. This will be moving into that general area at around 132. Lowest floor away from windows and not in a room with glass. Let's let's get some safe places up here really quickly, Carmen. Let's clear that list real quick and get those safe places up there. So you want to find a sturdy structure, not a mobile home, a sturdy structure away from windows in the middle of the lowest floor. Uh, find that safe place and wrap up in blankets, pillows, put on a helmet if you have to. I know it sounds silly, but your head is a very vulnerable part of the body. We want to make sure it is taken care of. Is that? Let's zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to want another scan on this. Applin, I need you in your safe place. Areas there around Cherry Hill Loop. That may be a tornado there on the ground here in Perry County near Applin, moving toward the east northeast. This is going to be riding kind of generally along Highway 60 from Applin back over here toward Perryville, perhaps. There's Perryville. There's Applin. Adana is on Highway 10 there. A lot of very low cell signal in that area. We want to make sure that everybody has a uh, that is likely a do we have confirmation from the, I believe that may be a tornado that's trying to be on the ground yeah. if not already. Yes. So that's in Perry County. Let's zoom out and get a little more perspective as to what we're looking at here. There's Deer Haven Road, County Road 18. This is right there. Very strong or at least uh, decent rotation there to the west of Cherry Hill. It's hard to say whether this is actually on the ground. In terms of debris mode, we're seeing some signs of it. It doesn't look like a clear sign that we have a tornado on the ground, but I'm not trying to play with any of these storms today. I think we should be in our safe place. If you live in Adana, Perryville, Perryville High School, that area needs to be in your safe place. And I know that a lot of schools are letting out early. Starting to get to that point, you don't want to have kids out on the, those buses in this situation. Uh, Perry, Sweet Home, Opelow by around 134. Houston, Moralton at around 138. Houston, that'll be around 136. It'll be moving into your area. Moralton. That may actually stay. Let's see. This is moving this direction. Moralton's right up here. It may stay south of Moralton, but uh, let's keep an eye on it. St. Anthony's Hospital in that general area, New Dixie, Stormy Point. Uh, that rotation is right there to the east of Applin. I do want to take you back to the south and take you to this stronger circulation. Now we need to get in there a little closer here over Southern Garland County. We've still got some rotation. It looks like it's strengthened a little bit. Let's take this. Let's look at how this has evolved in time. We need to zoom out just a little bit there. Uh, we're looking at hot springs there. This is rotation that is now just west of you. Hot springs, hot springs. You're running out of time. You need to be in your safe place. Let's hope this isn't on the ground, but if it does touch down, we're not going to have a lot of time. Uh, you need to go ahead, be in that safe place because if this touches down, it could happen quickly. So it's moving through Chandler right now, Lake Hamilton Primary School. It's in that general area around 126, so in about three minutes there. Royal, 127. Rockwell, Gardner Magnet School, Hot Springs. This is moving in there at 137. So there's your rotation right there along Highway 70. This is going to be closing in on the bypass there here very soon. So 
We're going to keep watching that hot springs uh, again, that rotation. And this is a separate cell. If you're just joining us, we're tracking two tornado warnings, one in Perry County, one in Garland County. Here's Maddox, here's Chandler, here's Hassan Road, here's Forest Ridge Road. That's where the rotation is now. That's going to be moving toward Miles Clear Cut Road, uh, Timberlake Road, Hemp Wallace, that area, North Moore Road. And that's going to be taking it eventually, unfortunately, right through the Hot Springs area. You can see how that is approaching Hot Springs. There's Rockwell. All right, Hot Springs. I, it's going to be tough to say whether this, I can't guarantee that this doesn't strengthen and touch down at some point before it gets into Hot Springs. So let's be in our safe place. Let's not take any chances. Hot Springs, this is a very active day, a day that could produce multiple tornadoes. I hope this one's not doing that now, but it is, you know, if we have a storm out there that's trying to produce a tornado, this is one of the two right now. So Rockwell at 132, 135 should be around Health Park Hospital. Hot Springs at 137. Uh, again, that's a tornado warning. Uh, until 145 here for Garland County. This is a list of towns where it could be affecting or locations, landmarks here. We have a roll cloud. Uh, do we have an image of that? Just wanting to let you know there is a wall cloud that has been spotted with this warning. So, so. what a, a wall yeah. cloud is, uh, you know, you have a wall cloud that's kind of at the base of your supercell thunderstorm, the storm that is capable of producing a tornado, and that wall cloud is usually seen before the tornado uh, lowers from that wall cloud. So uh, we definitely have uh, that. And by the way, here in the bottom right corner of your screen, we have another storm that we're tracking up into Perry County, a tornado warning there until 2 o'clock. And that, by the way, let's get in a little tighter on that. That looks like it's tightening up a little bit as it approaches Perryville. Perryville, you need to be in your safe place as well as hot springs. That rotation is right there just to the east of Applin. Let's look at Velo uh, we're looking at velocity now. Let's get a look at debris and make sure that hasn't touched down. We're also looking at a very mountainous area here. It's hard to say whether that's a tornado on the ground. I'm not really seeing indication of that right now, but it may have touched down briefly. In fact, right there, that's possible, very possible, and that's moving to the east, northeast toward Perryville. Let's put a track on that really quickly uh, and get some town names up here. That's moving generally along uh, this road here, Cherry Hill, Perryville. Uh, I know we have two maps up here at the same time. I think that might get a little confusing because we're looking at the same one uh, over here. Uh, but from Adana back over here toward Perryville, that's going to be tracking toward the east, northeast, and eventually may take it into Conway. Uh, let's uh, look at this a little bit more. So this is going to be moving toward Perry at around 135, Sweet Home, 136, 139 at Opelo, and then Houston at 140. And shortly after that, Moralton, I think this may actually stay south of you. Here's Conway, by the way, behind this list of names. This is going to be moving that general direction. So right now, let's keep it on this wider view, and let's take this double box down real quickly because we've got, I want to show both of these warnings here at the same time. Oh, we've got two, three, we have three tornado warnings now. Let's zoom in on this one. This is a brand new one here. Northern Conway County, getting into Van Buren County. This is south of Clinton. I think we already can tell this is going to be a busy day. Let's zoom in a little closer. This is a tornado warning until two. Zooming in a little closer here, southeast of Claude. That is rotation that is uh, right there along Highway 9, coming out of northern Conway County and crossing over at Formosa. That's going to be tracking north and eastward toward Highway 65 south, right around Choctaw, uh, and moving north and eastward. Let's get a track on that really quickly. That, of course, also taking on that notorious hook shape as it tracks north and east, south of Culpeper, right around Formosa. So let's get some town names on this. This is Culpeper at 135, Choctaw 139, lowest floor away from windows in a room without windows. You don't want to be near any glass in case this is hitting uh, nearby where you live. Ozark Health Medical Center, that'll be near you around 141, 142 in Clinton. So Clinton, Need you in your safe place. You're under a tornado warning. Uh, let's see. There's that rotation right there coming out of Conway County. Clinton is right in there, correct? That would be Clinton. So this may stay right south of Clinton, but we want Clinton in your safe place. Fairfield Bay, you are in the line of that storm. So to recap, we have three tornado warnings active right now. One of those here over Garland County, another one here over Perry County, and another one coming out of Conway County, 
crossing over into Van Buren County. Uh, this one that's in effect for Cleburne, Conway, Stone and Van Buren County, uh, that will go until 2 o'clock. So let's get a look here. Uh, let's get a little closer to Hot Springs because that's closing in on Hot Springs now. We've got that one. You can see there's a hook and it is taking on that shape. Let's look at velocity here. Uh, there's Hot Springs. Velocity, you've got the rotation here back to the west of town. So this is getting closer to the bypass to the west side of town near Rock, uh, Rockwell. What's that? We have a funnel cloud reported and uh, seen here over southern Garland County. So Hot Springs, I need you in your safe place. Now right now we don't have conf confirmation it's on the ground, but we have a, a funnel cloud with it. And it'll be moving over Hot Springs here around 140. You can see several landmarks here listed on your screen. Garland County Community College at around 136. Gardner Magnet School around 137. St. Joseph's Mercy Health Center around 139. Hot Springs proper at 140. Libby uh, Memorial Physical Center, you can see that'll be around 141. And several other landmarks here listed on your screen. If you are in Hot Springs or the area surrounding, we need you in your safe place. Lowest floor, away from windows, not a room with windows. Let's go over those safe places one more time. Let's zoom in, uh, zoom out just a little bit more. There's where that rotation is near Hemp Wallace, near Chapman Road. Moving to the east northeast in this area of southern Garland County and if you are under a tornado warning because we do have multiple out there, find a sturdy structure, not a mobile home. You want to be in the lowest floor of your home away from windows uh, on the lowest floor. Find that room with no windows wrap up with blankets, a pillows, a mattress, whatever it takes, maybe even a helmet to protect your head as this rotation closes in on hot springs. It is broad rotation right now. I don't see signs of an actual tornado on the ground, but we have gotten reports of a funnel cloud. So if it hasn't touched down, it may be in the development phases right now. So North Moore Road that's kind of moving through your area now, Ranchero Place, uh, as well as uh, some other spots here along Highway 70 and areas just north Westgate ter uh, Terrace. Candleberry Circle, Rock Creek Road. That's uh, on the west side of Hot Springs. That rotation is going to be closing in on Hot Springs just like that, kind of following Highway 70 from Hemp Wallace up to Rockwell to Hot Springs. So be in your safe place there. Uh, one more track on that, and we're going to need to take you a little farther north to Perry County. We've got another tornado warning that's active right now there. So Hot Springs around 143. And by the way, brand new tornado warning here for Pike County. Let's zoom out just a second before we talk about that one in Pike County. I want to just make sure that we have all of these listed. If you're watching us from home, bear with us. There are multiple tornado warnings in effect right now in the KRK and Fox 16 coverage area. This is uh, Van Buren County, Western Cleburne County. Tornado warning there until 2 o'clock. Another one here that's coming out of Perry County crossing over into Conway County. That goes until 2 o'clock there. Another one here for the city of Hot Springs, which goes until uh, 145. That is for Hot Sp uh, for Garland County, and it's closing in on Hot Springs. And let's zoom in a little closer on this one coming out of Pike County. Uh, this is an area that was under a warning a while ago, and here we have another one here. This is going to be in northern Pike County, that rotation there right along Highway 70 to the south and west of Glenwood. Let's look at velocity. It's going to be in a really tough area to look at because you're so far from both Little Rock and Shreveport radar sites. But this is the second tornado warning you've been under in Glenwood, and we want you to be in your safe place again. I know you're probably going to get tired of getting in your safe place. You'll probably have multiple warnings today. Treat them all seriously, please. By the way, Hot Springs, this rotation is strengthened a little bit. That rotation is near Rockwell, and it looks like it's going to maybe stay. It's going to come really close to Hot Springs. I hope this doesn't touch down. That's going to be near Thornton Ferry. It's right over Thornton Ferry Road now. Bull Bayou Road, Weston Road. Coming into that loop here around Hot Springs, so uh, that's going to be moving in. Like I said, I've been saying this for a little while, but Hot Springs, you need to be in your safe place right now. Uh, and if you know anybody who's out driving around in Hot Springs, tell them to get inside a sturdy structure away from windows, an interior room. Uh, this is coming into the north side, west side, really, west and north side of Hot Springs. But if you're in Hot Springs, whether on the south side, north side, doesn't matter. Get in your safe place. Let's uh, ride this out. That rotation is right around Bull Bayou Road now. Let's zoom out a little bit. I want to look at the uh, let's look at the rain mode real quick. 
Let's look at rain mode. That rotation is right there. You can see the hook with it. Now let's switch to the correlation coefficient. That's going to be your debris mode. We have a tornado on the ground here just northwest of Hot Springs. Tornado warning right now, Hot Springs. You need to be in your safe place. This tornado is on the ground near Highway 227 at Mid-America Boulevard. Let's get a track on that that is tracking toward the east-northeast black Black Snake Road, I believe, Cedar Glade Road, safe place now, lowest floor, away from windows. Let's get those safe places listed here on your screen. Let's first get a list of places. This tornado on the ground now, just outside of Hot Springs, Linden Park at around 136, 138 at Jones Elementary School, and then Euclid, uh, Euclid Heights at 140. All of these places need to find your safe place. Take a picture of your screen right now and send it to anyone who is listed on this list here. You want to find that sturdy structure, not a mobile home. You want to be in a house that is built uh, on a foundation, middle of the house, lowest floor. Again, this is a tornado on the ground near Highway 227, north of 270 there. That is obviously a tornado on the ground. We're looking at the debris indicator. Here's Black Snake Road, Cedar Glade Road. That's going to be tracking to the east northeast, so it's going to probably stay north of downtown Hot Springs, but you need to be in your safe place. Hot Springs proper. That is really close. This is a tornado on the ground near Bull Bayou Road, working its way east northeast. West Mountain Drive. Let's get into this community right here, just on the north side of Hot Springs. And by the way, we have multiple tornado warnings in place right now, so we're going to be jumping around from one to the other. Carmen. I know it, that does look like that debris ball on radar. That has not been confirmed that it's on the ground, but based off of the reading, what we're get, getting, that's what it looks like. Still something to be taken very seriously, but we do not have confirmation that it is physically on the ground right now, just outside of Hot Springs, but still wanted to take it just as seriously. So Joel just wanted to give you that update. But what we're looking at right now on the debris indicator does show that a tornado is likely on the ground. So we need to treat this as such northern part of Hot Springs here. There's uh, Hot Springs downtown. If this isn't on the ground right now, it touched down very briefly right there because that does co-locate. Let's switch over to the velocity mode. I want to show you how that blue spot clear. Zoom in a little closer here. You can see where that is right there. And if we look at the rain mode, you will see where that is co-located with the hook that is moving into hot springs there. So we really need to be in our safe place at highway, really right along highway 70. And by the way, this is going to eventually work its way over along highway 70 over into parts of Saline County. You can see a very clear hook. Let's look at let's look at debris mode one more time because we're going to get another scan here soon. And if we see another scan showing the same thing, we've got a tornado that's still on the ground here just to the north of Hot Springs. That's moving. Generally, you can see it right there. We had a scan there. We got another one there. This is a confirm. I know that they're probably not saying it in the chat yet, but this is very obvious debris signature there that is moving through the north side of Hot Springs. So this is going to be at Cedar Glade Road, West Mountain Drive, Fire Lane Road there. Uh, there's Whittington Avenue that's tracking to the east. So Hot Springs downtown, this is probably going to stay north of you, but it's coming close. We need you in your safe place. Let's go over those safe places once again, Carmen. Uh, those safe places, Hot Springs, you need to be in a sturdy structure, lowest floor, away from windows. Get in that safe place, put on a helmet. That'll protect you from head trauma if there is flying debris. And by the way, bear with me. We've got two more tornado warnings, and I don't want to ignore these. Let's get in here into parts of southern Conway County. That rotation there is closing in on I-30, and we're going to have some cameras, excuse me, I-40 in southern Conway County. That rotation near Opolo, right there. We're crossing out of Perry County, getting here into the southern part of Morrillton. Let's turn on the debris mode. I want to make sure that is not on the ground there near Opolo. If we can get debris, uh, debris mode pulled up. All right, let's look at rotation. All right, let's look at velocity here near Opolo. You want to avoid cars or trucks. You don't want to be driving along Interstate 40 right now. That rotation, let's look at how it's evolved over the last little bit, Carmen. It doesn't look as strong as the one near Hot Springs. And hey, by the way, let's since this is weakened a little bit, let's Hot Springs, you still got this one. It looks like it's on the ground. A new tornado warning uh, right here for Saline County. I'm going to have to stay on this for a minute. Uh, Pat, make sure we're not missing anything up in uh, Van Buren County with that storm up there near Clinton. But this is a tornado that looks like it's on the ground just north of Hot Springs. You've got strong circulation, new tornado warning that's been issued now for Saline County. 
So this will be kind of going through the Fountain Lake area here. Whittington, you need to be in your safe place. That tornado right there along 100 or Highway 128. Let's look at let's look at the debris mode here. Let's make sure that this is uh, well. Yeah, let's get a track up here, but let's also look at the debris mode. I want to see if we have another scan. Do we have a tornado on the ground right now? That's going to be, I yeah, believe we do. It looks impressive. Yeah, we've got a tornado that's on the ground here and it's going to be heading toward Fountain Lake, Whittington. That's going to keep moving generally toward Benton. That tornado is on the ground here, probably getting over Sleepy Valley Road now. This is northeast of Hot Springs proper. Here's Glade Street, this general area along Arkansas Highway 128 north of Hot Springs. So Hot Springs downtown just to your north. You've got some really strong wind coming through there, but this is going to stay mostly just to your north. Highway 70, I would not be on Highway 70 there on the north side of Hot Springs, but that rotation will keep working its way that way. So this will stay just north of Highway 70. That'll eventually take it into areas just north of Benton here. Let's get that track and let's get some town names up here. DeSoto Park, 141, Safe Place Now, Cutter, Morning, uh, Cutter Morningstar High School, Fountain Lake, Whittington, Lonsdale, Nance, uh, Rural Dale School, Rubicon, Benton State Hospital, Haskell, Celine uh, Memorial Hospital, all of those locations in the path of the storm between now and about 2.15. So this is a brand new tornado warning. Carmen, how long does this tornado warning last? This is until 2 p.m., the, the new one. Until 2.15. Mm -hmm. So we have a tornado that's on the ground or has been on the ground. And uh, by the way, we need to be calling emergency managers. We have some folks in the newsroom who are reaching out to Garland County officials there to find out of course, once they can safely get out to find out what has been damaged and what's happening. So we've got this tornado warning tornado that has been spotted on the ground, or at least we have confirmation through radar that this at least briefly touched down may still be on the ground, working its way south of Fountain Lake. This new scan showing this uh, signature may be weakening a little bit, but I say that very carefully because we've seen this thing touch down, may have lifted briefly. Let's look at, uh, let's look at the debris mode around Fountain Lake. I want to see if that's still on the ground. It's still looking like there's some debris there lofted in the um, on radar and then we're seeing there near Fountain Lake right there at 128. Uh, there's where we may have a tornado on the ground near Grimmett Loop. Uh, it's not as pronounced of a debris signature, but let's treat it seriously. Saline County, I need you in your safe place. That's going to be riding here. What is this road here from Rubicon over toward Whittington? toward Fountain Lake. I need to get a number there. That's going to be, uh, if we can, all right, what, that's near Highway, Owensville. Yeah. What is that? Highway 298 is what it looks Highway like. Highway 298, mm -hmm. so that's right there. 298 from Whittington. So that storm, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, that storm is right there near Fountain Lake and it's going to kind of generally follow that highway, uh, 298 from Fountain Lake, back over here toward Owensville, probably staying north of Lonsdale. It'll head toward Kentucky, Arkansas. Here's a look at the towns that are in the track of this storm. Fountain Lake High School, that general area, 143 right now, basically. Whittington, 152. Lonsdale, 156. You're walking, watching Arkansas Storm Team coverage. A tornado has touched down on the north side of Hot Springs or just north of town. And uh, that circulation is moving toward the east and uh, heading toward Kentucky, uh, Arkansas. So you can see that's coming out of Garland County. I don't want to ignore these other tornado warnings. I know we have had at least a tornado touchdown near Hot Springs, so I don't want to ignore this one, but we do have multiple tornado warnings. We need to zoom out a little bit and show all the tornado warnings that are active right now across Arkansas. We need to zoom in here just east of Clinton, south and east of Clinton. That is a strong uh, rotation there that looks like it's showing up here on radar if we can get a little closer. Uh, that is a tornado warning here for Van Buren County. Rotation near Choctaw, and we've been talking about hot springs a lot, and I, I apologize. It's hard to do all these at once, but let's get velocity up here. That rotation just to the northeast of Choctaw, Highway 95, that rotation is right there. Let's look at debris mode. Let's make sure this hasn't touched down near Choctaw. By the way, that's going to be moving toward Fairfield Bay in the next little bit. You've got that hook. You can see here there's a little bit of a bounded weak echo region, but at this time, let's go back in time, make sure this hasn't touched down at any point. So far, it hasn't looked like that. So Fairfield Bay, stay in your safe place. I want to go a little farther south. Let's look at how things are shaping up in Conway County with that tornado warning, the little farther south. 
This one coming up on uh, Interstate 40. Could we get a, all right. Marlton, they will, will drop, so we'll have at least That's one good. less warning to worry about. But yeah, the most intense one is the one we're focusing on right now near Hot Springs. Yeah, and uh, by the way, how is the one down in Pike County looking? I want to make sure that we're not yeah, looking I past. Can. That's a pretty stout storm there, yep. at least with some large hail along Highway 70. So at least in this part of the state, We've got three active tornado warnings. This one here includes Saline County. And by the way, let's get a track on this storm coming up out of Hot Springs because this is going to eventually work its way into the metro. Let's get Little Rock on that track. Little Rock, that would be moving into, you, into the metro. I'm going to say probably around, let's see, well, this is moving into the metro. Bryant, considered part of the metro, around 224 Little Rock. 242. So that tornado warning, look, this has been actively producing rotation since it was back near Daisy, and it has been moving right up Highway 70, and it looks like it's going to make its way eventually into the Little Rock Metro. Right now, that area where a tornado was confirmed on the ground, and may still be, 37 miles to the west-southwest of Little Rock. Let's get velocity up there again. Let's see how that's shaping up compared to how it was. And you can see a very well defined kidney shaped or kidney bean shaped storm. That storm, that rotation is right there northeast of Hot Springs. Tornado warning goes until 215 for eastern Garland County and Saline County. Far western Pulaski County is included in on this. We're going to zoom in a little closer and get a look at uh, debris mode. I want to see if this tornado is still on the ground. It was a little while ago back into uh, areas just north of the bypass there in Hot Springs. Let's look at velocity. Let's look at this and let's let's look at how it has evolved. Let's go through time and uh, let's take you. There's where a tornado touched down earlier, right? Let's move it forward in time just a little bit right there. Had a tornado on the ground. Take it, advance it. You see? All right. It may have lifted, but that's not to say that this storm does not recycle and drop another tornado. And right now it's moving into a more highly dense population area. Everybody, of course, we're going to cover this for everybody. We want to make sure that everybody is safe. But this right now is our strongest storm. It looks like it may have lifted, but we can't guarantee that it doesn't try to drop again if it did lift. So Fountain Lake that's moved east of you or it's moving east of you. Whittington Rubicon, you're next. This storm's going to continue moving east and it's going to be eventually making its way into the Little Rock metro area. So here we go. Lonsdale, Nance, 154 and 156. Rural Dale School around 156. Kentucky at 208. Benton at 208. Saline Memorial Hospital, Salem at about 208 to 210. Bauxite around 212. Bryant, 214. You need to be in your safe place. Let's talk about those safe places. It's been a minute since we've gone over these rules. Once again, remember, not a mobile home. We want you in a sturdy structure away from windows, lowest floor in the middle of the house. Wrap up with blankets, pillows, and put on a helmet to protect yourself from flying debris. I do want to zoom in a little closer to this storm here that's uh, moving out of Pike County into the far northwest corner of Clark County near Glenwood. We have rotation with that does not at this point. Well, let, let's get in there a little closer. I want to see if we have any uh, if we have a tornado that could be out of this. Let's look at velocity. That's going to be just east of Glenwood right along Highway 84. I know you were under a tornado warning earlier for the storm that's moved through Hot Springs. That rotation, it's kind of hard to tell because you're away from the radar. We're looking at Shreveport's radar. Can we look at the Little Rock radar? Rock that's Little Rock. OK, yep. so that's going to be near Highway 8. Highway 84, Bismarck, you're included in this warning. You were not in the one earlier. So that one is there uh, just to the east of Glenwood. That tornado warning, and I don't want to ignore the... We've got multiple tornado warnings we're having to juggle right now. This one for southeast Montgomery County, northwest Clark County, western Hot Spring County, and southwest Garland County. That goes until 2 p.m. But right now, the strongest tornado... Well, let's, let's go up here. We have a brand new tornado warning with this storm coming up out of... Van Buren County. Uh, let's get that entire polygon here on your screen if we can. That velocity, uh, that rotation near Fair uh, near Fairfield Bay uh, over eastern 
um, eastern sections of Van Buren County. That's moving northeast. This is a brand new tornado warning for Stone County, northwest Cleburne County, and areas of far southwestern Izzard County. So this is including Mountain View, Turkey Creek, and that rotation coming up out of Fairfield Bay is going to be moving toward the north and east. So let's get in there a little closer and get some storm tracks on this and Hopefully this doesn't touch down. Like I said, we've got multiple warnings out at this time. So Fairfield Bay, that rotation is near you. You need to be in your safe place. Shirley, Brewer, Turkey Creek, Luber, Woodrow, areas like uh, up toward Mountain View as well. So Eglantine, Fairfield Bay right now that's moving into your area. Partain 155. This is a possible tornado. We don't have signs of it on the ground, but uh, we're watching it closely. Sandiff 157. Uh, rushing. We just got a new scan. Uh, can you just pan down a little bit? I want to keep those town names up if we can, but I want to uh, look at that new scan and make sure it hasn't intensified uh, near Fairfield Bay. It's tighter right there just to the west of Fairfield Bay around Mountain Ranch Drive, Eglantine right there. That's going to be moving north and eastward toward Partain and it will continue working its way up into parts of Southern Stone County eventually. So let's get those town names up once again, uh, or we can, Sorry. it's okay. Uh, we've got multiple tornado warnings out there, so this, it's kind of tough. We have to juggle these, and I don't want us to forget this storm coming out of Garland County, because Little Rock, that'll eventually work its way into the metro. Has that tightened a little bit? Yeah. I think so too, yeah. The just yeah, south of Whittington, point ha, out. how does it look? Um, in just a minute, we're going to need to look at the debris, debris mode that's just south of Whittington, Mill Creek Road just to the east of you, rotation about to cross over into Saline County. Hard to say whether that's an actual tornado on the ground. Got to watch that signature right there. You see that little white spot? Usually, uh, you know, when you start getting blues and whites, that's when you start to see potential debris in that, and that looks a little too concentrated there. This is at least a storm that is capable of damaging wind that's coming right along Highway 128, crossing over into Saline County. So Rubicon, areas there, especially north and north of Haskell. This is going to stay mostly north of Highway 70, but that rotation coming out of Garland County, crossing over into Saline County now. We'll get a track on that really quickly. Rubicon 159, Kentucky. 205, 209 for Saline Memorial Hospital, Benton at 210. You need to be in your safe place, lowest floor, away from windows. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not in a room with windows because that can, of course, uh, the glass could fly around. It can be very dangerous. So lowest floor, cover up in blankets, pillows, and wait for that all clear. Uh, let's go a little farther north. We got that rotation there. I want to get another track on this. We haven't talked about Fairfield Bay enough and because uh, we've been talking about that one near Hot Springs that touched down a little while ago. This is going to keep going northeast at about, uh, what is, how fast is it moving? Uh, it looks like uh, most of these are going to be between, between 50 and 55 miles per hour, so I've put it at 55. Okay, so that's moving north and east. Sandiff, Brewer around 158, rushing 2 o'clock. Turkey Creek, 203, Luber, 207, uh, going up toward West Richwoods, East Richwoods, Mountain View at 212. So that doesn't mean wait until 212 to get in your safe place. That means go now because the tornado or the possible tornado will be moving over the Mountain View area at around 212. So the rotation is near Fairfield Bay. This storm taking a little bit more of a northerly component uh, to its track. So rather than moving more east, it seems to be moving almost due northeast there. So sand if that's going to be crossing over into far northwestern Cleburne County before it crosses over into southern Stone County here very shortly. So again, that is a tornado warning that will go until 215, I believe. Is that correct? 215 or Let me double check with you here. We have four active tornado warnings right now. Okay. So yeah, 215 for that one. I'm going to go that. through these tornado warnings really quickly here and you can we'll start north and go south. This one up top that does include Mountain View 215. Uh, the other one that uh, is just outside of Clinton until 2 p.m. Uh, and you can point at this too, Joel, since you're at the wall, of course. Uh, the one that's including Benton here, 215 and uh, the one farther south, 2 o'clock. Again, the most potent of those storms where we're noticing some of that rotation over there 
there closer to Benton that was just outside of Hot Springs now tracking farther east and then also the one closer to uh, Mountain View and farther north. All right, again, the time is now 1:53. You're watching Arkansas Storm Team coverage right now. A PDS tornado watch is in effect across much of the state right now. If we can get that pulled up, that is a tornado watch that is considered as a particularly dangerous situation. So we want you to take these uh, warnings a lot more seriously. Do we still have a tornado? I believe we still we have a tornado maybe on the this ground one. here. Yeah, we want to watch the Celine. one over there. Yeah. What was that? So we've got that rotation right there near Whittington. Let's look at. Vol yeah, we need to look at the correlation coefficient. We've got there a tornado here on the ground yeah. here approaching Rubicon. We're going to be talking about it's this one for a while because this is going yeah. to be generally working its way toward the Little Rock Metro. So Owensville, that tornado is on the ground right now. That's moving toward the east toward Crows. There's Rubicon Highway 5 right there. Uh, just to the east of Crows, you can see that whole area is in the track of this tornado. Let's get a track on this once again, Carmen, because this is eventually, if it holds together, that's going to take it into the Little Rock metro area. Let's get Little Rock in this track. I'd imagine a new tornado warning will be issued eventually for, uh, tor for Little Rock. Uh, so we're going to be watching that. That is a tornado right now on the ground in Saline County, just to the west of uh, this will be just to the west of Rubicon. So Rubicon 157. You need to be in your safe place. Low is four away from windows. Let's scoot this a little bit over so we can get those safe places up on your screen while we've got those town names lifted up. So uh, again, those safe places you want to find a sturdy structure and if you want, you can lift that up a little bit more so people can see it a little bit better and take a picture of this and send it to your family and friends. If you have family and friends in Saline County uh, again, this is a tornado on the ground right there in Saline County. It's moving to the east, northeast, moving toward Rubicon 157. It's over Owensville now. That'll be moving into t Kentucky at 203 Benton. Benton is right here. It may stay north of Benton proper, but uh, let's make sure you're in the safe place. And we're going to get another track on that. That is right along 298 Rubicon safe place. Lowest floor away from windows, wrap up in blankets and pillows, cover up with a mattress and wait until you've gotten the all clear because that is a tornado war tornado on the ground in Saline County and it's moving to the east and yes Little Rock is in the track of this storm. Let's uh, take the safe place down really quickly and uh, get some town names on there. Little Rock that'll be moving in around 230. Let's clear this. I believe do we have a new tornado warning up here near Greenbrier? Yeah, for Menifee. This one's going to include Menifee. All right, let's get up here a little bit closer. I know that we still have this tornado on the ground in Saline County, but right here a brand new tornado warning has been issued. Let's get the rain mode up here. This is near Greenbrier and Republican. This is northern Faulkner County. You can see that hook right there at 285 to the west of Greenbrier. Greenbrier, this is a tornado warning until 245. That's moving toward the north and east toward Guy Enders. Quitman also included in this tornado warning. That rotation has strengthened a little bit. That is the reason why we have a tornado warning that goes until 245 now, and it's going to be taking it across Highway 65 near Greenbrier, maybe right around Republican. So that rotation now around Arrowhead Road, Union Road, coming up out of Conway County, and it's going to be crossing over Highway 65 near Greenbrier, if not uh, right over Greenbrier, maybe just north. And eventually it'll probably ride right along Highway 25, and eventually it'll make it back up here into Cleburne County. And look, some of you have already had multiple tornado warnings at this point. You're probably going to have more for some places. So let's treat all of these seriously. We've already had multiple tornadoes touch down at this point, and uh, here we are with another storm trying to develop. And by the way, we still have a tornado on the ground in Saline County uh, that we're going to be watching. But uh, again, Greenbrier need to be in your safe place. Greenbrier up Highway 25. That includes Quitman. That includes areas of southwestern Cleburne County. That is a stout area of rotation. Let's look at uh, let's look at debris mode. Let's make sure we don't have a tornado warning on the ground. And I'm going to have to take my Apple Watch off here because it keeps trying to talk to me. Um, that is just to the south and west of Greenbrier. That's going to be moving to the north and east. So I don't see any debris on this yet, but it is trying to tighten up. Let's zoom out. I want to make sure we're back down in Saline County. We need to, I know that these are strong areas of rotation there in Faulkner County and in northwestern Cleburne County that's moving up into Stone County, but we got to watch this one because there is a tornado warning on the ground confirmed in Saline County right now that we need to be on right now. Let's zoom in a little closer and uh, you can see that that is right now 
right there to the east of Whittington, right there uh, near Rubicon. Let's get the let's get debris mode on there. As long as we have a debris signature on here, we probably need to stay on that uh, correlation coefficient. There's Rubicon. The rotation may have weakened a little bit. It may have weakened. Let's hope so, and let's hope it stays weakening because this is moving into a very highly populated area. Owensville cut off uh, that area. Crows, Rubicon, that's moving east toward Kentucky. Mountain View Road, Narrows Road. Uh, that is a tornado warning that goes until 215 for Saline County. You need to be in your safe place. There was a tornado warning. On, there was a tornado on the ground earlier. Let's get debris up here, to, debris mode, just to see if this is still on the ground. Right around Rubicon, we're looking at, we're wanting to look at debris mode here. And if we can get that pulled up, I'd like to see if that is still a tornado on the ground. May still have some signs of a tornado on the ground. Let's, let's look at how that's evolved since it came up out of Whittington and Owensville. It was on the ground when it came out of Garland County. It lifted and then it looks like it's touched down again. And it looks like it may have lifted for the time being. But y'all, I know that this is moving into a very populated area and we can't let our guard down. Let's go back up here into uh, Van Buren. And let's get these two warnings here in the same view. Uh, we've got this warning here. There's uh, doesn't look like it's on the ground, but there's rotation. This northeast of Fairfield Bay. Let's switch to velocity mode. See where that is. So we've got. Stu, I know, I know we're focusing on these storms up here for toward Fairfield Bay and then Mountain View as well for both these warnings. I did want to say, just so you know, Joel, uh, there has been damage reported over in Hot Springs, some trees down, some power outages in Garland County. That's been relayed to us. Uh, so there is damage and power outages over there with this storm. So just so everybody knows, these storms are producing damage. Yeah, exactly. And Carmen, we've been looking at this on our debris mode on radar. And about uh, 10 years ago, we were able to, we got n basically new features with radar. We can actually look and see if there's debris lofted in the sky from these storms and that's a great product it gives us confirmation but we don't want you to wait until we have confirmation to take your shelter Fairfield Bay this is another area of rotation that's coming up out of south of Clinton we need to watch there that's going to be tracking over you here soon doesn't look like it's on the ground right now but we need to be in your, we need to be staying in our safe place there Fairfield Bay uh, there was let's all right, that, has that rotation, it was, uh, had it made over into northwestern Cleburne County? I was thinking that we had, uh, let, let's put a track on this, let's see. Surly at 210, Partain 211. I may be saying these wrong, just bear with me. Uh, but that's going to be moving north and eastward toward Mountain View there. I'm going to zoom back down, Joel, just so we can focus on what's going down closer to Saline County uh, and that area of rotation as well. Since Benton, I know people are hearing sirens right now, so I just want to highlight this really quickly. I, and let's loop this really quickly because yeah. what we're still looking at, that's the rotation that was over Hot Springs earlier, did damage. That is likely a tornado that touched down. That circulation has weakened a little bit around Rubicon, but look, just a few minutes ago, it was on the ground. So Little Rock, you're not under a tornado warning right now, but it's very possible that you will be in the next little while. Uh, that's tracking toward the east and northeast. And uh, right now, it's just in a cycling phase. It weakens and then it restrengthens. It weakens, it restrengthens. We believe it touched down as a tornado near Hot Springs. And it may have touched down again, or likely touched down again near Rubicon. So that's tracking to the east. Let's get a list of town names on there, including Little Rock. Uh, that's going to be moving probably just to the north of Bryant, but Bryant around 217 and about 221 for Alexander. Vimy Ridge 222. So that that point it'll be in Pulaski County. Shannon Hills Cosmetic Surgery Center. These are landmarks here that are programmed in our system to give you a better idea just in case uh, maybe you're not familiar with some of these town names, but Iron Springs, Oak Forest, that'll eventually work into Little Rock. We just hope it doesn't restrengthen because at this point, this has dropped at least, we believe, maybe two tornadoes. We had a tornado touchdown maybe around Hot Springs. We believe it lifted and maybe touched down again in uh, Saline County. That rotation likely between Rubicon and Kentucky right now. And I believe we may. Do we have a tornado on the ground there? Uh, I, I don't have confirmation, but I, again, we don't like seeing this on correlation coefficient. Just as a heads up, Little Rock, uh, you are going to likely get a tornado warning here with that storm. So again, we've been tracking this. We saw what looks like a potential debris ball. Again, very seriously here with we've had damage associated with that. Uh, so we're treating this as it's on the ground. That's going to be heading toward Little Rock. So just as a heads up, we will likely be hearing those sirens. We'll have that warning issued shortly. Joel.
All right, thanks, Carmen. Again, this is a very busy day. We've got several active tornado warnings. While we don't have confirmation right now, although we did have a tornado on the ground earlier for Saline County, I want to go over. Let's get that tornado watch up. We haven't showed that in a while. I want to remind you that most of Arkansas right now is under a tornado watch that is classified as a PDS tornado watch. That means it is a particularly dangerous situation. We need to treat every tornado warning seriously today. Already we've had tornado touchdowns and we may have have more and likely will because these storms haven't gotten into that level five risk area yet. New tornado warning now out for Pulaski County. This one will go until when Carmen 230. All right, 230 and Little Rock that does include you. My phone is going off here right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. All right, so if you're in Little Rock, this does include you. That rotation is over here in Saline County right now. Uh, let's uh, get that track a little farther north. That may have been plotted just uh, just there we go. So that's tracking east, northeast. So K Kentucky at 206. So that's moving through Kentucky, Arkansas right now. Salem, 213. Alexander, 221. This is a tornado that earlier was already, it was on the ground earlier. So we need to treat this as if it is uh, possibly going to reproduce another tornado. Alexander, 221, 225 Mabelville, 229 in Rosedale, 229 in Britain, Oak Forest at 233, and Little Rock, 233. So that is when we expect this to make its way through the metro. We're going to be here walking you through this. Right now, that rotation, about 22 miles to the west-southwest of Little Rock. All right, so uh, once again, uh, let's zoom in a little tighter. There's Rubicon, there's Crows, Kentucky. That's where that rotation is right now. It may have weakened a little bit, but let's get a look at uh, rotate. Let's look at, well, this is rotation. Let's get a look at debris mode because earlier there was a tornado on the ground with this. And right now we don't know if that is lifted. That looks like a tornado that's right there on the ground, just to the north and west of Kentucky, right in there. So let's zoom in a little closer. This is going to be north of the Bryant area right around Bland Trail could be a tornado on the ground. Kind of hard to tell if that's an actual debris signature, but my gut's kind of telling me it probably is. Breezewood Lane right there, Lancaster Loop moving east, Goodwin Road, Avila Road, uh, and that's going to keep moving east. Let's put another track on that, Congo. That's going to eventually cross over into Pulaski County and will likely take this storm, whether it brings a tornado, war tornado into the Little Rock City or not, it's going to bring that rotation in eventually. So Salem, 213, Red Gate at 220, Terrytown, 222, Pinnacle at 225. This is a tornado that may be or is on the ground. We know it has had history of doing damage in Hot Springs, so we need to treat this storm seriously. Coming through Saline County right now, there's Kentucky. Let's zoom, let's kind of pan down. I want to make sure we have the I-30 corridor just in view so we can get a little more perspective. So there's, there's Benton, there's Bryant, there's I-30. So we're north of I-30. There's your rotation right there. You know, there, I'm seeing that debris signature there. This rotation, not as tight maybe as it was, but it's still, it's tight enough that it's prompted that warning for Pulaski County. So we're going to treat this as a tornado that probably may be on the ground. Kind of hard to tell right now. But it, as it moves into Little Rock, we'll have a little better idea, of course. Uh, right now, that rotation, there's Kentucky. I, you know what? That's... It may be a couple different areas of rotation near Kentucky and then just north, just to the west of Congo. Right there, that's Highway 5, 298. Salem is here. Congo is here. That's going to be tracking toward Congo and Salem. If you have family and friends in those communities, call them. Let them know that we're on the air here. This is Arkansas Storm Team coverage. We are here with Chief Meteorologist Carmen Rose along with Pat Walker, and we're tracking an area of rotation that uh, has had history of dropping a tornado back into Garland County and into parts of western Saline County. So find your safe place. Little Rock, this includes you. Find a sturdy structure, not a mobile home. We want you in a sturdy structure because because mobile homes are dangerous in these storms. Once again, let's get those safe places up there. Once again, uh, we want you to find that safe place, lowest floor. Find a small room, a closet, interior room of your house. If that bathroom has a window, don't go there. That's not safe. The window could break and, you know, glass, that's not a good thing. Wrap up with blankets, pillows, and put on a helmet to protect yourself 
from flying debris. Uh, that is a storm coming through Saline County. We do have two other tornado warnings that are active right now. I want to make sure that we are covering those and we want to make sure that no one is left out. Again, that's a tornado warning for Saline County and Pulaski County. We have one here in northern Con uh, northern Faulkner County coming up Highway 25 approach right over equipment right now. And then there's another one there into southern uh, Stone County. That is a nasty signature though with that, that story. And look, I'm frustrated because I want to make sure that our friends up here in Greenbrier are taken care of. Carmen, let's just look. I want to make sure that we uh, I need to make sure that we don't have a tornado on the ground here with this. Okay, and the other thing too is it's 208 right now. I know that parents are wanting to pick their kids up from school. Uh, you are not able to do that right now since we do have that active tornado warning. It is until 2.30 p.m. Joel, we're going to get right back into that tornado warning again north of Little Rock, but Little Rock Metro, if you have kids in school right now, you're not able to pick them up. We have this active tornado warning until 2.30 as of right now. All right, so here is... Uh, right here, there's equipment. So this is not actually over equipment yet. This is coming up out of Greenbrier. That rotation has intensified a good bit, Carmen. Do we have, can we get a look at debris? I want to make sure there's not a tornado on the ground near Guy right now. That's Highway 25, a very hilly area. Not a lot of visibility with trees all around. Uh, that is a road that takes you right up here toward Heber Springs. Now, because we have multiple tornado warnings in place right now, friends in northern Faulkner County just know we're going to be splitting our time between these tornado warnings. I would love to spend all of our time on, you know, I want to make sure everybody's covered, but uh, that is a area of rotation that is strengthened, likely producing at least damaging wind. That's going to be moving up Highway 25. Call your family and friends. Let them know to take cover in at Guy, Guy Perkins School, Centerville Park, Enders, or Anders perhaps. Quitman, that's going to be moving in around 215 to 220, and then it will continue working its way up toward uh, Heber Springs more than likely. Uh, taking you a little farther south again, we have this tornado warning still in progress for eastern Saline County, western Pulaski County, and that includes, I say western Pulaski County, but that does include all of the Little Rock Metro. So right now that tornado warning, it goes until 220. Let's remove that. Let's look at debris mode. I am trying to determine whether we have a tornado on the ground. It's hard to tell right now. This has been a storm, though, that has been our strongest storm and the most persistent storm. It has dropped at least, we believe, two tornadoes at some point, and it may be producing one. Now, let's look again at rain mode. All right, there's your rotation. It co-locates. Let's look at rain mode right at the tip of that hook. That's where we probably have, uh, could have, a tornado on the ground right now. So let's get another track on that. That's going to take it into Little Rock, unfortunately, folks. You need to be in your safe place, West Little Rock, especially right now. That's going to be working its way through Ferndale. More, actually, it may stay east southeast of Ferndale, but you're going to be getting some hail up here from North Point down to Fer Ferndale. Places in the path of the storm, unfortunately, uh, most of the Little Rock Metro. So Pinnacle 225, Rosedale at 228, Geyer Springs 230, lowest floor away from windows, Maumel at about 231, Arkansas Children's Hospital downtown and downtown Little Rock around 230 to 235, right in that window. North Little Rock 235 as well, College Station, Sherwood eventually, Gravel Ridge, Olmville, and uh, Olmstead, I should say, at Jacksonville and Rebsman Medical Center. So that is a supercell coming into the western part of Little Rock. We need that to weaken. We need that to weaken uh, right there over western. Uh, that is uh, coming out of Saline County, about to cross over into Pulaski County. Let's take you up to Stone County. I want to make sure that that warning there is not ignored. That's uh, this is the one coming out of Conway County. Let's go a little farther north. Uh, and excuse me, that's coming out of Faulkner County. That rotation is near Guy. Than what's does. over Mountain View. I just want to make sure, sure though that we I want to look at it. Let's switch over to. Are we looking? Which radar are we looking at? Uh, this is still on Little Rocks. Okay. I can switch you over to Storm uh, to our velocity mode, of course, to see okay. that. But again, I'm not liking what I'm seeing over Guy as well. Uh, yeah. Let's take you that Luber. By the way, there is rotation there. That's going to be taking it up east of Mountain View toward Wool Quarry along the White River. Now let's go back down to yeah. Faulkner County. We're talking about Guy. It's a good call uh, right there. There's Heber Springs there guy that rotation there coming up highway 25 near Anders Quitman that's closing in on you let's get in our safe place Anders Quitman High School uh, between 215 and 220 so within the next 10 minutes Quitman proper around 219 Cove Creek 
uh, recreation area around 227, Pearson 227, uh, and then up toward Heber Springs eventually. Now, uh, that warning goes up to Quitman, and they may eventually decide to carry that up into Heber Springs. But I just want to make sure we're all covered there in northern Faulkner County. Safe place. We may not be able to get back to you because we have a tornado that are a possible tornado moving into the Little Rock metro area right now. So we're south of Ferndale. Here's where the tip of that hook echo is right there coming out of Saline County. That's going to take it on a trajectory that would probably take it right there toward the Big Rock interchange in that general area. Sirens are reportedly not going off in Little Rock. They should be or in West Little Rock. They should be. Safe place now in Little Rock. We need you in your safe place. There's that supercell thunderstorm. Uh, that rotation is going to be right there. If we can pan down just a little bit, Carmen, here. Uh, that rotation right at the tip of that hook. And it's moving toward the east, northeast. So it's going to be heading toward Rosedale. Let's look at velocity on that. I want to see how that's evolved. All right, there's your, there's your hook. Let's look at velocity. Uh, right in there. It's coming out of Saline County. It's going to be going over Twin Springs and eventually toward Big Rock. So that's right in that general area and that's going to, unfortunately, it's going to take that rotation. We need to certainly uh, keep a close eye on this because, you know, this is a day that can be certainly uh, a really rough day. We have it moving right toward Little Rock right now as far as where that rotation is. Uh, let's look at uh, City names, let's get a track on this once again. Twin Springs, 221. Around Spring Valley at 224. Rosedale, 228. Meadow Cliff, Oak Forest, Little Rock, 234. That's when the storm will be moving over Little Rock. So this is going to be closing in here very soon. It is 214 right now. You're watching, or 215 now. You're watching Arkansas Storm Team coverage here. We've got Chief Meteorologist Carmen Rose here alongside Pat Walker, Juliana Cullen here. We've got all hands on deck. Rotation coming out of Saline County, crossing over into Pulaski County. This tornado warning for the Little Rock Metro goes until 230. So that rotation working its way to the east northeast. And uh, let's look at, uh, we need to look at debris mode. We need to make sure that this is, is or is not on the ground. Um, that is crossing out of Saline County. Let's look at, uh, I'm seeing a lot of bad data here. It's kind of hard to see if this is on the ground. And right now I don't see clear signs that it is. And I pray that it is not. But that's moving into western Little Rock right now. That circulation near Twin Springs, it's tightened up a little bit. Would you agree, Carmen? It does look like it's tightened up a little bit yeah. right right to the yeah exactly just to the west of twin springs again uh, this is going to be continuing on that path farther eastward eventually up toward camac village toward the heights toward hillcrest toward little rock north little rock you all need to be in your safe spot right now because we are seeing enough rotation and national weather services to of course have that tornado warning in place here until 2.30. And Carmen, this is no longer just a storm that's capable of producing a tornado. It is a storm that has produced a tornado. Yeah. We believe has touched down in Garland County. It touched down in Saline County. Yeah. It may have lifted. And one maybe thing, touching out and down again. And one thing too, just, just, just to interrupt you here, it looks like a wall cloud has been spotted southwest off of 430 and Rodney Parham. So you probably so, are getting a view of this right. from the uh, Otter Creek area, kind of yeah, looking and, back and northwest. West Little Rock, Otter Creek, you're going to be seeing That doesn't mean this. get out there and try to look at it. We want you to get in your safe place. You may not be able to see it, uh, but that is a, a clearly rotation there coming into Twin Springs, Spring Valley. It has tightened up a little bit. The last thing I want to see it do is tighten up anymore. We know that it has touched down in parts of Garland County near Hot Springs, just north of town. And this same rotation that we've been following since it was back in Pike County, now mm. getting its way into the Little Rock Metro. So right now it's over Twin Springs. That's moving toward the east northeast. We're putting a track on it right now. That storm is likely going to affect in some ways the areas uh, inside the I-430, 630 loop there in Little Rock, a very highly populated area. Twin Springs, Spring Valley, Panky. Uh, you've got a lot of landmarks here as well that are, uh, maybe you know them, maybe you don't, but if you do and you live in these areas, you want to take cover. Rosedale, Woodland Heights, Kamek Village, 229. That's also in the Heights. Uh, Oak Forest, 229. University of Arkansas Medical uh, Center, right around 230. And so that's going to be in the Little Rock area. Let's get closer here. There's the rotation near Lawson Road, Beauchamp Road. There's Lawson Road here, Faulkner Road. That's where your rotation is, so that's going to take it 
E. So is this Chenal right here, if I'm not mistaken? If we look a little closer, we that? No, uh, that's, uh, so we're not quite that close to the metro just yet. Okay, so yeah. yes, that's Colonel Glenn right there, not Chenal. So here we go. But still, Chenal, that area, you're under this tornado warning. So here's Sparks Road. That's where this rotation is. It's going to be kind of following Lawson Road, approaching Rawlings Cur uh, Cove, Colonel Glenn Road, uh, and areas a little farther to the east, northeast of there. So again, we've got that rotation moving in. Carmen. And just as, uh, as why this is a very serious situation, it looks like the National Weather Service, they've gone and contacted Memphis uh, because they may actually need to shelter in place at the National Weather Service. So you have meteorologists at the National Weather Service who will end up having to take shelter and move into their tornado safe place. We need to all be in that safe place as well. If you are watching, if you are streaming, we have a tornado warning until 2.30. This is something to take seriously, Joel. So that's a very good point. So the meteorologists of the National Weather Service saying they're going to hand off their responsibilities to the Weather Service in Memphis, maybe if this continues to take that path because the National Weather Service is in the path of this as well. So Spring Valley, that's going to be closing in right now. Rosedale 229, friends there. Uh, Oak Forest, University of Arkansas Medical Center. Uh, you'll need to be in your safe place here. That's not waiting until these times. This is when the storm will be passing overhead, but we want you to go ahead and seek that shelter right now. Carmen, let's talk about these safe places once again uh, and list those. I know uh, we have friends that have mobile homes, perhaps. Mobile homes, unfortunately, are not safe places in this event. You want to find your safe place, a sturdy structure, lowest floor, away from windows, the middle of the building, a room that is surrounded by other rooms. You want to wrap up with blankets and pillows and put on uh, perhaps a helmet to protect from flying debris. This is a very pronounced hook echo now near Twin Springs. It's actually moved a little east in Carmen. This isn't looking good, unfortunately, in terms of the appearance on rain mode of radar. Let's look at velocity. I, I want to make sure this has not strengthened on us. Let's look at velocity there gotcha. near Twin Springs. All right. Yeah. It's not, I'm not seeing the signs of the, of the strengthening yet. I think that's to come. Unfortunately, on the rain mode, we're seeing it trying to curl up a little more. I would expect the next uh, scan to perhaps show a tighter couplet there. Uh, that is Twin Springs. This is trying to produce a tornado. Little Rock, let's talk. Right there, just west of town and closing in on Colonel Glen and eventually toward Big Rock, we've got a supercell that is capable of producing a tornado. Not just capable, it has. It produced at least touched down perhaps near Hot Springs and over uh, into western Saline County. It's trying to do it again. So we're in closing in on Little Rock right now. This rotation south of Pankey, there's uh, Pinnacle right there. Chenal runs just like that and there's Twin Springs. So this is approaching Chenal, the uh, promenade, all of that area that's going to be taking it up into the heights. Eventually, it'll take it up through Midtown and all of that area, unfortunately, and eventually take it up into Sherwood and North Little Rock. So we're putting a track on this whole storm, but I, I really think here in just a moment, Carmen, let's also try to get a cone track on this because that'll track the actual rotation. But uh, this storm here, it's going to be moving through Marche around 223, Woodland Heights at 224, Hague at 228, Oak Forest 230, Pulaski 231, Little Rock 230. We've talked about Little Rock multiple times and we're in the metro right now. This is closing in. I really hope this doesn't touch down. I hope it stays aloft and passes us completely. I hope all of us get over, you know, gets this, doesn't touch down. But Unfortunately, that is the reality we're facing right now. This storm has had history of producing damage in Garland and Saline County. Now it's in Pulaski County and it's moving into an environment that is much more conducive for tornado development. So you can clearly see that hook moving into West Little Rock right now. So you need to be in your safe place along Chenal, out on Colonel Glen Road, out on Canis Road. You need to be in your safe place, West Little Rock, bottom line be in that safe place. Sturdy structure, not a mobile home. And by the way, we're not just talking about West Little Rock, we're also talking about Little Rock proper. No mobile homes, we need to be 
Uh, we need to be in a small room away from windows, wrap up with blankets and pillows, and uh, that'll protect you hopefully from any flying debris. And stay put until given the all clear. Kirk Road, Hartford Street, safe place now. Canis Road, that's going to be approaching Big Rock and I-430 here very soon. We have a live look right now, we believe, of that uh, funnel cloud. Can you tell me... Uh, we're looking at Fair Park and I-630. So this is there in uh, the Midtown area. We're looking back toward the west. There's that Days Inn that's located at Fair Park and 630. You're looking back toward the west at that lowering. We're going to keep an eye on that here very soon. If y'all, We can switch back over. All right, let's go to Max 1 now. And uh, we're, what are we looking at here on Max 1? All right, this is a live look here at the Simmons Bank Tower Cam. So you can see the rain off in the distance. You can see that uh, this is downtown. There's the Capitol. Very likely, tornado west of west Little Very likely now a tornado in West Little Rock. So looking back toward the west. Did you say what now? West of West Little Rock. West of West Little Rock. So it's moving in now. Yeah. This is off toward the west. You're seeing kind of some rain there. It's kind of hard to tell there, but uh, what's that? Let's go, Let's go back to radar. I need to, we need to get radar up. Can we double box that? Let's double box it. So there's your rotation there that's intensified a little bit more near Canis Road, Henson Road. That's moving into West Little Rock now. Let's get a little tighter here. That rotation is really strengthened there. We're seeing some really strong rotation there near Napa Valley Drive there. So that's moving northeast. Green Mountain Circle, safe place now. West Markham Street, safe place now. Lowest floor, away from windows. In a room that is not that is surrounded by other rooms. And uh, make sure that you stay there until given the all clear. That is, let's look at debris mode. We need to make sure this is not a... If, some, some talkings here of debris that's being all right, lofted. Let's, let's yeah, get that so correlation. This is serious. All right. All right, we've got debris that's being uh, lofted. Uh, we've got uh, our uh, amateur radio uh, operator here that is monitoring this, and we're getting word of debris that is being lofted back here into West Little Rock. So we have a tornado that is on the ground moving into West Little Rock. And before we continue, and I want to make sure that we're covered in Little Rock, do we have any other tornado warnings in the area that need to be covered right now? This is the one that's most potent. We're okay. going to focus on this one. We're going to focus on this one. This is a highly populated area. Friends, I know we have multiple tornado warnings out there. This one is producing, more than likely, out here towards Chennault Parkway. Call your friends, family in Little Rock. Let them know to tune in right now. We're on Arkansas Storm Team coverage, Fox 16 and KRK coverage. Watching this is a tornado. Uh, near Gamble Road. It's going to be moving east northeast. So places like Pinnacle Point Hospital 225, Baptist Health Medical Center 227, 228, the Anthony School, Kmac Village at 229, Oak Forest 230, moving through downtown Little Rock, or hopefully not, uh, hopefully this isn't, I mean, we, we're getting word of debris. So, uh, but either way, that's moving toward the east northeast. So here's Brookside. And uh, by the way, we need to be thinking about safe place for those of us here in this building. All non-essential personnel probably need to be seeking a safe place here soon. Carmen. Of debris over there toward Napa Valley and Henson. Napa Valley and Henson getting reports of debris. So this is more than likely that tornado on the ground right now. So we'll get into the street level. Joel, if you want to go ahead and point out some more of these streets with that. All right, let's get a little closer because mm -hmm. this tornado is likely on the ground right now. Chanel There's Parkway. 430. This is going to be closing in on 430 soon so this is going to kind of go through the Pleasant Valley area. There's North Shackleford Road so that's going to be moving from Chennault. This is near the Promenade right now and St. Charles Boulevard. There's Woodlore. Let's get a little bit closer here. I want to get some more street names here. There's Shackleford. There's Beverly Hills Drive. Uh, there's Markham Park. You're seeing here at the, on the side of your screen. Uh, can you tell me what we're looking at here by the way producers? It's in that second screen. What perspective is that? But whatever we're seeing, obviously, there's some obvious, uh, that is the rotation with that storm there, obvious. Uh, all right, so uh, Napa Valley and uh, Henson Road, that's moving northeast, that's likely. Let's get a little, I want to get a little zoomed in here. Here's 430. I want to go a little farther north and see where this is going to cross 430. This is probably going to take it up this track toward the heights, that general area, Kmac Village, it's going to be moving up to the north and east. It's moving around Maryland Road. Let's get a little closer. Let's get some tracks. There we go. 
All right, so let's see. This is going to be moving toward Walnut Valley Christian Academy, Terry Elementary School, Butler Park, Henderson Middle School, Brady Elementary School, the Anthony School, KMAC Village at 231. So this will be likely in the uh, 430 loop within the next uh, few minutes. Safe place now in the Heights, in Midtown, in Pleasant Valley, uh, that whole general area. This is taking it on that track. We need to look at debris mode. We need to look at debris mode right now and see how this is shaping up. This is moving toward the east northeast. We're told this is a tornado on the ground. Can we remove that track? Still hard to tell. I, that's tough to say that there's actually a tornado on the ground according to this debris indicator, but we do have reports of that uh, from others, from people who are spotting it in real time. So I don't want to go against that. And that is certainly strengthening in that rotation now. There is a tornado emergency, tornado emergency for Little Rock. Now, okay. Yes. Tornado emergency it. for Little Rock. What yep. that means is this is now a confirmed tornado. Let's get a little closer here because this is now in the 430 loop. So Pleasant Valley, it's moving. Uh, it's really right over KMAC Village. It's going to be crossing over. Uh, it's going to be kind of out north, near the Big Dam Bridge, moving toward the east northeast. So there's KMAC Village, Rebsman Park Road. So there's the Big Dam Bridge right there. That rotation crossing over the Arkansas River here very soon, if not already. Tornado reportedly on the ground, moving toward the east northeast. It's going to be over into North Little Rock here very uh, soon. This is an emergency. Let's zoom out a little bit and get a track on this. It's moving generally toward Levy, and it's going to be moving kind of up through North Little Rock. Uh, the Camp Robinson Road area, JFK, around 2.30. So this may stay north of, north of downtown Little Rock. It's crossing over the Arkansas River, and it's going to keep taking it up that way. So again, let's, uh, let's clear the screen a little bit. We've got a lot of boxes up here. Can Sir, we've got vehicles that are being reported thrown over there at Henson and 430. So this is what we're looking at. Again, this is moving through Camac, West Little Rock, North Little Rock, taking cover. You need to do that right now. Joel, we want to go back to you to do street level. Yeah, let's get in here. We've got Missouri. Let's see where and we're really close to the radar site. There's the radar site. It's tough to get good data when it's so close. But uh, we are right in here that uh, let's zoom out just a little bit. Let's get rain mode on here. I think that's going to tell a better story right now. That rotation somewhere in there, that rotation, that tornado right now, it is just moved through the heights. If we can get in a little closer there, let's get in there a little closer. This is a tornado emergency for the city of Little Rock and North Little Rock. This is right there. Debris signature right there just went over just went over the heights y'all so this is moving over the arkansas river that's going to be over levy what's that harbor kroger on rodney parham has been damaged we have damage at kroger on rodney parham that's inside uh, that's east of the 430 loop there and uh, let's take max one by the way we have something here we want to show you let's uh, pull that up this is a view from the downtown tower cam looking into this storm uh, let's see if we can, can we pan this a little bit more? It's kind of hard to tell. What, so we're looking at, this is looking back toward the north and west. So there's the heights. The tornado is going to be right in there. It looks like it's prop, actually, let me step out of the view. On the left side, it's probably in North Little Rock by now. So that's where we're probably looking. There's probably a tornado right in there. We're looking, so there's the Broadway Bridge. This is looking northwest. So Fort Roots is right here. And we have a debris signature. So this is touchdown. We have debris that, or we have damage that's been reported at the Kroger on Rodney Parham. So this moved through, uh, through West Little Rock. It has moved through the Heights and it is now crossing over into North Little Rock and it's likely going to be crossing over. And let's look at, uh, I, can we, radar. can we double box this? Yeah, if we can double, double box, box either way, we're getting reports of a debris ball. Uh, it's hard to see on radar because we're right up on top of that radar, but Joel's going to walk you through where that likely is. This is about as urgent as it gets, folks. Yep. We're in North Little Rock now. It looks like that rotation right over. Uh, it's going to be right around KMAC Village, crossing over the Arkansas River there near the Big Dam Bridge. And it's tracking up here toward, it's really kind of over Emerald Park, that general area, and then up here toward Levy, uh, crossing over I-40 right now. So you've got a live look at that. There's the Broadway Bridge and that image right there in the bottom right corner of your screen. And that rotation is taking it right up here toward the National Weather Service. And as Carmen mentioned a moment ago, 
The meteorologists at the National Weather Service taking cover themselves. They have handed off their responsibilities to the National Weather Service in Memphis so that they can take cover. And once they're able to get out, assess their situation and they can get back to work. But uh, we've got, of course, a lot going on here. That rotation, look at that. That is a hook echo, very pronounced right there along Interstate 40. Debris obviously in that. Let's look at correlation coefficient. I want to see that uh, debris. It's tough to it's see because you're messy. so close to that radar. But y'all, if you're near McCain areas north toward Wildwood along Highway 67, you've got to be in that safe place. And we haven't talked about safe places in a minute. Let's get those up here. We need to be in the lowest floor away from windows. We need to be in a closet uh, and find a small room with no windows. If your bathroom has a window, that does not make it a safe place. If it has a window, that can be dangerous in itself. Wrap up with blankets, pillows, and put on a helmet to protect yourself from flying debris. So this is a debris signature. This is not a possible tornado. This is a tornado in progress right now crossing over Interstate 40. That is a very intense signature and that is strengthening as it approaches to Sirwood right now and areas along Highway 67. So right now, tornado on the ground. Uh, this is leaving. This is going to be there near Championship Drive, Charles Boyer Drive, uh, West Military Drive. Shamrock Drive continuing its track toward the east northeast up crossing over Camp Robinson Road south of the National Weather Service or near the west the National Weather Service. So that rotation that tornado we can call it a tornado at this point. It's not just rotation and you're looking at it more than likely. That's it right there. You're looking at it at the bottom right corner of your screen. You're looking from the Simmons Bank Tower Cam, looking at that tornado as it moves through North Little Rock. This has already done a lot of damage down near uh, on Rodney Parham at the Kroger. And we're working to hear if we have what other damage we have in the Little Rock Metro. But this is a significant situation. And unfortunately, this is kind of really just getting started because the storms haven't even gotten into eastern Arkansas. So right here, that rotation, that tornado is going to be tracking toward the east northeast. Let's get a track on that. And uh, it's moving toward Indian Hills Elementary School, Abundant Life School, Sylvan Hills and Sylvan Hills Middle School. Let's get a track that takes it more east northeast kind of. Let's get Wildwood in that track. So I think it's kind of taking more of a track like that toward Sherwood. There you go, right there. Let's get some town names up here. Amboy, Bellwood Elementary School, lowest floor, away from windows, uh, cover up with blankets and a pillow until you are given the all clear. So we're watching this and it looks like it's wrapped up in rain, uh, but that. So we need to really focus on Sherwood uh, coming yeah, toward this you. This is closing in on Sherwood now. Yeah. That's probably going to take it just like that unfortunately so amboy there's 55th street that's taking it probably north of lakewood but let's be in our safe place i'm you know if i say this is going to be just north or south of you i still want you in your safe place this has moved on from little rock proper but this is still a tornado that's on the ground and it is working its way uh north there's mccain boulevard lakeview road north hills boulevard that's tracking just like that towards sherwood right now yes we got a confirmed rotation with debris, debris and that's at 107 and Keel. 107, 107 and Keel Avenue. That is a tornado Sherwood. confirmed uh, with debris uh, near Sherwood. So we'll be getting a new update here soon. Carmen, I would imagine that rotation that we see there near Amboy has already moved on some. And it's kind of hard to tell because you're so close to the radar. But there's that rotation. Again, this is a tornado emergency for the city of Sherwood. Uh, and uh, that is wrapped up right there. You can see on the bottom right corner of your screen there that uh, is right over the radar dome so uh, or near the radar dome. So that rotation near Keir Drive heading toward Club Road. There's Sherwood Seminole Trail and uh, that's heading toward the east and northeast and it's going to likely eventually cross over Highway 67 eventually as it gets closer to Keel. And uh, it looks like that's where it is right now. So Carmen, we need to pan a little bit farther toward the north and east, toward the north. And we may have another rotation there, but we have two, I believe we might, or that, that may be bad data. So the rotation is right over Sherwood, but we have confirmation of debris being seen near Sherwood. So stay in your safe place, Jacksonville. And let's zoom out a little bit and get a look at where this warning is, because this is going to keep going. 
This has kept going through city of Little Rock and it's going to continue tracking north and eastward toward Jacksonville. So here it is right there. There's your rotation. There's Sherwood that's going to be heading toward Jacksonville next and it's likely going to stay to the south of Cabot. But let's stay in our safe place. Cabot, this is a tornado emergency for you as well. This was a tornado that just moved through West Little Rock. It looked like it moved right through Midtown. It looked like it moved through the Heights and now it's moving through North Little Rock and it's continuing to work its way uh, north and eastward. So there's your storm. There's your debris signature. It is likely following up Highway 67 right now from Sherwood back up here toward Jacksonville. So safe place right now, lowest floor away from windows. There's your rotation right there, which is likely already moved a little farther toward the north and east because remember we get these updates from radar every few minutes. So when we look at a picture of radar and that's where it says the tornado is, it's probably already moved on from that spot. So we're looking at this. Let's take that. Let's yeah, let's just one box here because we're look, we were looking at two things there at once. Sherwood is tracking toward the east northeast toward Jacksonville lowest floor away from windows and make sure that you cover up with blankets, pillows, you know, perhaps a helmet and uh, stay there until you're given the all clear. So that rotation now just moved over uh, Sherwood and it is taking it up toward Jacksonville and Carmen, I believe, I know we're really close to the radar, but I'm going to ask again, can we look at debris? Yeah, I, I, we just switched over. It's very messy. It's hard to look at. It's, uh, and Bean field between 67 and between Jacksonville and Sherwood moving to the right. bean field. Yeah, so that's moving toward the e the northeast again, the bean field that Pat talks about there uh, between Jacksonville and Sherwood. So it's going to be likely moving right through the Jacksonville uh, yeah. proper. Uh, let's get a track on this once again. It's been a second since we've called out some town names. Uh, so that's moving Rixie Road, that general area, uh, moving through the Rixie community now, as Pat mentioned in the bean field. Jacksonville 243 safe place now. We're not saying wait until 243. We mean go there now. This is a tornado that's not just possible. It's confirmed. Pinewood Elementary School, Rebsman Medical Center, Holland Bottom State Wildlife Management Area, Furlough, Cabot Middle School in the path of the storm, Parnell, Cabot, Panther Stadium, Fairview School, and some of those places. So there's your signature. There's your hook. Very clear view. And we're looking. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Colonial Heights Shopping Center is reportedly damaged there. Uh, heavy damage from what I'm understanding. And that's tracking uh, this storm that just did that damage in the Little Rock Metro. And we're getting a lot of reports right now from folks. That debris is right there. You can see it on the rain mode or you can see the tip of that hook that's moving toward the northeast. Jacksonville, real talk right now. If you're not in your safe place now, you need to be. Don't go outside and try to look at this. You need to be there right now. That tornado is right there. It's going to be following up 67 and it's going to take it right through uh, very close to Jacksonville. Very close, if not right on top of Jacksonville here very soon. So Jacksonville, that's going to be moving in. We're going to get a list of names here. Uh, that storm is moving in here very shortly in the next few minutes. Uh, Jacksonville, Tonyville, and uh, moving on beyond that. So you can see Rebsman, Rebsman Medical Center, um, Tonyville, Holland Bottom State Park, uh, State Wildlife Management Center, uh, Cabot Middle School, Parnell, Cabot, Panther Stadium. All these places I just mentioned need to be in your safe place if you live in those areas. So there's where it is now or where it was just a few moments ago over Kill Avenue here in Sherwood. So this moved likely uh, just, well, it's continuing to move toward the north and east, so it's probably, we need to make sure no one is on Highway 67. And by the way, we've got some cameras out there on 67. If we can pop that up in a double box. We got spotters watching that. At 67 and 167 at 440, it's on the ground. Okay, it's on the ground still here at, um, all right. So right now we're looking at Jacksonville uh, and we're looking back to, I'm not exactly sure what part of town we're at. Uh, but we're looking toward that. And we also have our dot cameras along Highway 67 we can look at as well. But that tornado is on the ground heading toward Jacksonville now. Our uh, dot cameras are a little bit disabled right now, as you would imagine, with probably the loss of power and whatnot there. So that storm tracking toward Jacksonville now. And uh, looks like, let's get some streets here. So there's South Redmond Road, Collins Road. You're getting a look here at that live shot. That's Highway 167, I believe. Is that in Jacksonville? That live view. So you're looking there. That's about to maybe get on Highway 67. 
Uh, that is so right there. That's uh, 67 and 167 there at John Harden uh, Road. So that's the view we're looking at there. Near the Lowe's, near the Lowe's in Jacksonville. So Redmond Road, that's going to be crossing over there near Highway 67, West Tricky Lane. It's going to be moving into Jacksonville near Ray Road. Again, this is a tornado that is uh, on the ground. You see it right there in the bottom left corner of your screen. In fact, I believe that's probably the clearest image of that tornado. And we're looking at it right there on your screen. It looks like, yeah, oh, let's pop that back up. We can get that behind me. Can we get that behind me right here? We're looking at Highway 67. You can see that. Uh, I believe he's looking back toward the south. And I want to make sure this, uh, who was recording is safe. Uh, but you can see that there, that tornado on your screen, Jacksonville, that's moving in right now. Uh, that's the tornado right there. And we're looking at Highway 67. So this is going to be moving generally right up 67. And I want to make sure that our camera folks are safe. So uh, we're looking at this. We're in Jacksonville. And this may actually stay. This looks like it may have already crossed over 67. Let's look back at uh, let's look back at radar again. That, and let's actually double box it. Let's double box it. So there's your rotation. There's, uh, we're probably looking from this general direction toward the south. There's the tornado on your screen. You're looking at 67. That camera perspective is looking from Jacksonville back toward the south and west. So we're looking at it there. It's moving into Jacksonville, and we're going to be uh, watching it as it does. We've got a clear perspective. Again, this is a tornado emergency for Jacksonville. Tornado on the ground. You can see that hook very clearly pronounced. And uh, there's the velocity there, and it's strong, at least a funnel cloud. You can see there, right there on your screen, right there. That is the tornado that is moving into Jacksonville right now. So please, Jacksonville, friends, lowest floor, away from windows, a small windowless room, maybe a closet. Get down there, cover up in blankets, sheets, a mattress, whatever you need to do to protect yourself from any flying debris as the storm moves in from the south and west. So you can see it's generally following Highway 67 and it's tracking toward the east and northeast. And we're looking, you can see here in the image below me, they're repositioning the camera because this storm, they're looking from right here. This tornado is tracking just to their south. I mean, look at that. Do we have debris there on camera or is the, are those are raindrops there oh, so on the messy. Yeah, this is just your velocity for that rotation. Well, I'm talking about in the image here below me because oh, yeah, the raindrops the looked like debris, but we may have debris there. Can we take that full? I want to get a closer look. This is moving into Jacksonville, the south side of town, and we're going to quickly go back to, uh, do we have debris in the air? I believe, we, obviously, this is, what's that? Jacksonville this is downtown right Jacksonville. It's going up Main right Street now. toward the railroad tracks to downtown. All right, Pat. Yeah, I mean, you're familiar with this area. You're more than welcome. Keep talking. I mean, uh, tell us where this is heading. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's east of 67. It just crossed the James Street, Main Street area. It is moving, obviously, toward the northeast. It's kind of going to go up First Street uh, on the uh, northeast side of Jacksonville. It's yeah, going to go up First Street area. There, you can see it on your screen. This is moving through Jacksonville. Let's pop up the double boxes once again, and let's get a radar look once again to get an idea. That rotation, south side, this is really right over Jacksonville. So you can see there's Tricky Lane, Pike Avenue. This is moving toward uh, Graham Road, and it's going to continue moving toward the east and northeast. And you can see, say it's over the Kroger. Near Kroger in Jacksonville. So Jacksonville, we've been talking about this. I hope you're in your safe place. Lowest floor away from windows. I see a lot of cars on the road there. I don't like to see that. I want to make sure everybody is as safe as you possibly can be. So that's going to take it eventually from Jacksonville. It's going to keep it going toward Cabot. So moving out of Jacksonville. So there's South Redmond Road, Jacksonville, Oak Grove Drive, and then continuing to track toward the east and northeast. And at the same time, how are we looking as far as other storms elsewhere? I know we've got, do we have any other tornado warnings? It's on this one. I know, I'm I, not, yeah. I, know. I just want to make sure we don't this have any other This is the only warning warnings. I do believe, Joel. We have reports of 18 wheelers that have been blown over as well over in Jacksonville with this. So we're okay. going to focus on that. But yeah, I do believe this is the only warning right now, and it is a tornado emergency. Yeah, so tornado em School. Say that one more time. Near Pat. the old Jacksonville High School near Lowe's. All right, there we go. So this is right over the south side of Jacksonville, moving kind of skirt really right through the middle of Jacksonville as Pat was just mentioning those landmarks there uh, and that'll keep moving toward the east northeast right now it looks like uh, you can see it there on your screen and uh, our, our crews are out there working to make sure that they we have visual of this uh, that's moving toward the east there we go there's Graham Road 
Graham Road, Loop Acres, much easier to see this rotation there now as it gets away from the radar site. So there's, um, there is Northeastern Avenue, uh, and uh, you can see that's going to keep moving to the north and east. We have Pat Walker, of course, here. He's going to continue to track this for us. Pat, you okay. can take it away. I really want to focus on what uh, Julian, a photojournalist Julian, uh, is doing here. He's trying to turn around. They're doing the construction in Jacksonville right now, so all those access roads are one way. I think he's trying to book around and get back toward the north. So this is Graham Road east of Jacksonville. We're talking about that rotation. That's J.P. Wright Loop Road, which goes back behind the Jacksonville, old Jacksonville High School, not the current Jacksonville North Pulaski High School. So that's where that is. It'll be in moving northeast. Looks like it's going to all stay toward the east side of Highway 67 and eventually head toward the Holland Bottoms area. Let me look here. To, I'm going to kind of focus on where uh, Julian is now. He's back on 67 going north. He's crossing, it looks like, the Redmond Road area. And, uh, yeah, that's the Redmond Road area. He's going north. The storm is ahead of him right now to the northeast. He's moving. It looks like there's very little traffic on 67. That's good because everybody's cleared it. But, of course, there was reports of some 18-wheelers uh, with an accident there, too. So, uh, uh, if Julie, I think Julian's driving. If there's a reporter in there, can y'all point your camera to the north if they can hear us? I don't know if they can hear us or not. If they can point that camera to the north a little bit more, straight up the road. I just want to see where you're going straight up the road if you are. Oh, you know, it's, it's freezing out on us right there. All right, let's get back here on the, on the radar here. Uh, so this, that's J.P. Wright Loop Road goes back behind the high school. This is Tawnyville right here. This is, this is the area on 67 between Cabot and Jacksonville. You know where all the liquor stores are north of Jacksonville. The old road right there, that's 161, right along, right along the access road, right along Highway 167. And that is where our rotation is. Came up right through downtown Jacksonville, moving to the northeast. That's Holland Bottoms Road up there too, by the way. So that's J.P. Wright Loop Road on the back side. Uh, I think the, uh, the high school is like right up there, so it's really close to that, the old high school, not the current one. Uh, the old Red Devil Stadium is up there too. So. That's, uh, that is our Velocity product, Graham Road, J.P. Wright Loop Road. There are a lot of homes back in here. This is a highly residential area uh, there on the northeast side of Jacksonville. Golf course area is up in here too. Yeah, Randy? Yeah, we got a touchdown confirmed at Main and Oak Street in Jacksonville. Main and Oak and also Jacksonville. we're having reports coming in from Cabot of debris in the air. Debris, so yes. the storm in Jacksonville lifting up debris and getting up into Cabot now, okay? I can see that, all right. Look at that rotation. That is, that is the inbound, that is the outbound there, right there. So that is a, a lot, a really tight rotation there. So debris reported in Cabot. We're looking at debris in Cabot. And then you got, the, look at that's your debris. Go back to that debris indicator. Is that Carmen? Yeah, go back to that debris indicator. Oh, our rotation's moved. There's your debris now. Okay. So this is debris indicator being pulled up within the storm. And there, there's Cabot. There's your debris indicator. You want to go back to your velocity real quick? There's the debris. That's in Lone Oak County. This is, uh, uh, yeah, this is in now, that's the county line. This is in Lone Oak County. That's Highway 89 south of Cabot. That's, that's 321 Bill Foster Highway 89. Juliana, is she, where is she? Is uh, Zach still out there close to that area? Do you know? Yes, we can pull it up. We, can we get, whenever you get Zach Hall, let me know. And we're going to take Zach Hall on this uh, because he's, it's getting close to him. So that's... Uh, that's Graham Road right there. That says Highway 5. That's, if that's, that's the county line. Zoom back, out, zoom back out just a little bit. Let me get my perspective. Yeah, this, this is, this is, this is that's 321 right there. That's 321. That's 89. This is just northeast of Jacksonville, north of Graham Road. Uh, that's Stagecoach Road right there, I believe. It's going to be going toward the northeast. Again, this is on the south side of Cabot. Holland Bottoms area is kind of where it is, Stagecoach Road. That's where that rotation is right now. It looks like it's out of Jacksonville. And I think now we have uh, Julian here. Oh, there's Zach right there. So, Juliana, do you know if he is still on Highway 321? Okay. He's on 89. He's probably going to say, oh, you see it. You see it. You see it right there. You see it. He's on 89. It's 89 coming south out of Cabot. He's seeing it there on the right, right of his shot there. That's Zach Hall. He's getting that right there. There's still our... our a rotation. Uh, this, this, we're going to probably get a new scan here pretty soon, and hopefully we're going to see that in a different spot because it looks like Zach is seeing it a little farther toward the east than what the radar is showing that right now. Yep, there it is. It just moved. Shady Oaks Trail right there. Sunset Circle. Sunset there right off. Sunset Circle right off Stagecoach Road. It's where there's Gun Club Road. It's just toward the northwest of Gun Club. I mean, it's right on top of Gun Club Road that comes off of Stagecoach. 
and back over to our 89. So this is kind of go right up here to the south side. That's Pickthorn, Mount Tabor Road, Mount Tabor United Methodist Church right there. It's going to go right up that way. Oglesby Road right there. Let's get up here. That's, is that, I think that is the, uh, yeah, there, this, is Mount, this, is, this is Mount Carmel Baptist Church right here. Mount Tabor United Methodist Church right here. Mount Carmel Church right there. It's Campground Road right there. Campground Road. Highway 89, Pine Street, and Campground Road. Walmart, uh, Walmart uh, Neighborhood Market right there. Again, let's go back down toward the south if we can, Carmen. All right, so there, uh, there it is. It's crossing Stagecoach Road. Rotation Stagecoach, Gun Club Road, Oglesby, just toward the south of the Parnell community. Uh, going to be close to the Holland Bottoms area, Midway area. Uh, it's getting close to there. And again, I think it's going to go right up to around Mount Tabor, United Methodist Church, and then Mount Carmel Baptist Church here on the south and the south side of Cabot. All right. Uh, what, what is, are you going to track it now? Let's get it good. All right, I'll get over here. So there's Midway School, 255, which is two minutes from now, Parnell, Anthony Schmidt Memorial County Park, Stagecoach Elementary School, which is going to be up here toward the Sylvania area, then Old Austin, that's the intersection of 319 and 38 on the northeast side of Cabot. So here's Cabot here. This is Old Austin. Here's Austin. There are wards up at the top. That's 38 that goes out towards Sylvania and eventually over to 31 Highway uh, between Lone Oak and Jacksonville. So. I don't know why that says Highway 5, but that is not Highway 5 on our map. That's Stagecoach Road right there. Pickthorn, Mount Tabor Road, the Parnell area. We're probably going to get a new scan in a minute, get a new update where the rotation is. Do we have an update on maybe where Zach is yet, if, or if you have a video of Zach? Oh, look at that. Look at that. right. It's, it's buffering. Okay. Thanks, Lindsay. So there's your rotation with this. Tornado warning here for 315. Lone Oak, Prairie, Pulaski, White County. Looks like the, the, the rotation is out of Pulaski County. But this is northern Lone Oak County, south side of Cabot to Sylvania, all the way up to on the south side of Beebe, Highway 31. That's 236 that goes off to the east there uh, near the, the bayou area, the, re, the reserve area, uh, the wildlife reserve area. That's where it's probably going to go. That's Butlerville, 38 and 31 out there. Like Cabot, Cabot Schools is like the high school is right there. That now that is at that is at 321. That is at Mount Carmel Baptist Church and Mount Carmel Cemetery. That is at Mount Carmel Church, Mount Baptist Church, and the cemetery. Got Zach back, but now he's buffering again. Can you go back to rotation velocity there, Carmen? Okay. So this is this is this is where that 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 the, the not the debris ball, but like where that hook area is. And there's where our rotation is: Mount Tabor Road up to Mount Carmel Road, Highway 321, Mount Carmel Road, right there. Curse station right there, gas station here, at the gas, here. A couple gas stations there at 89, you know, Mount Carmel Baptist Church. Campground Road right here. And Sylvania is just right up there. So, southeast side of Cabot, take shelter immediately right now. You need to get to the safe place of your home in your storm shelter. Is this, is it kind of moving more right? Do you, what, look at that, Joel. Do you think that's kind of moving rightish? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's kind of turning a more to the east. A little bit. That's kind of been the nature with it. Uh, what we saw w when it moved through closer to West Little Rock as well. It is a little bit, a little yeah. bit checking a little bit farther east, but still that northeasterly direction here. And this is tracking about 50 miles per hour. Okay, so it is moving. You're putting a new track there. So yeah. here we are, basically just at Mount Carmel Baptist Church, between there and uh, Mount Tabor United Methodist Church. Sylvania 301. That's six minutes. Sylvania, take shelter right now. Woodlawn School, Bethlehem School. Butlerville 306, Hickory Plains. That's around 313 as it gets over into uh, as it gets over into Prairie County. Uh, so that's uh, going to keep moving off toward the northeast. Yeah, getting word right now that we have gotten uh, reports of injuries in oh. Little Rock. So we is that know from that the like? Uh, is that at the shopping center? I maybe? believe out toward West Little Rock, but uh, not exactly. Um, not exactly. We're sure, but yeah, we will. It's unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, hopefully, hopefully nothing more than injuries. All right. Pontiac and Osage, North Little Rock. Uh, Pontiac, Osage, so that's close to uh, so Indian Hills. That's the Indian Hills damaged area. Damaged or destroyed homes, trees are down. In the, in the Pontiac, Osage Road area? Pontiac North and Rock? Osage, North Little Rock, yes. Okay, that's Indian Hills, North Little Rock, uh, near the Kroger in, in North Little Rock. So there's Cabot, three miles south, three miles south down to Mount Tabor Road. 
Hey, and by the way, we have a new series of thunderstorm warning, I know, for Little Rock proper, and this is going to affect yeah, a lot of those areas that are engaging in search and rescue across northwest Little Rock. Uh, even though a tornado warning hasn't been issued, it's an extremely dangerous situation due to the ongoing search and rescue efforts. Carmen, can you give us the reflect on that? Yeah, here so you can see uh, where it is. That's only okay. going to hinder, uh, yeah, rescue. Right there, right there. That's, that's where we earlier had this storm went right through here, and now we got heavy rainfall. They're hindering efforts to rescue anybody or find everybody. That's what's going on there. So severe thunderstorm warning, that's until 3.30, Little Rock, North Little Rock, Sherwood, up to Jacksonville, and even over to Kerr in the far western parts of uh, Lono County. All right, we did get a new scan back in here. Uh, it looks like it's maybe closer and closer, uh, or far, getting a little farther away. This is the, that's 321, and that's the 321 that turns up Sylvania. That's 321 Spur, which continues to go over to 31. So here we are, we're going down Mount Cuomo Road. That's Dogwood. That's Dogwood, which goes straight back up to Old Austin. Uh, and into, uh, and I think it's Coco's up there, the restaurant at Old Austin. So that's Dogwood. This is a few miles south of, Do of Old Austin. So that's Mount Carmel Road. That's Campground Road right there, which continues to go off to the east of 31. So Yielding Road, this is the community of Bethlehem right here. Grand Prairie uh, Water Office is over here too. They're on along Highway 31 in the Bethlehem community right out there where 321 Spur hits, hits 31. So there's Butlerville. Here's the intersection here, uh, the junction they call it, 38 and 31. Uh, the place where we've done a lot of stories on the pizza restaurant that it lost its place, got a new place. That's where it is right there. Debris, how's it look to you, Carmen? Uh, I, it's not looking, it, it looks rather messy from what, I'm not seeing anything as distinct as what we saw earlier with this. Well, right, like right there maybe? Yeah, flip let's back. zoom in. Yeah, flip back. Yeah, Do that and go, go back. back. Flip back to reflectivity. So you're closer to Sylvania, yeah. Well, Precip yeah. is probably going to get just a little bit better view of this. So there. Okay, so there, that's, the, that's the bottom side of our hook, it looks like, right? Yep. That's the bottom side of the hook. Right over there, closer to 38. Okay, so it's getting closer and closer. Limbo. So yep. it's in Sylvania. Sylvania now is where we're looking at this. Yeah. So east of Cabot, just south of Old Austin. Here's, here's Ward up here. Ward, uh, it's, it's, it looks like it's going to stay south of 38. So it's going to be, for, for, for Ward's concern, just south of 38. But some locations out here all have Ward addresses. Even, in fact, all the way to the county line. Those are Ward addresses. Uh, but that's going to that's go into Ward address areas. But Ward, the city of, I think it's going to stay southeast of you. But that's Old Austin. That's 321 that comes up to 38. And there's a 3138 junction right there. It's going to go right to the 3831 junction. Okay, we're gonna uh, we'll go ahead and switch. Go ahead and switch to that. It's a house in Midtown, so this is a. Uh, I don't know if you don't know if you can tell me the road. Okay, we're not sure the road, but this is in Midtown. This is in Little Rock, Midtown, Little Rock. You got it. Uh, so Mississippi and Cantrell, man, you can't get much more Midtown than that. Mississippi and Cantrell. Some storm. This is not too far away from the Colonial Heights uh, Shopping Center, where we have uh, some major damage there. Okay, we can go back to the radar. All right, so here's your track. Right there, just on the, around Sylvania, Butlerville is 3.05. It's 3 o'clock right now. So Butlerville up to Edwards and Hickory Plains, 3.12, 3.12. So Hickory Plains, you've got 10 minutes. Get in your safe place right now. This, this storm has produced damage. It still has debris in it. It still has a very tight rotation in Sylvania. Yes, sir. Or this is two miles southeast of Highway 89 in Cabot, uh, near Cabot. Trees are down, debris on the road. That's two miles southeast of Highway 89 Cabot. Okay, that's, that's right here. It kind of went right through that Parnell area we were talking about. That's where it is. All right, so we got Zach over here. Uh, if y'all can tell me, if Julianne, if you can get in my ear, tell Lindsay exactly where Zach is looking. It looks like we can see, maybe that's the, I can't get in front of that, but it looks like that's the wall cloud over there perhaps. So he's at 89 Mount Tabor. So he's back behind the storm. He's at 89 in Mount Tabor. He's back here looking back up at it. So he's in a safe place. That's for sure. He's in a safe place. And it is toward his northeast by about four miles or so. So he's, he's looking back up to where it is where he is. So now we're passing 321, heading toward 31. Again, that's the junction, 38 and 31 in northern Lone Oak County. And then there's Hickory Plains over here in Prairie County. You just had the debris there, Carmen. It looked like there was still some there, right? A little bit. Let me switch you back to it so you can see debris mode. Yeah, the still lower, south of Sylvania. Is yeah, that right what you're seeing? There, and then a little bit over here. Yeah. The lower values. But I don't know if that's even, is that in reflectivity area? 
Yeah, let me zoom out so I can give you some, some reference point to it. Okay, so yeah. it was right there. All right, I'm going to switch you back over to velocity. Okay. So there's where our latest, the highest debris, I would say, there and just southeast of Vania. Maybe those two locations. Yeah. That could be not debris, just could be the bad data coming into it. And there's our rotation. So what we were seeing there on the southeast of Vania, that's probably more, if there is debris in it, that's probably more like, oh, there's your new scan. Okay, new scan. About to hit, about to cross 31, or we're crossing Highway 31 now. That is about, oh gosh, Covington Road to the junction. We were probably less than a mile away from 38 and 31 Junction, crossing Highway 31. Going to go right toward Butlerville, right toward Butlerville. So there we are. This is now east of, uh, just barely east of Sylvania, east of Old Austin, east of Cabot. This is the, this is the Pulaski, uh, Pulaski, excuse me, the Lone Oak Prairie County line right there, right past Butlerville, and our possible tornado, when we're still seeing some signs of debris, it looks like it's crossing 31. You can see a little bit of the hook there, can't we, Carmen? See just a little bit of that hook right there? Okay. west of Butlerville. That's kind of the area of focus. Mm -hmm. And then of course, right over top of Butlerville. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well. So there's, there's still our hook crossing basically the 3831 junction at this point. Going to be going northeast. This may clip into parts of White County. BB, the city of BB, is under the tornado warning, the big polygon. Okay, so people in BB, Macray, your sirens probably went off. The far south side of BB, I think that's where uh, that's where you're probably in most concerned area. If you're kind of on the western side of Highway 67, 167, you're in the clear from that. So if you're west of 67, no concerns. Yes. And even though this storm over Little Rock here is uh, right now not producing a tornado necessarily, uh, it is moving through an area that's just been hard hit and we have folks probably without power in that area. So just want to reference it, let folks know, yes, there's a severe thunderstorm warning with it. And yes, it's going to hinder those search sure and rescue will. Uh, operations that are happening right now. But uh, and it does have a hook on there it. There is. There's a little bit. But as far as the. Um, you know, as far as rotation goes with it, it's fairly weak, but it's following. Okay, this the is same this track. is crossing into North Little Rock again right now. It's the same spot. Is this is this you, Carmen Max too? Okay, let's let's just let's go back to rotation and see what that is like. Because this is we're under severe thunderstorm warning. This is in North Little Rock. Here's the Arkansas River. That's at basically that's the north interchange. There's Levy. So there's a little bit of this is like Kamak Village, Kamak Village crossing into North Little Rock. And there's our little bit of a hook right there too. So just a severe thunderstorm warning. There is some rotation with that. Joel, thanks for yeah. for reminding us of that here. And as you said, hampering, uh, hampering, you know, recovery. I think guys, y'all say we have some pictures or we have a live video. Oh, Jessica. Yeah. Take that. Take that, Jessica. There we go. This is live in Jacksonville. This was uh, Julian, our f photojournalist who was in Jacksonville earlier. We saw the rotation go through uh, downtown Jacksonville. Uh, that, that's, oh, this is Randy. This is what you were talking about earlier. This is that spot you were talking about. Oak and what was that? Oak and uh, James, Oak and Main? Yes, yes, Oak and Main. Oak and James Street. I think Oak and James Street. Got power lines down there. Look at this. Look at the roof of that house, how damaged it is. All these trees down there. And you got debris on the road right there. Hope that guy's not hurt. He's got something over his head. I mean, he might have had a head injury. I think that right there, I think that's the old First Baptist Jacksonville. I think that's the old, old First Baptist Jacksonville. So here we are down, downtown near the railroad tracks in old downtown Jacksonville. Jacksonville police are there. Uh, probably, I don't know if they're blocking the road. Mill must go through, I guess. We have half inch hail that's being reported in, in North Little Rock. That was uh, right just a minute ago. So as that's we were that looking same at storm. that just a second ago. Yeah, so we have all that damage. Now we have hail coming down too in North Little Rock. Okay. Uh, Julian, can you, can you pan to your left a little bit? Yeah, this is this. He's on the bridge that goes over the railroad tracks. That's where he is in Jacksonville. He's on there's some damage there on that building. I don't know if that's part of the old First Baptist Church. Is that damage over here? There's some of that part of a chimney, maybe a house, kind of ripped off some siding or something, looks like perhaps. The tree damage here behind that shop. Looks like you got pieces of the, the shop maybe inside. There's damage to the shop here on that right corner of the shop. Roof damage there to that building right. Uh, okay. Okay, so okay, we're going to leave Julian and Jacksonville. Julian, stay there. Thanks a lot. Now we're in Little Rock. We're at the Kroger. We had this, gosh, what, 30 minutes ago, the reports of this damage in Kroger. So uh, uh, we, were, we, were on, we were on the front steps of the Kroger. That's the little, you, you push your card over when you go out the Kroger. That's where we are. 
they're still trying to set this up and hold it up. Are, are we inside the Kroger, Jessica? Are we inside it? Yeah. Of homes that are reportedly destroyed in the Kmac Village area. Golly. So Kmac Village, homes destroyed in Kmac Village, which is very, really close to this Kroger at Rodney Perriman, Colonial, uh, Colonial Heights. So here we are. In, I think we're in or just the front door of the Kroger. You saw some of the pots down. There's damage there. <sighs> okay, let's go back to the radar. Ra uh, where are you right now on the radar? Oh. Well, just because there's still a little bit of rotation. Okay. That's that same storm. I'm going to loop this back just really quickly here because you can see very clearly uh, just what we've been tracking this whole time. Uh, that, of course, tornado that we're now right seeing there. that damage from. And you can see just how how bright it is over Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. uh, that obviously led to that damage. Now we're still tracking it. That is that same storm that's now tracking into Butlerville. It is. Rotation's there, you're right. Tornado warning is until 3.30 or 3.15. Here, let me show you real quick. Okay. You see me behind me or in front of me, that, this, is, this is Kroger Roddy Perham. Cars are damaged there. Uh, is, look at the front of it. Doing a new tornado warning for Little Rock and North Little Rock. They it's are. Not, um, uh, just they there's, are. there's rotation on that near Levy right yeah. there on uh, uh -huh. high, Interstate 40. Uh, it's... What I'm told here on the National Weather Service chat, they'll be issuing a new tornado the, warning there that'll include, I would imagine, North Little Rock looking at this just mm -hmm. based on the fact that the rotation with it has now shifted north of the river. But that rotation looks like it's kind of coming up JFK and right there around the north interchange. So that'll yeah, eventually take it right over Sherwood. Yeah, same so place, same spot. Same path, basically. Yeah, maybe maybe, off maybe a just bit. a hair Yeah, south. there's that warning. They Donna, just put did it you, out. Donna, did you have something just a second ago? Uh, yeah. I that's our new There's tornado warning, warning. Pulaski. Go yeah. ahead, Donna. 345. One of the things I, I, I guess I just wanted you guys to, to point out is that the fact that this... This is obviously my phone going off here. I guess everyone's phone is going yeah. off right now. Yeah, it's, it's the new warning that does include Little Rock. That does include uh, Galloway and Jacksonville. Again, North Little Rock. This until 345. So you can see that new red polygon is that tornado warning. So this is the new tornado warning. Wow, look. This is moving fast, guys. This is already, this is already uh, North Little Rock going into Sherwood again. Let's go back to radar. That's, by the way, that is, you've been seeing, that's the Rodney Parham Kroger. Look at the roof damage on that. You got damage all in the front. Got cars damaged in the parking lot. Man, I hope, is this, this, is this where we have injuries? May, it might be. Okay, so we're back here. In, this is Sherwood. There's this Lakewood of North Little Rock, 67. There's, there's this access road right there. Let's get in here. Let's see. Okay, that is, that is, that is so, okay, this, 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 this is the 6740 interchange. 6740 interchange, McCain Mall right there. Now my phone's going off with the tornado warning, finally. That's kind of moving toward the east, yeah, that's northeast. A, I think this has more of an easterly component to this, Pat. Okay, so this is, this is restaurant and car dealership row right now is where that is. Car dealership and restaurant row in North Little Rock. And this is moving now to the east at 50 miles East at hour. 50, okay, so... That probably will keep it south of Jacksonville proper, but Sherwood, Rixie area, that's the 440 uh, bypass from the Beanfield back down to I-40. So it's going to go out that direction. So here's the track that Carmen's got for us now. Uh, that's Spring Hill, 310. What time is it now? 310. It's at Spring Hill. It's at, it's at McCain Mall. It's at Spring Hill then. Fairman, 310. Prothrow, 311. The McAlmont community, it's right there. McAlmont people, take shelter right now. Valentine south of Jacksonville around 314, Rixie as well 314, Galloway then around 315, uh, I think it's the Biomita area, or just called Mita, 324, and over to Furlough as we get into Lone Oak County on 325. So this new warning is until 345, is that right? Uh, that warning there will go until, uh, that is a four. tornado warning that goes until 345. Until 345, so this is, this is Pulaski County, North Little Rock, into Lone Oak County. Does it also include uh, Prairie by chance, or does it stop in Lone Oak? Uh, it, it, uh, oh, that warning up to, it includes Lone Oak. Okay, so it's just like, it doesn't go into Prairie, okay. So here we are, still right over uh, the McCain Boulevard, McCain Boulevard area of North The Rock, Restaurant Road, Car Dealership Road. So that's where it is right now, moving kind of east, maybe a little bit northeast, but kind of east. There at Sherwood to uh, North Rock. Uh, Joel, you're drawing that track? Yes. Okay, here's a new track on that. 
So McAlmont 312, or 313 at McAlmont, Rick's area 314, same time for that. Kerr 320, that's right along I-40, 320, so that's eight minutes from now, moving toward the east. So that's Gravel Ridge, so Jacksonville is, is right in this area. Jacksonville, I believe, technically is under that tornado warning, but if this continues on east, got a new scan coming in here. Okay, so now that is, that is uh, that's on the old road. Okay, so that's in the McAlmond area now. That's where we are in the McAlmond area, the old highway between Jacksonville and, and North Rock and Rock, Protho Junction. by the way, and not to, not to take away from that, but that's a new uh, tornado warning, it looks like, that's for southeastern White County and uh, heading up toward Georgetown. That's the same one that moved that through Little Rock. That was the same Rock one that went through Little Rock. That's, and it still has a new tornado warning. On. Okay, so let's stay on that just a second, Joel. Do you want to so stay on the one in Little Rock? Or no, let's stay on the, the, the new one for just like okay. a couple of seconds. So sure. This, uh, this is southeastern White County. That's Griffithville. There's BB, so this is outside of BB to the east. It's just southeast of McRae. So just southeast of McRae. There's Higginson on the south side of Searcy. So right along 67, it's, it's kind of close to the warning. But Searcy proper, you're not under this warning. Anybody just south of 67 near Searcy, you're on the edge of it. But if it's moving east, northeast, more toward the Griffithville area, eventually moves over into Woodruff County. So uh, prior 325, Georgetown and White County 328. Hurricane Lake State uh, Game and Fish Area, 332. Augusta, over in Woodruff, 340. And then Woodruff County Hospital, I think that's over McCrory, at 345. Okay, so that's where it is up there. I just lost that monitor. Okay, let's go back to our Little Rock storm, Joel. By the way, find your safe place right now. Get to the middle part of your home in these locations where you're under those tornado warnings. You want to put a lot of walls between you and the outside. Those walls act like a like a lot of extra protection because some debris may be coming to the house hits the outside wall it slows it down but if you're close to the outside wall you're uh you're in danger more walls between you and the outside can help if you've got a storm shelter please do get something over your head if you can all right so again here we are this is our north little rock sherwood McAlmont storm here right here up highway 161 this is 67 167 it's kind of like uh between sherwood near the uh keel and trammel area uh, kind of a swampy area right there. It goes out to Round Top Road, you know, where the Round Top old gas station is, folks. That's where it's close to as well. And this keeps going up toward uh, uh, the north and east up here, up to the south side of Jacksonville. So that's the, uh, that's the old road that comes into Jacksonville right there. Comes all the way up here. So that's the old road. That's where it crosses 440, where the old road crosses 440. And that looks like where it is right now. There's a, there's a, there's a church right there, a huge, huge Baptist church. I don't know the name of it. Uh, but it's sitting right there, and that's where that possible rotation is right at this point. Going up the old highway, 161. I think that's Military Drive or Military Road right there. I think that's what it is. That goes east uh, off toward the east towards South Bend uh, out of Jacksonville. So I think that's Military Road right there. So that, it's going to look like it's going to be just on the very south side of Jacksonville, which is really only about a mile or two south of what the earlier one that went through. Okay, we're going to go back to, we've got damage. We've talked about the Colonial Heights damage. This is Breckenridge Village, basically on the other side of Rodney Perham Road on the south side. You can see, you know, Breckenridge Village, what it looks like there. That's what it is. And what is that right there building, Jessica? You've got roof damage on that building there. We're basically in Breckenridge Village, seeing that live damage there. Uh, this is from our first tornado warning that went through there. Do you know that place, Kevin? Trying to take a look. Is that, yeah. Is that near the movie theater? Yes, it is near the movie theater, which was, I guess, it's closed now. Is that a tropical smoothie? That's a tropical smoothie there. Yes. Okay. Tropical smoothie. And McDonald's is right next. And McDonald's right there at the Breckenridge intersection yep. with Rodney Bram. You're right. Okay. So that's what we're looking at there. Live video there. I think that was our first storm that went through there. This is across the street from the the Kroger at Rodney Bram. Look at all the debris just laying everywhere out there, in the trees, in the bushes, insulation, just. Uh, it's a it's it's a mess there right now okay but the second storm now up here south side of Jacksonville Tracy Lane military road area where it's coming out there that's Valentine Road the Bymeda area is right out here you know it's a lot of low areas some farmland as well it's going right up into there heading just on the south and southeast side of Jacksonville that's you know it looks like it's crossing or has just crossed the the highway 440 which comes up from 40 to 67. What time is it now? 316. I'm sure a lot of people probably took off 
from work early today to get this because so many people had their kids got out of school and they got off early to get home. And hopefully, man, hopefully we didn't have a lot of people on 67 uh, when this went through. So there's the furlough community, South Bend about right there. It's going right towards South Bend. Joel, can you put a new track on that for us? Let's do that. So they've just trimmed Sherwood out of that warning, by the way, Pat. So Good. this uh, includes still the Galloway area, areas on I-40 mm -hmm. uh, and north there. Okay, so this is I-40, as Joel saying, right through there. That is, uh, it's, he said they cleared it out of the Sherwood area. They just shave it back. Once it's cleared it, they, you know, they, they say no more. So it's out of that. Moving east, uh, that's the, the military area going over uh, to, I think, yep, that's going to be Kerr. That's Kerr Station Road over there. Kind of close, a little farther to the south than our first storm was that went through here. What's our, what's our debris look like on this? Uh, let's see. Not seeing any signatures right there that jump at me. Let's take it back in time okay. real quick and see how that... I don't see any evidence of the second storm dropping a tornado, but at the same time, obviously, we know what the last one did, so we need to treat this one seriously as well. Yeah, uh, because, I mean, just takes seconds. That's all it does is just takes seconds for it, it to form again. So, okay, that's, this, is, this is Cabot, Sylvania, Butlerville. That, that storm is the one that's now up into Griffithville, too. So we have this one, tornado warning till 345, eastern Pulaski County, central Lono County, south of Cabot. Cabot's not in that, but out Mount Carmel Road. Again, out Mount Carmel Road, once you get to oh, just south of Sylvania, that portion of 321 becomes back under that tornado warning. So this is a, this is a Kerr Station Road right there, kind of close to the South Bend area between, uh, between Jacksonville and Furlough. This is a... Uh, that's furlough there. So this is Remington Road that comes from the Remington plant up to furlough, then up to Highway 89. That's 294 going over to furlough. A lot of homes along that. You can see a lot of the city streets there. So there are a lot of homes and neighborhoods through there, even though so it's, it's a rural area, but there still are a lot of homes in eastern Pulaski County and heading in toward uh, Lone Oak County. So this is East Valentine Road. That's Jacksonville there. That's Graham Road. It comes right through the heart of Jacksonville. I think that's the Redmond Road area. So this is and this is, this is really close to the, just the south side of Jacksonville at this point, if that's where our rotation is. You want to go back to velocity real quick and see what our velocity product looks like. Is that over here now? It's hard to tell, and I think, honestly, uh, as I look at this, like we still have the hook there. I mean, that's, at when, we look at, when we look at reflectivity, we're looking at rain where it's falling, and rotation can be somewhere else because rotation is going to happen in the updraft where you don't have rain. But... We sometimes get rain up in that updraft because it's pulling it in. But at this point, it doesn't look like rain's really being much pulled into it too much. So rotation here, right near South Bend, west of Furlough, and just east of Jacksonville. Looks like a really broad area of rotation. Jessica, y'all have just pulled up uh, Zach and Frankie here. Uh, where are they right now? Can you tell me if you know what road it is? They're in Ward. Oh. Do you know where? Okay, I bet, you, I bet you they've gone up to that Butlerville area, which is technically a ward address, the Butlerville Junction Road area. I think that might be Highway 31 going, I think they may be going north of Highway 31, if you could just find out what road they are in there. So, this looks, might be, uh, there's a water tower coming up here. That looks like a ward water tower. It looks like their logo, I think. Can we see it? Anybody see it real quick? I didn't see it too well. So, they're, they're in northern Lono County. So here's Cabot. They may be in. The, they may be in this. I think they're kind of in this area right here. Uh, this is some of this area here is is actually Ward Water, even though it's not Ward, but that's that's probably where they are in this area right here. So that's Kerr Station Road, Highway 89, and this is going almost the same place. There's a new severe thunderstorm warning now with this too. Just came in. New severe thunderstorm warning. It looks like this is almost getting outside of the tornado warning, isn't it, guys? I think there's a possibility that they, is that replacing the tornado warning? That's what I'm trying to determine well, here. Well, it's until 345. I think they just may, are they, any talk about uh, well, canceling it? Well, and you're also looking at it as it goes, uh, let me look here and see if this warning here, it includes, um, it is involving ping pong ball size hail. So what they're doing is they're covering that Both. hail core. It's a severe storm. Severe storms can have tornadoes. Right. They can have hail and they can have damage and winds. They can have all three. So there can be one portion of the storm can have a potential for tornadoes, but not the whole storm does. But some parts will. It's not always right at the same place as the tornado portion. So you cover the, the threats that are there. That's what it looks like they're doing with that. So Cabot, with a severe thunderstorm warning, ping pong, ball size hill, 
uh, from Cabot out Highway 38 toward Butlerville and from BB southward, the Wattensaw area, uh, back to Sylvania as well, and back here Graham Road area, that Gun Club Road area again, is probably where it's going to be. And the rotation, it, it just doesn't look, uh, it looks really broad at this point. Uh, is this maybe a new area, a new hook forming here? On the south side down here. Let's see, uh, by the way, while uh, while we look at this, uh, we just got word also that there's apparently a gas leak at Pontiac and Osage there in North Little Rock. Okay, where is that? Pontiac. Oh, gas Pontiac, leak at yeah, Pontiac, Osage, the Indian Hills North area. North Rock, so the Indian about. Hills area. Uh, same place we had other reports of damage earlier, and that was with our same storm that hit uh, the Rodney Pair in 430 area, the Breckenridge, Colonial Heights, uh, cross 430 and uh, up into Jacksonville too. Same storm causing that uh, gas leak and damage in the Indian Hills area of North Rock. Carmen? I wanted to point out too, of course, we're still watching what's going on here. I know we've mentioned, of course, Jacksonville Cabot, Camac Village. I mean, I have friends who are texting me right now. Their home was hit. Oh. I have uh, friends who are texting me images of houses in Camac Village that have been hit. So if you know anybody in Camac Village, if you are familiar with the area, my house is over in that area. Did, I don't they know say? if my house Did is check on yours? Somebody needs to check on my house, but we're getting damage yeah. reports here of neighborhoods well known in Little Rock from that same storm. We'll see system. how good we're your friends are, watching. right? We'll go check on your house. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, Th but they will. still, yeah, very serious here. They will do it. All right, so here's our tornado warning till 345 in Lono County. Uh, they're probably, I would think they're probably going to drop the, the Pulaski County portion out of that because it looks like it's out of it, uh, or they may just let it all ride. Joel, let's go up here and check on our Georgetown and uh, Griffithville storm in northeastern or uh, southeastern White County, about to cross uh, in the White River into Woodruff County. It's kind of a broad rotation there. I mean, just say, this Georgetown area is a back around Griffithville and Belcher. It's like it's weakened a little bit as it's crossed over into White County near Griffithville and Belcher. It's mm -hmm. moving toward Georgetown still. We can put a track on that and uh, just in case it does re-strengthen, but it would be near Belcher now moving northeast. It'll eventually cross over into Woodruff County. And there's a list at some of those so, towns there. So Gregory 337, Georgetown 330, so that's six minutes from Georgetown. Augusta 342 and Maurice McCroy, 340 at McCroy, Tupelo. 353 and up to Pumpkin Bend at 355. So that's that is our tornado warning, and that is until that's until 345 as well, isn't that right? This that wide is western Woodruff, northern prairie. That goes until 345, correct? Okay. 345 on this one. The, a broad rotation. I'm not confident that we're getting a tornado here. Do you want to go and switch and look at the debris? I mean, we're we're two to three thousand feet up in the atmosphere here, or more. Uh, I don't, I don't, that's just the edge of it. I don't think that's debris. It really doesn't look like there's much in there. It's of any debris signature on that. It, it looks like it's weakened a good bit, but remember, it's moving into an area that is much more conducive for it yeah. to strengthen. So, you know, I know that it's, it's just moved through, a, obviously, a populated area, and we've, we've talked about it a lot, but this isn't over. This is still in central Arkansas, and the worst of it's still in, um, you know, expected to move through eastern Arkansas eventually. All right, let's go back in and check on the road. I think we were getting a, trying to get a new hook on this storm here in, in uh, Lono County, just north of Furlough. Okay, that's Highway 89. That's Highway 89. We were just, just almost the same location we were earlier. That's the Furlough area that goes down to Remington Road there. And that's crossing 89 area. I think we got a little bit of a new hook, but it doesn't look like the rotation was all that significant in that area at all. It's Barnett Road, Sand Hill Road. There's Oak Grove Road here, uh, and, and it's all south of... Uh, south of uh, Mount Tabor and south of uh, Mount Carmel Road. Here's a new track that Joel's just drawn. Watton Saw around 332 Fairview School. Uh, that's at what time? 330, 329 and then right now it is 325. Watton Saw 332. Woodlawn 332 and over to Bethlehem 335. So Bethlehem over there right along Highway 31. So there's uh, so here's there's Butlerville. It's 31 right down through here. That 236 is on the east-west highway. So there's Watt and Saw, there's Hickory Plains in the, in the northwestern part of, of Prairie County. Crossing 89, crossing 89 right now. Looks like they did take Pulaski out. So they're sticking with this storm. Pulaski County no longer under that tornado warning. Pulaski County has been dropped from the tornado warning. Lone Oak County alone under that one tornado warning. The other one for Northern Prairie, uh, Southeastern White, and Western Woodruff County. But this one here, just is south of Cabot, the Wattensall area, Butlerville area, maybe Woodlawn area as well uh, in the path of that storm. Uh, that's Highway 31 between Lone Oak 
and BB. That's 236, which is the east-west kind of zigzags across there. There's the Wattensaw area uh, there, right there. I think uh, Woodlawn is just toward the south of there. So there's the new track on it. Woodlawn 332, which is six minutes from now. Wattensaw 333, Butlerville 337, Thurman at 339, and Hickory Plains at 343. Uh, rotation still doesn't, does it look, what's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that ahead. Donna's going to report for us. Donna? Uh, we've just been kind of keeping our eye on what's happening. You guys are doing a great job at this, but we just got this information that UAMS is operating at level three right now, mass casualty. So this is what we were hoping we would not hear. We've certainly seen a lot of the damage, um, but obviously there are a lot of people who have been hurt by this storm. The storms have been on the ground here in Arkansas, in the metro area and surrounding areas for how long now, would you say? It's been... Well, it's been about an hour or so since it uh, moved through Little Rock. So. Yeah, so, and, we, and we've seen pictures of the damage, so it's clear that um, a, a lot of homes have been destroyed. I, I, I have had uh, a few people reach out to me. I know the Purple Cow was hit. That's one of the locations, yeah, that we had not reported on and, and some others. But uh, UAMS right now, they're at a level three. As I said before, they, there are injuries and as they put it mass mass casualties is how they're 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 phrasing this i don't want to go any further with that but mass mass casualties as we speak Kevin, first of all i just you guys have been doing a spectacular job of of keeping everyone safe but following off of, of, of donna's statements and everything that you guys have been talking about this kind of really puts it in perspective because i checked the power outages at 2 p.m and at that time there were roughly 2,400 customers without power. Fast forward to 3 p.m. and it jumped to 57,000 customers. Um, and currently we're at 68,000 just 30 minutes later. Obviously the majority of them taking place in Pulaski County and of course right next door in Lono County <coughs> as well as White County. But in situations like this where we know we have so much damage out there, downed power lines, down trees. Just a reminder that this is a dangerous situation if you're out and about and driving or trying to check on loved ones to make sure they're safe. Just be fully aware of the dangers that still are out there. And this is even a problem for those who are currently, you know, in a search and rescue kind of situation in some of the harder hit areas. But obviously, this is a, a, a very sad day uh, in central Arkansas. And uh, it's just kind of hard to wrap your head around all of the destruction and devastation that we that we know about and that we haven't seen just yet. That, that's a, Kevin, that's a very good point to make. I'm, we're going to toss it back to you, but I just wanted to to also make clear that we think many of the schools are out. Not all of the schools were let out early. PCSSD is one of them. Uh, we got word early on that they were keeping the students there, and as the, the most recent tweet that I saw, they were uh, pausing the dismissal, and that was just after 3 o'clock. Okay, I am here. They, they, what does that mean? They are just now starting back. Okay. Okay. So they are just now releasing the students from PCSSD, so just putting that out there. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. And we do have, oh, go ahead, Carl. Yeah, I, I just wanted to highlight here. We still have three active warnings a brand and a brand new one, too. So, if Joel, you can go ahead and query that newest one. It looks like that's over closer to Wattensaw and, again, south of Butlersville. So, we've been seeing these areas of rotation and tornadoes on the ground over similar areas. So uh, this is going to continue to be a problem here, hindering rescue efforts and damage response to these tornadoes. So tornado warning until four o'clock, Lone Oak and Prairie counties. Uh, this does include furlough. A track of this, most of these have been moving east and northeast around 50 to 55 miles per hour. So Oak and now up to 60 miles per hour. So don't like to hear that. That's actually strengthening that storm once we start to see that velocity up. Oakdale School, 3.33 p.m. Childers, we're looking at 3.45. Fort Desarc Elementary School, 
3.51 p.m. I know Donna had just mentioned, of course, schools, uh, so it is 3.30 right now. Uh, if you still have students in schools right now, especially into Lone Oak and Prairie Counties, they're going to need to stay there. They need to be in their safe spot. Uh, you need to be at the lowest level and to protect your head. We've already seen tornadoes. We've already seen damage. That's been the case in Camac Village. That's been the case in Jacksonville. Uh, this has been a very devastating situation here that we're watching, and we will continue to watch it too. So we want everybody to still be weather aware and weather alert. This is a very serious situation. We're focused our eyes right now south of Butlerville. Now we're starting to see a little bit more of that hook 236. This is going to cross over that highway there and head toward Hickory Plains. Edwards, you are not in this polygon, but you are getting slammed and hammered with rain right now. So again, a track of this Haley 346, Childers 349, Jasmine 352. Looks like we do have Zach up here right now. He's driving through Butlerville. Here's Butlerville right now. You can see on radar uh, what he's going to be watching for is probably if there's any sort of rotational development right here. So he is north of this. He's right in the middle of it. You can see the video here is buffering uh, that's having a little bit of a difficulty here. If that gives you any indication, very heavy rainfall coming through as uh, Zach Hall continuing to move there along closer to Butlerville. Again, tracking that tornado warning uh, that I do believe goes until 4 p.m. Uh, with that rotation. If there is going to be a tornado, it's going to be right around right here. Wattensaw right there uh, is where that's going to be. So you can see this when we're starting to see this onto radar, looking at precipitation only, the very heavy rain. Now we're starting to notice where there could be that hook where there could be a little bit more of that rotation. We've seen that with the nature of these storm storms so far. Uh, really since I'd say a little bit after noon, uh, we've really been watching these tornado warnings across the area. So again, another track with that Childers, we're looking at 348, probably closer to 350, Desark 353, Desark High School 353 as well. Again, it is 333, so you have about 20 minutes before uh, really the monster of this storm continues to push over into your area. Now, this looks like the most potent storm, looks like the uh, most hook that we're noticing with this storm right now. Again, we do have that tornado warning until 4 p.m. What you're watching right now is this live stream with our chaser. So if he ends up seeing eyes on a wall cloud, uh, which could produce some of that rotation or a tornado or a funnel uh, itself, then we'll be able to see that. So again, he's right here, our storm chaser. Uh, what we're watching for that area of rotation right here for that tornado warning. So Haley, you still need to be into your safe spot. Desark, you need to be into your safe spot as well. This is going to continue to push farther north and east. Mitchell Road, this includes you. Waterproof Road, Plainview Road, this is going to be heading your way. Waters Lane, again, as these continue to track farther east. Notice that line there, that's crossing, eventually going to cross out of Lone Oak County into Prairie County. So okay. that line there you see where you mentioned Plainview Road, that's in Prairie okay. County. Okay. All right. Yeah, so we are crossing. There you go. There you can see the darker line here indicating the county line with that. So crossing over Butlerville as far as that very heavy rainfall and then continuing to track farther east. Again, the area of rotation is going to be crossing the county line there. And now we're going back onto velocity and there's still certainly some rotation there indicated with that. Uh, this is south of Butlerville. It is south of Hickory Plains and that's going to be continuing to push farther north and east. Now there is a severe thunderstorm warning with this, but the tornado warning is because of that rotation. Wattensaw, uh, you're basically right into the middle of this, but this is going to be pushing a little bit farther east. Furlough, this is now east of you all, uh, so you're not into the danger area of where, of course, that rotation is indicated. So another track of this that Joel has put up, Childers 349, Desark 353, Sand Hill 357, Brassfield 4 p.m. Again, if you are tuning in, it is 335 right now. We've already had uh, tornadoes here in the area that has led to injuries. It has led to damage in Little Rock, in Camac Village, in Jacksonville, and to areas where we have a lot of people. We're talking about Kroger. We're talking about uh, d really uh, locations where we're seeing that. And this is not a good scenario because we now have another tornado warning and this one farther south and west. So we still have an environment here that is very unstable that will produce more severe thunderstorms that could produce more tornadoes. So this is going to continue here and uh, that looks like a nasty storm. That tornado warning until 4.15 p.m. This does include Mineral Springs 
and for Hempstead, Howard, Little River, and Sevier County. So again, this is a little bit farther south and west, uh, but Joel's highlighting this because not only is it a nasty storm, but it's tracking northeast. Yeah, I was going to say it's eventually going to yeah. make it into um, into parts of perhaps southern Pike County yeah. and eventually over into parts of uh, Clark County. And that right. storm, by the way, that's near Murfreesboro, that's in Pike County, just southeast of Murfreesboro, out near the Diamond Mine, uh, right that storm there eventually will push up into Clark County and mm -hmm. it's moving into an environment that could cause it to rotate as well. Right, and that's why we're highlighting that here. When you look at these polygons, right, these are our borders of it, but it also indicates the direction that the storm is going. That northeasterly and easterly direction is very important here because we have storms toward our southwest. What that means is, more storms are coming and those are going to continue to push farther into central Arkansas. Again, the tornado warning that we are highlighting right here, just outside of Wattensaw, just to the south of Butlerville. Again, our chaser uh, down to the south of Butlerville. I do believe we have another chaser. We'll see if we can get his stream eventually as well. Desarc 355. Again, it is 337 currently. Bucks Landing 356. That's going to continue to push that way. Now, Desarc you are technically not under that polygon, but these storms, as we have witnessed so far today, have been nasty. They've been dangerous, and that's going to continue to track farther north and east. So Jasmine 353 Sandhill, I'm wondering if we can go back to velocity just to see if we're noticing any sort of uh, change into that rotation. Yeah, we're still seeing some of that. Again, just to the east of Highway 13. This is east of Little Rock. Uh, but it is continuing to push farther, closer to Childers and Desarc. Again, uh, this is really going to be focused on to central and east Arkansas, these storms over the next couple of hours. It's really probably not going to be until closer to 7, 8 p.m. this evening that a lot of that is going to start to be pushing into far east Arkansas. So what we need to watch very closely is what's going on right now. We've already seen the damage and the injuries from these storms. Here's a look at Zach and Frankie. They're down there uh, over closer to Butlerville, continuing to, I would imagine they're probably on I-40. That's probably going to be the easiest route for them. Okay, yeah, they're going to be driving east toward Desarc. They're following along that storm. We do have a tornado watch. Joel had been highlighting this earlier. A PDS watch, which means particularly dangerous situation. Unfortunately, that has panned out for today. We've already seen the injuries. We already have houses that have been damaged and destroyed. And unfortunately, for those who are trying to clean up that damage or rescue anybody out there, your efforts are going to be a little bit hindered here because we have more severe thunderstorms. Now, Little Rock itself within the metro, we are dealing with some of that moderate to heavy rainfall, uh, some lightning, I'm sure, associated with this. But we're in between a severe thunderstorm warning and we're in between a tornado warning right now. Again, that tornado warning uh, that is going to be heading toward Des Arc and is uh, now south of Cabot. Cabot, we've already been dealing with uh, those thunderstorms as well. So Butlerville, oh, here's along Highway 38. Joel, what were you saying something? That's tightened up a little bit right okay. there along Highway 13 uh, near Waterproof Road. You mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. It's crossed over into Prairie County. Okay. And uh, around West Crossroads Road, North Gray Road, you mm -hmm. see how that circulation there is tightened up just a little bit. I'm going to put a track on that and you can follow that up toward Desarc, just like that. And someone's seeing a walk out here, Desarc, too. Okay. Okay, all right. So we're still watching this velocity. We want to focus very closely on what's going on in Hickory Plains. What you're seeing right now in this box, these are injuries at the Kroger from the storm earlier. Uh, from that tornado. So you can see the ambulance. Uh, again, this is a very serious situation uh, with what we're watching closely here. Pat. Carmen, in, in a spotter in Desert can see a wall cloud with that storm. Okay. They're in Desert, so it's coming at them so they can see a wall cloud. Okay, okay. So what we're watching again, Kroger over here, these are the injuries. You can see that damage. We want to avoid any more j injuries and damage. So I want you to take this very seriously. Now we are seeing a wall cloud from those spotters. That's what Pat has just relayed. South of Hickory Plains. Again, this is heading into Prairie County. This is east of Little Rock, but it's going to be east heading toward Desert. What a wall cloud means is we could see, we are seeing rotation with that. 
that is where we could see a funnel or a tornado. So everybody needs to be in their safe spot if you are into Haley. Again, Desarc, 3.51 p.m. This storm is heading your way. I still want you to be in your safe spot as well. Sand Hill, 3.55. Little Dixie, 3.59. So we are watching that very closely. Let's go ahead and let me zoom in. Let's get some street names if we can. Again, I know this is a bit farther east of Little Rock. In fact, this is now east of Cabot. Ray Road, Ferguson Road, West Crossroads Road, right on top of you. There's that hook. Literally looks like a fishing hook. That's what we're talking about. If there is that tornado where that wall cloud is, where that rotation is, it is right here. Highway 13, West Crossroads Road, heading toward North Gray Road, as well as 86. You need to go ahead and get in your safe space spot. If you are driving right now, do not go under an overpass. Not only could that actually end up as a wind tunnel, but if there's debris, you're in a dangerous situation. If you know somebody who is driving right now on the roadway, the best thing is to avoid drive 90 degrees away from this storm if you can and get out and get in a ditch. Protect your head. Hopefully nobody is out on those roadways right now, but if you are listening, if you hear this, Make sure you do that. If you are at home and you can go to your safe place, you need to already be there. As far as the track with this, again, Sand Hill 355 for Little Dix Dixie 359. Cotton Plant Elementary School 405. Again, this is going to be heading farther east this direction here. Can we zoom out just a little bit? I want to see where I-40 is in relation to where... Uh, we are looking again. We have a live feed right now with our storm chaser, Zach Hall and Frankie. Uh, they're going to be heading toward Desarc. They're going to be following this. I would imagine if they're seeing that wall cloud, that's what they're looking and pointing their cameras at currently. Right here, that's Interstate 40. So the polygon okay, just rubs you. right against I 40 right there between okay. Carlisle and Bisco. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that gives me polygon. a little bit orientation right here. Okay, yeah, so I 40 right there, you can see Hazen. Again, this is north of the interstate over close to Hickory Plains. Haley, again, the area of rotation, if we're seeing it, is going to be right here just toward the north of Haley. And you can see in our double box right now uh, where our chasers are following that storm. So these storms are serious. We've seen the injuries. We've seen the damage so far. It's, it's going to be a long afternoon and evening here. We have several more hours of this that we are going to watch this and that we have this potential severe weather. And it is severe weather. It's not even potential at this point because we still have multiple tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings in effect right now. Let's go ahead and query this tornado warning one more time again. Uh, on the eastern side of this, Cabot, you're not getting those severe thunderstorm warnings. You're not in uh, the polygon or in the warning. But again, you are hearing those sirens, hopefully, over Wattensaw. But now you're on the eastern side of this. It's going to be the areas a little bit farther, I should say, western. It's going to be the areas a little bit farther eastern uh, that we need to give a heads up. So, Haley, you still need to be in your safe spot. Childers, you need to be in your safe spot. This is north of Carlisle, north of Hazen, again, east of us into Little Rock. This tornado warning, we still have another 20 minutes on it. I do not think that is going to get expired or canceled because we have that wall cloud and that indication of rotation. What that means is a tornado uh, could be very imminent here uh, and come out of that storm that, of course, our chasers are down there chasing as well. So Childers, heads up for you all. Desarc, uh, you need to still be ready for this too. Joel? Yeah, I was just at, uh, the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for areas generally right along Highway 38, and that's because even north of where that rotation is right here, this part of the storm that you see r that's running right along 38, there's Hickory Plains, Haley, and Desarc is right over here. That area is getting a lot of hail. There's half dollar size hail that's being reported with that uh, right now or is warned for. And so just wanted to make that side note that while yes, there is that tornado risk, the hail is going to be pretty big as well. And that could continue to uh, be the case more so this afternoon. Great point. Yeah, hail also not something that we want to do. These are severe thunderstorms. These are supercells. Oh, only about 10% of our thunderstorms are supercells. So this is a, a rare situation that we're dealing with. Unfortunately, all the ingredients are here, and unfortunately, we're dealing with those tornadoes. Now, Joel read my mind. He's already going back to where we are into Little Rock. Again, things at least lightening up right now temporarily for Little Rock, but we still have warnings 
farther west and southwest of us into Little Rock. So what that means is more storms that will continue to move into portions of Pulaski County here over the next couple of hours. So a severe thunderstorm warning right now that does include North Point. This is a north and west and, and closer to Hot Springs and west of us into Little Rock. Joel is going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go farther south and west. I do want to just highlight these storms very yeah, quickly too. So we've been talking about mm -hmm. uh, Prairie County a lot, and I do want to point out that down here in the southwest Arkansas, these other storms are starting to make their yep. way into the area right now. That one tornado yep. warning in uh, just north of Pope, excuse me, Hope. That is in uh, Hempstead County. Mm -hmm. That's going to eventually cross over into northern Nevada County, nearer mm -hmm. north of Prescott. But that same storm, and uh, we're going to look at, it's tough to get really velocity mm -hmm. data sure. out of that because it's halfway between Shreveport and Little Rock. But yep. that's eventually going to take it toward Gurdon. So while mm -hmm. right now, Gurdon, you're not under a tornado warning, that could change here soon. Absolutely. I want to go ahead and let's keep it on reflectivity. Let's go only s keep in that preset mode. Uh, notice we're starting to get maybe more of that kidney meeting or that hook str structure with that. Let's zoom out. Uh, I want to zoom out. Do you want me out. to get a track on that or do you want to? Let's go. Uh, I, I want to zoom out real quickly and then I want to actually go back to that storm that's closer to Desert. But I want to zoom out just so I can point out Little How Rock. Far out? That's perfect. Okay. Little Rock, again, we're between these two warnings, but this is essentially a pathway right now. All these polygons, severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings that are tracking farther north and east. Uh, so I'd say we have another maybe hour, hour or two before things start to ramp up again as far as that is concerned. Uh, looks like Zach and Frankie have a great shot of that. Joel, were you saying something? I think that strengthened us, tightened up a good bit. Desark, you need yep. to be in your safe place right now. Exactly, yeah. Thank you for going back to the storm because, again, this is the one that looks like to be the most imminent right here uh, that is in our vicinity. Again, this is east of Little Rock. Uh, this is north of Hazen, and this is tracking farther north and east. They had a great image of that. This still indicating that rotation or that circulation that could produce that tornado. So that tornado warning is still in effect. Desark, please be in your safe spot if you have family members, if you have friends, if you can text them, uh, please make sure to do that as that's going to continue to track that way. Again, here's the end of that polygon, but uh, this is still a dangerous situation indicating that rotation with that Childers. You're in the pathway of this or at least very close to it as these continue to push farther east and northeast. So Desark, uh, this is going to be moving through again. 348 is the current time. We're looking at probably closer to 356 for you all, again, the tornado warning until 4 p.m. Lone Oak and Prairie County, this is for you all. We really want to focus in on what's going on in Prairie County, obviously, as that continues to push farther eastward. Now, has this strengthened as far as the speed? Yeah. Oh. Got to stress, you know, right now, Desarc, technically, you're not in that tornado warning. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. Is the way it's looking right now, they're going to issue a new one. Uh, yes, I mean, absolutely. I haven't seen them say that, but I would imagine. I would are. imagine, too. I mean, when you look at this, I mean, we have all meteorologists here on the Arkansas Storm Team. Uh, this is textbook hook. Uh, so what that means is if there's going to be a tornado that is imminent with this. So uh, uh, that reflectivity with our precip on radar really indicating that. And we're still seeing that rotation on our velocity as well. So Desarc, we're looking at 355. Uh, that's going to be heading toward you all. Looks like we have County Road uh, 719 right here. That's going to be moving over in the next couple of minutes. Sand Hill 359. So again, we still don't have confirmation that there's a tornado on the ground with this, but uh, we fortunately have our chasers right here that are following that right now, and there's obviously rotation in that storm. So we will be able to see that through their live stream, and we're also seeing that indication, of course, on radar right now as well. Here's that hook. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, right on time. I shouldn't say perfect. It's obviously not ideal. We don't like this, but um, as we anticipated is the better wording here. Tornado warning until 4.30. Now that includes Desarc because you can see that structure on radar. This is what meteorologists look for here for that. As the cities that this includes, Cotton Plant, Desarc, Monroe, Prairie, White, and Woodruff counties, this is you. You need to be into your tornado safe place. Little Dixie, Cotton Plant, heading your way. Looks like for Little Dixie, 405 is going to be the time there for you all. For Cotton Plant, 411. For Salisbury, we're looking at 413. Brinkley, 
4.15 p.m. So again, I know we're in Arkansas. We have a lot of duck hunters. Uh, you're familiar with, with Brinkley then, of course. And, and this is, again, east of us into Little Rock. But if you ever make uh, the trek from uh, Little Rock to West Memphis, uh, this is going to be on that pathway. So again, these are probably going to be cities and everything that you're familiar with too, if you do any or all of that. Desark, again, uh, that rotation, if it's there, uh, that rotation is there, but if there's going to be a tornado, it is just on the heels of you all. That's going to be heading towards Sand Hill and then toward the cotton plant eventually. And again, north of 40. So there's 40 right here. Here's Bisco. Uh, this is uh, let's see, could we get how many miles that is uh, to the north of I-40? North of I-40 compared to where... Um, sure, we can have, so we have a measuring I-40 tool. So here's I-40 right now. That yeah. is directly yeah, north of Hazen, the Hazen, Hazen exit, about 10 miles north of the Hazen exit. But that's heading okay. toward Desarc, and it's going to yeah. stay north of I-40, at least this one. Yes, yeah, and it does look like this pathway is more of a due east. Again, you can see with the polygon, of course, the direction with that doing that. Obviously, tornadoes are going to do what they want, uh, but this is based off of what we're seeing currently. That looks like to be a pretty accurate path for it. Tornado warning until 4.30 p.m. This does include Cotton Plant. It does include Desarc. This is north of Bisco. Uh, it is, I should say, north of Brinkley. And it is also north of Hazen, north of I-40. You can see Brassfield right here. Buck's Landing right here. Little Dixie, you are under this warning. What we're looking at right now, that debris indicator or that correlation coefficient to see if we're noticing it. Had a touchdown one at one point briefly just southwest of Haley. Okay, you're uh, talking about right here, right there north of where the Lone Oak and Prairie County line does this. If you look close, mm -hmm. it's going to be right there south of Hickory Plains. That it may see. have briefly touched down. It became okay, occluded, right and uh, looks like now it's tightening up yep. as it approaches Desarc. Desarc, mm -hmm. you need to be in your safe place right now. Oh, okay, so what, what Pat's talking about here, this uh, bounded weak echo region, mm -hmm. for lack of better words, donut uh, hole in, in a sense, it's where the rain gets yeah. wrapped around the tornado. Mm -hmm. and you can see that right there. I'll zoom in a little closer, get you some street names okay. heading into Desert. Yes, Art. yeah. So right Boyce so, Minton Road. Yeah, we've got Beach Camp, North Beach Camp Road. We have North Whitley Road. Uh, we have, let's see, let's push me a little bit farther east. Lover's Lane, Dryer Road, Harvey's Road. Uh, this is heading your way. West Bell Road, just toward the south there of you all. This is going to be heading along that path east, uh, probably along Highway 11 smack dab toward Des Arc. Uh, so we've been watching this. This has been showing no signs of weakening. And in fact, it looks like it may have uh, indicated more of the potential for that. Uh, looks like, okay. Okay, and so, and so what you're going to see right here are going to be uh, what we call bumps or shots of damage. Um, and this is going to this is going to be showing, this is what you see currently into Little Rock, uh, but that will change here just to show you how strong these storms are. So we do have uh, that damage there. Again, you can see quite possibly where maybe a, a tornado moved over. That looks like 67, but again, we're going to continue to show those shots. So that's what you will see in the bottom hand of the screen. What you're seeing right now, what we're tracking is the radar because this is still a very dangerous and imminent, imminent situation with this tornado warning. So now getting closer and closer to Desarc, Sand Hill, you're also in the path of that, and Cotton Plant. So let's go ahead and get another track on that. We're still seeing that hook structure of that, and, and what we saw onto our uh, debris indicator was possibly some of the debris associated with this. So this is still a very serious situation. Desarc, I know we've been mentioning you. It is 354. It, it's essentially on top of you right now. If this is in a tornado on the ground, it's on top of you either way. This potent storm that could produce a tornado moving over you currently. That's going to then track its way into Sand Hill. Again, still noticing some of that. The correlation coefficient, are you noticing anything more with that? Three at the moment. Yeah. I believe what happened, and if you look here, just over the last little while, uh, as this approached, you see how we had that pronounced hook, and then it right. kind of closed off. Do you see how it became occluded? So right. I think you had a tornado touchdown. I think it probably got choked off mm -hmm. by its inflow, and then you're getting it probably going to recycle as it gets over at Desarc or past it. So sure. Desarc, it... You're close. Carl, we need to be in your safe place. Carl, we have an update from uh, Donna. Some information. Okay. Okay, Donna. Yeah, I, I just wanted to 
to um, I, I just wanted to circle back to what I was talking about earlier with the mass casualties. We were at UAMS. UA. All right. Um, can you hear me? Okay. I just wanted to circle back what we were talking about with all this damage that has happened in Little Rock and the mass casualty alert at UAMS. They were at a level three. They are now at a level one. Basically, what that means is 10 or less injured will be coming in. This is information that they get so their nurses and doctors can prepare. As we know, UAMS is one of our trauma centers in Arkansas. Uh, a level three is 25 or more. So they've downgraded. So apparently, it appears based on that they're getting fewer people coming in with injuries. And when we say mass casualties, we're not necessarily talking about deaths. We're definitely talking about people who are injured. Um, and just to kind of update a little bit, we've seen pictures of, of, of the damage. Rock City running in Little Rock on Rodney Parham was damaged. Petite and Keat has some damage. And Rock City Dance School also damaged. Those three locations are in Little Rock. Uh, and by the way, we uh, just, uh, and I'm going to send this over to Carmen here in a second at the wall, but we have a new tornado warning that's been issued now for Clark County. This storm is coming up out of Wallaceburg, which is in northern Hempstead County. That's one we mentioned a little while ago. It's going to be passing north of Prescott and eventually over into Clark County. So right now we're juggling two. We're going to talk about this. We want to put a track on this because Arkadelphia, uh, Arkadelphia just outside of this warning. But Carmen, I'm going to put a track on this for you here. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, so we can include everybody who's in this. And can I also get perfect, the query? This tornado warning until 4.30 p.m. This it is, is moving at 50. 50 miles per hour. That's tracking farther north and east. Again, Joel had mentioned this, Arkadelphia, you're not in that polygon, but it is heading your way, almost uh, directly heading your way if that ends up on the same track. So Clark and Pike County, you are under a tornado warning now. This is until 4.30 p.m. Some of these cities and the times of arrival for them. Dunlap, we're looking at 4 o'clock. Uh, 4 Bowden, 4.30. Burtzel, 4.14. Gurdon, 4.21. Red Springs, 4.26. DeGray, 4.28. Arkadelphia, again, if that holds up its strength, and that has seemed to be the pattern here, 4.31. And then for Cato, we're looking at 4.32 p.m. for you all. So we're watching that very closely. Again, just looking at radar alone as far as precipitation is concerned that still looks like a very nasty and potent storm again uh, south of murfreesboro south of where you're going to be digging for diamonds if you're familiar with that over portions of southwest arkansas uh, that's going to be heading toward arkadelphia we've been pointing out this line we have multiple warnings now still extending farther south and east or uh, south and west i should say past texarkana coming out of texas so we still have multiple hours of this uh, severe weather scenario here and what we're dealing with and that's going to continue to push into portions of central Arkansas. So Little Rock, we're getting a lull in that activity right now, but we have a lot more of that severe weather heading our way. I, I was going to say, can they switch actually from max two? I believe we're going to switch over to max one. We're having some troubles. I'm going to restart that computer. If we can switch over, Pat's going to drive over on max one on that radar. There we go. Perfect. Okay, yeah, and we, we've zoomed in back in. Of course, we're still focusing on what's going on toward our southwest. We will juggle between that, but we what we are going to do is focus on uh, where the most potent storms are uh, first and then move on to those other warnings, and, and this is what we're watching. The most imminent threat currently over Wallaceburg uh, with this warning. Again, that's going to be tracking farther north and east. Delight halfway, Okalona, Curtis. Uh, this is southwest, again, closer to Arkadelphia. Uh, this storm still looking potent. Can we go, uh, and I'm wondering too, Pat, if we can go back uh, to the Desarc storm. I want to do do that really quickly here since we did just highlight, of course, what's been going on in, in Southwest too. Uh, so he's going to go back to what we were seeing here uh, with that rotation. Still a little bit of a hook here uh, with that storm, of course. This one until four o'clock, Little Dixie Cotton Plant. This does include you all uh, and Sand Hill. Can we switch on back to our, uh, our rotation to see if that's changed at all as well? So mm, still looking like it's there. I've not seen a, a significant difference with that. Pat, are you seeing the same thing? It probably was a little bit better when it was right around Desert. Mm -hmm. Now over to Sand Hill, it just doesn't look, doesn't look as, as pronounced. Okay, and, and so this new warning, this one is until, if we can get a query on that, 
uh, the original one until 4 o'clock, and now that that has been extended farther eastward until 4.30 p.m. So Sand Hill, Desark, you still are under this warning until 4.30, but Desark, you're going to be the first ones out of it as that continues to push farther north and east. Still that hook that we're watching again right over top the city of Desark right now with that warning. Uh, Pat is zooming in so we can see some of these street names. Dryer looks like West Erin Street, Street rather. This is right over top of you all. That's going to be heading along 38. Um, heading toward Radar Lane, Sand Hill. Again, uh, this is going to include that community. Uh, looks like we have North Jane Stewart Road. Again, this is farther east of us into Little Rock. It is north of Brinkley, north of I-40. Looks like it's going to stay north of I-40, but we still want to watch that because this is right over top. Here's the city uh, downtown here of Desark right now. Uh, that's going to be continuing to push that way. Let's go ahead and switch back to our rotation or velocity rather to indicate that rotation it is a little bit more pronounced looks like they've issued a severe thunderstorm warning uh, that's going to continue upstream of that a little bit farther northward but yeah the rotation still there again this is until 4 30 p.m. Desark and Georgetown this includes you Prairie White and Woodruff counties uh, you are under that let's go ahead and zoom out really quickly just so I can give everybody orientation of what's going on I know we still have a ton of damage uh, and injuries. I know we have those, of course, into central Arkansas and across Pulaski County. Here's Little Rock. Here's that tornado warning. So Desark, that's who that includes. Hazen, it's not raining, even raining for you all. It's not even raining over in Lone Oak. It's not even raining anymore into Little Rock. So at least uh, we won't have efforts hampered as of right now for rescue and cleanup. Uh, but that's not going to last. Let's go ahead and travel farther south and west, closer to that storm uh, outside of Arkadelphia. We still have more severe weather headed our way, tracking northeast, essentially tracking right toward us into Little Rock. So we have have another hour or two uh, that that's going to be moving in. Arkadelphia, again, this outside of you all, but still noticing that storm, this right over top of Wallaceburg. A track on this, if it maintains its strength, we're looking at Gurdon 424 for Curtis 428. Uh, for De Gray, 433 for Arkadelphia, 436 Brown Springs, 445. So we're watching that very closely. Are, are Joel and Pat, I know you're both watching things here. Are you getting any sort of reports or noticing anything that's notable worth strengthening? Because I know we have multiple warnings here that we should really hone in on. <coughs> now we're not really getting much more as far as like any kind of new uh, damage reports. Uh, but they are continuing to look at the one down here in southwest Arkansas, just southwest Arkadelphia. There is the present rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, let's, while we're here, let me just look see if any... You know, yeah. any signs of uh, and uh, debris indication. Yeah, and it looks like uh, we're getting a little bit of a bad reading there too. Down and there, just and north of Arcadia. see the radar beam, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't really think we're just seeing some rotation within that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so so this one, let's go ahead and query this one again, just one more time here. Uh, Okalona, Dobieville, Burtzel, this includes you. Um, Arcadia, this is until 4.30, it is 4.04. A lot of this really starting to ramp up a little bit after noon, and we've since seen those tornadoes and gotten that damage, and of course, unfortunately, the injuries associated with it. I want to point out, of course, our stream here with Zach and Frankie now. Uh, it looks like they're going toward Little Dixie. So that's that storm that's, what, closer to Desark. Let's go ahead and move our radar back to that because our chasers are right over here and they're watching that storm. We still have that that's still warned, this storm currently. Now east of Desark. So Desark, this is east of you. I still want you to be in your safe spot until that warning has expired. Uh, but we're still watching this area that's now uh, farther north and east of Desark. Uh, Georgetown, this is now east of you all. Cotton Plan and Desert, you are included under this warning until 4.30. Monroe, Prairie, and Woodruff Counties. Again, just to give you some orientation for where this is. Here's Hazen. Here's I-40. Here's Brinkley. So this is north, almost north, I should say, of Brinkley. These storms have been traveling very quickly here, anywhere from 50 to 60 miles per hour. Yeah, so still tracking at 60 miles per hour. So that's a, a very strong storm. You can see the chasers uh, following for that. Uh, they're over in Little Dixie, which does include uh, the area of concern that we are watching right here. 
So still an updated track on this cotton plant. We're looking at 414 for Casey, 417. And then also for Zent, it looks like 419 as well. I'm wondering, can we zoom in? I want to get another check. Again, this is south of Georgetown of rotation as far as what we're seeing onto radar. And that looks like it has broadened a little bit. Would you say, Pat? Yeah. Right there at the uh, Woodruff and Prairie County line, mm -hmm. uh, along uh, between uh, little, around Mid Little yeah, Dixie to Mayberry and uh, Daggett area, yeah. Okay, and, and so just for reference, you know, we've zoomed in far enough. You can see our chasers, Zach and Frankie, they are right here. Here's a little Dick Dixie right here. So uh, they're continuing to follow that. They may be uh, traveling along 33 currently. Okay, so they're traveling east, heading toward Cotton Plant, and they're going to be watching that. And here's the storm you can see onto uh, our rotation based off of velocity. Here it is in real life, you can see with our chasers. So that is what we're watching for this area of concern uh, as we continue to track that. This is moving east at 60 miles per hour, and that is going to push in closer to Beckton, maybe eventually Casey. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. I want to switch back to just reflectivity just to show our rain as well. Uh, I, we're not getting any sort of hail reports with this. I know we were watching that earlier. Okay, so not getting any sort of re hail reports with this. Again, that's not looking as well structured that hook and it looks like they have issued a downstream severe thunderstorm warning so still some severe weather with this uh, but that usually indicates that they're not going to issue a tornado warning now that's not official but usually that is a better sign here as we are watching that so Desarc, I still want you in your safe spot until this warning is expired it is 402 or 407 rather and this will expire at 430 or is set to expire at 430. You can see uh, as far as our stream is with our chasers, that's not looking as ominous as what it was, but there's still rotation indicated with that. So they're going to continue to be on that storm. And then obviously if something pops up, we're of course going to point that out. Let's go ahead and go back to our storms farther south and west. Now that this is not looking as impressive. And of course, Morning goes. It's just for the the minimal 60 mile per hour and quarter size hail. So okay. As you mentioned, the hail is probably not the largest concern. Okay. Hail. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, that storm coming up in the hot Ooh, spring county yeah. looks. Uh -uh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We you, we've been using the term kidney bean throughout the afternoon, and of course that looks like the kidney beans you put in your chili. We don't like to see that, of course, and on radar. And once we're starting to see that hook, that's that supercell structure. What that means is we could see a tornado out of this and it looks like maybe that would be closer to DeGray and then headed farther north and east. That's going to be heading up toward I-30 here and then making its way past Arkadelphia. This is north of Arkadelphia right now. Again, uh, the worst area of rotation is going to be right here, uh, right over Caddo Valley, right? So that's not looking great here. If we can go ahead and switch over to our velocity see if we're noticing anything is this the Shreveport radar no it's uh, LZK Little okay Rock. okay all right so DeGray this is right over here just north of Arkadelphia here's I-30 and that's going to be if you're going to be heading up uh, along 30 basically past Arkadelphia or to Arkadelphia depending on where you're going and uh, that's what we're watching the stream that you see right here is our chasers with that other tornado warning they're over uh, closer to Desarc now east of Desarc heading toward Cotton Plant and uh, that is over east of us into Little Rock but we still need to really watch what's going on here because this could end up uh, producing some severe weather either way. There's a severe thunderstorm warning on it. Again, between Arkadelphia and Bismarck toward our southwest. And it does. Okay, Shreveport right, right, uh, right here indicating maybe a little bit of rotation here. Uh, oh, excuse me. No, that's Fort Smith. Sorry. That's Fort, Fort Smith, Smith radar. Okay, either way, we're, it's still indicating a There's little a bit of it. Yeah, Shreveport's a little bit messy. Again, uh, we're kind of in a spot that we're a little bit far away from multiple radar sites here. Either way, we still want you all to take this very seriously. It looks like a tornado warning is on it. So let's... Let's go ahead and query that so we can let everybody know. Again, that's because of, of that what looks like a supercell here. 4.45 p.m., that is that tornado warning. This does include Butterfield, Gifford, 
Malvern, you are under this new tornado warning, as well as Rockport, Clark, Grant, and Hot Spring counties. You are under this, so go ahead and get into your safe spot. Again, if you or any of your family members live between Arkadelphia, and Malvern, I want you in your safe spot. Malvern, you're physically under that polygon or that tornado warning here. Uh, you want to avoid being in the car if you are on the road, if you are on I-30, if you have a friend, a family member that's traveling along I-30, heading toward Arkadelphia from Malvern, they're going to be going smack dab into that supercell. If you are on the road right now, do not go under an overpass. That is not a safe spot. If you are at home, go to that lowest level. Get away from windows. The biggest key here is to put as much between you and the outside because that debris, that's what leads to more deaths associated with tornadoes and injuries. We're looking at Caddo Valley right now. Uh, that is the RDOT cam. I'm glad it's still intact here and we're still getting that feed. This is a live look over in Caddo Valley. Caddo Valley, uh, you are going to be in the path of this storm that is tornado warned. It is uh, a tornado warning here until 4.45 p.m. This is going to eventually be making its way up onto Malvern. Now we have multiple RDOT cams along I-30. So we'll probably be able to see uh, multiple of these as long as those are still intact. So you can see torrential rain coming down right now. It's going to be a little bit hard to see a tornado if there is one, but if there is a tornado, it's going to be just uh, toward the north here of 30. Here's Frost Road. There's Caddo Valley. Hazards on the semis, you can see. Uh, so that is coming down. We have a tornado warning there. Joel? A new tornado warning now for Woodruff County. I okay. believe we, uh, that is uh, right now uh, with the storm that just came out of Prairie, Ca uh, Prairie County. And that's not to take away from what's happening down into Hot Spring County. Uh, that's just a new warning here uh, just to look really quickly at velocity. And I can, uh, if you'd like, I can step up there. Carmen, if you need a break. Uh, okay, so uh, we've got uh, that storm there south and west of Bulltown, uh, uh, Beckton, uh, in Woodruff County. That rotation is there and is tracking up toward the east, northeast, toward Hilleman, and eventually will cross over Highway 49 eventually uh, over into uh, Woodruff County. Now, this is fairly broad rotation, but they have added that new warning. So uh, that warning for Woodruff County, it goes until 445 and includes the city of Hunter, and it looks like it's moving to the east at 50. So I'll get a quick track on that, and then we'll, that one, of course, not quite as strong as the one down uh, to the south and west, but we're going to put that on the track there so you have a list of towns there. Sure, absolutely. And this is, this is where our chasers are over into cotton plants. So this war new warning includes uh, that area. So just a quick track with this broad rotation. We're looking at 420 for Casey, for Hunter, 424 for Barson, 430. And for Penrose, 433. So now these are these storms tracking farther east. Let's go ahead and revisit that storm down in Caddo Valley. Because again, that looks like we're still seeing a supercell associated with that, at least the structure indicating it. So Arkadelphia, this is between Arkadelphia and Malvern. Now it's getting closer to Malvern and not seeing as strong of, of that hook again, but still something to take seriously. This is right along I-30. So here's Caddo Valley. Arkadelphia is a little bit farther south. This is going to be heading farther north and east towards Social Hill and Saginaw. We have this tornado warning, if we can go ahead and query that, just so we've had a lot of tornado warnings over the past couple of hours here because of these severe thunderstorms, and they've produced tornadoes, as we've seen. 4.45 p.m., that is until, that is how long this warning is in effect. It is 4.14 right now. Butterfield, Gifford, Malvern, Rockport, you are all under this warning. Clark, Grant, and Hot Spring County. So here's Caddo Valley, here's I-30, here's Arkadelphia. Now Arkadelphia, we have a tornado warning a little bit farther south and west of you all. So you're right in between two tornado warnings right now. Uh, so just want to give you a heads up, whether we see a tornado out of this or not, you have uh, some pretty nasty weather that's going to continue to move your way. So uh, track on what we're watching a little bit farther south and west, heading toward Arkadelphia. Here you are in our list, 4.34 p.m. That's going to be your time. It looks like we still have that RDOT cam over into in Friendship now. Uh, so we're watching Friendship, we're watching Caddo Valley. Let's go ahead and zoom into that storm uh, that should be now probably a little bit farther north and east of Caddo. Yeah, you can see that along I-30. Let's go ahead and switch over to our rotation real quick, if we can, okay. 
not seeing a whole lot there, and that's going to continue to push farther north and east. Okay, yeah. All right, so while Harmon swaps out Mike batteries, <coughs> I'm going to just jump in here really quickly. Uh, again, right now we're tracking a storm uh, that's moving out of Clark County, now in Hot Spring County. You can see that rotation uh, is right there uh, just to the north and east of the Hot Spring Clark County line. So near Donaldson, uh, that storm is moving toward the east and northeast, so kind of following up Highway 67 in a sense. Saginaw, Dawson, uh, Donaldson rather, and uh, Central as well. Let's get velocity up really quickly and uh, let's see how that's shaping up there. You can see uh, it's weak at the moment, at least in terms of rotation. What we're looking at right now uh, could kind of re-strengthen a little bit as it goes forward. Uh, we're also tracking another storm down here coming into Clark County from the south and west coming out of Nevada County, so we need to keep a close eye on both of these. Uh, let's look here at debris mode just to check and see how things are looking. It's really messy. I don't believe that's actually a tornado on the ground right now, but let's go back to radar once again. That is where that rotation would be right there near Strother Road, uh, just to the northeast of Countess Road and a, a Countess, and uh, that's going to keep tracking toward the east and northeast. You're getting a live look here, by the way, on the bottom right. That is Interstate 30 right now near Caddo Valley. And uh, again, we're going to keep tracking that toward the north and east. In relation to Malvern, let's get a track on that, Pat, so we can get an eye and try to get Malvern or areas just southeast of Malvern in that track, uh, that rotation tracking toward the east, uh, toward the north and east right now with this severe uh, with this tornado warning that's in Hot Spring County. So we're going to get Malvern in that track. So uh, places like Washita High School, Washita Elementary, those are in line of the storm. Uh, Donaldson at 421. So in the next little bit, Saginaw, Central, Abco, and then Hot Spring County Medical Center, those areas, Malvern at about 433. And then continuing to work its way east and northeast. And by the way, these storms still have a long way to go before they get to the other side of the state. So these uh, tornado warnings, we're likely going to be dealing with these for probably the next few hours. Uh, keeping a close eye on that, I do want to take us a little farther south and get another look at this storm coming up into Clark County. So there's Oklahoma right there. You've got that rotation that's kind of just to the south and east of Oklahoma. And the position of this, it's between Little Rock, it's between Shreveport. The way we look at this radar data is we have radar sites in Little Rock and Shreveport. And when you're halfway in between, sometimes you just don't get the best data. So we're looking at that right there near I-30. It's again, we're kind of back and forth between Shreveport and Little Rock radar site, so it's hard to really tell. But we can tell that there is rotation there that's capable of producing a tornado, and it's going to be tracking toward the north and east, kind of toward Curtis. It may stay north of Gurdon, but Gurdon, you're not technically included in that warning. Uh, but again, that's tracking toward the north and east. Pat, can we get a track on that really quick? Northeast at 50 miles per hour. All right, so northeast at 50. That would put it near Burtzel at about 419. Dobieville at about 425. Smithton at 430. And uh, Curtis around 432. And then eventually, we'll be moving into the Arkadelphia area. So Arkadelphia High School, that general area at about 438. Of course, that's in Arkadelphia. So about 438 to about 4 about 440 something right in there. That's when we expect this one to move into the Arkadelphia area. And again, as these storms move east, they're moving into an environment more conducive for these to strengthen. And we've seen that with the storm that moved through Little Rock earlier. And uh, we're seeing it with the storm that's also up here into Woodruff County. I want to make sure we're touching in on that storm. Uh, by the way, still a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Pulaski County with some storms that are back over around Lake Maumel. But this one here, here's Woodruff County. There's Bulltown that's tracking toward the east and northeast. That'll eventually take it outside of the KRK and Fox 16 coverage area over into Cross and St. Francis County. But right now, Bulltown, you need to be in your safe place. That's a tornado warning that goes until 445 for Woodruff County, and that'll keep moving east. So if we zoom in a little close, let's get let's get velocity up here, get an idea of how that rotation is t uh, shaping up. You can see it's still kind of broad, but that circulation would be near Bulltown, north of Casey. And uh, looks like if there's a tornado, it would crawl if there's a tornado that would be crossing over near Hillman along Highway 49 or Hilliman. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that, but either way, uh, if you live there, you probably know how to pronounce it. And of course, uh, you want to be in your safe place. Again, that safe place being the lowest floor of a site built home. You don't want to be in a mobile home in this. 
You want to avoid a mobile home. You want to avoid cars and trucks. Those are all mobile. Those can be moved. Those can easily be thrown if there's a tornado. This is moving east and uh, we'll be moving through Hillman, uh, Barson, Bemis, Penrose, Pine Tree, Ellis Chapel, and never been able to say this one right, Leangi. I'm not exactly sure, but either way, uh, how do you say that? Lil and Gwil. Lil and Gwil. I will not for I will not remember that the next time. But hey, say on me. I'll do the best I can. But seriously, uh, right here with this storm here that's moving through Woodruff County. Let's look at velocity again. There's still some strong wind with it. Likely some large hail. Uh, that rotation near Bulltown is going to keep it moving toward the east, toward Highway 49. Now let's uh, and it looks like they've issued a new tornado warning. If you have family, friends, interests over into northern St. Francis County, southern Cross County, the National Weather Service in Memphis has decided to continue that warning back toward the east of Highway 49. So that's a new tornado warning now for Cross and St. Francis County until 445. Taking you a little bit farther toward the west, I do want to point out these storms here that are out around uh, Maumel. <clears throat> there is likely some hail, maybe some damaging wind. This is north of where the tornado tracked through Little Rock earlier today. So we're going to be watching that and any storms that could hamper any of the recovery efforts that are taking place in the Little Rock Metro. Right now, this severe thunderstorm warning does not include Little Rock proper. It does include Maumel. It does include Cato, Mayflower and areas just to the west of the North uh, the Little Rock Air Force Base. All right, let's take you a little farther south. We want to revisit that storm down here into Hot Spring County. Let's see how that has evolved uh, down here toward Donaldson. Let's get a look at velocity on that. Earlier it was fairly, uh, I don't want to call it weak, but broad rotation earlier right in there. Still not seeing a ton of sign of real strengthening, but we've got to keep an eye on it. Obviously, we've seen these storms strengthen in a hurry. This is looking from, okay, that's looking from the Fort Smith radar. Again, these are looking from, we're looking from different radar sites just to try to get better data on this. And it's just hard to get that. So right here, if there's rotation, if there's a tornado, it would be near Donaldson moving toward the east and northeast. It'll probably stay to the south of Malvern there. It looks like it's taking more of an easterly component than a northerly component. So this is a tornado warning, still includes the city of Malvern. You want to be in your safe place. Pat, if we can get some of those safe places listed, Again, that's at the lowest floor of your home, a, a site built home. You want to find the lowest floor, find the middle room, a room that is surrounded by other rooms, a room that has no windows. You want to wrap up in blankets, pillows, and uh, maybe perhaps put on a helmet to protect yourself from flying debris if there is a tornado with this system. And right now it's kind of tough to get the data from this because it's kind of halfway in between kind of between the Little Rock uh, radar site and the Shreveport radar site. Uh, so trying to keep an eye on that one to make sure that we are all covered there. You do want to avoid being in a car or truck driving through this area along Highway 67 from Donaldson to Malvern. I would stay off of it. Interstate 30, I think this is now going to stay east of you uh, and back over toward. You're still under a tornado warning in Saginaw, but <clears throat> this will eventually take it over. And by the way, uh, that is a tornado warning that does carry over into parts of far western. Is that Grant County? Yeah. So tornado sirens may be going off in Sheridan. Right now, Sheridan proper, proper is not in that tornado warning, but areas like Pullian, Brush Creek, those areas are. So we're monitoring that. I want to take you down a little farther south and west, still monitoring this one coming into Arkadelphia. It's still a tornado warning here, but it looks like they'll probably uh, let's look at velocity on this, Pat. And see the rotation still there. They may issue a new uh, tornado warning eventually for parts of Clark County, uh, depending on how this evolves as it gets closer right now. That tornado warning goes until 430 here for Clark County rotation near Central Road. Fincher Road, Stevenson Road, tracking toward the east and northeast, uh, Curtis, and then eventually uh, it'll cross out of that tornado warning polygon. You see that red line, that's the edge of the warning everywhere down here. Still in the warning, as this gets eventually closer to that red line, National Weather Service will determine, will they issue a new tornado warning? Will this one weaken? And uh, maybe they'll allow that to drop. Let's try to get a wider view. Uh, once again, I want to see what tornado warnings we have. If you want to uh, go to the uh, wider view of the state and uh, you can see here, we've got three active tornado warnings or uh, technically four, I suppose. There's one here for Woodruff County, a new one that's been issued for that storm now for Cross and Northern St. Francis County. And down here into um, 
hot spring county you've got that one storm south of malvern that's going to probably take it eventually into southern uh, or ex excuse me into northern northwestern portions of grant county and i wouldn't be shocked if that same storm rolled into southern pulaski county so that may eventually trip off the sirens in parts of uh, the city of little rock don't be shocked to see that uh, we also still have that storm coming up into clark county as well i do want to remind you we have a tornado watch that's in effect here across most of the state now. That tornado watch is what is considered a particularly dangerous situation uh, that goes until 8 p.m. this evening. So we still have quite a bit of time before these storms are going to move east. We still have all of these areas here across southeast Arkansas that really just haven't seen <laughs> enough rain or haven't you've seen some sunshine. And so that is really destabilized the atmosphere. So as these storms keep working to the east, they are expected to perhaps strengthen again. That's a look at that tornado watch that we've been talking about as a PDS tornado watch, a particularly dangerous situation. I didn't make that up. The National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center putting that you know, criteria together. They're looking at this and they said, you know what? This isn't your normal uh, tornado watch. This is a particularly dangerous situation. We should treat all warnings today as that. We've seen it in Little Rock already today. And I hope we don't see anything like that again today. All right, so looking at other warnings that we have in place, still a severe thunderstorm warning down here in the southern sections of Faulkner County, northern Pulaski County. That's going to stay uh, north of Little Rock proper, may uh, probably going to stay north of Jacksonville as well. Look at velocity real quick. Let's make sure there's, I mean, you got some gusty wind there near Cato, but uh, right now no rotation technically with it. All right, we're going to turn now to Donna Terrell. She's uh, standing by with a little more information as to maybe what's going on with those, uh, r the, you know, damage surveying and whatnot around Little Rock. Yeah, I, I, both Kevin Kelly and I are, are here. We've been monitoring uh, the situation around town, and obviously we talked about uh, UAMS being at a level one, which means um, they are still, they are still taking in <coughs> patients. Uh, folks who have been hurt in this storm. But we've also been looking at traffic, and traffic is really backed up in some areas, certainly because of the aftermath and the damage. And um, as, as one of you meteorologists pointed out, it, it's a little dangerous to go under bridges right now, so that could be part of the problem. But I-430 coming going southbound into Little Rock toward Cantrell is really, really backed up. And when I say backed up, I mean it's like the, the vehicles are crawling. These are the southbound lanes. And here you're looking at damage. This is over by the Kroger on Rodney Parham. Um, we have we we've seen quite a bit of damage in this area and obviously people are still shocked you got folks out there taking pictures and that sort of thing one area that we have not talked about is the bowman curve marlin area if you're familiar at all with that area you know there are some apartment complexes over there significant damage has been done to the apartment complexes. I'm sure we'll be sending crews over there to, to, to get some pictures of that. Yeah, that entire area uh, along Rodney Parham, uh, unfortunately, uh, took, took a hit. Um, and not just at that shopping mall, but even across the street, Breckenridge suffering some, some severe damage there near the McDonald's. Um, the tropical smoothie there. Uh, there was a Japanese restaurant there that also suffered damage. Um, that Kroger, um, if you're following Samantha Boyd on Twitter by chance, uh, took a direct hit. Several people were inside the grocery store at the time when that tornado went through that Rodney Parham area and I-430 and uh, parts of the roof from the Kroger literally ripped off the inside of the grocery store suffering major damage. Uh, we saw ambulances there as well. Uh, and Carmen, if you need to interject, just go right ahead. All right, I gotta, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt you right here just because we have a new tornado warning. We've been watching the one that was over into Arkadelphia. And now if we just push this a little bit farther north and east, uh, this new tornado warning, Malvern, uh, this is for you. Uh, this is until 5 p.m. So we have this tornado warning that's already covering a little bit farther south 
for the new one. Uh, that is until 5 o'clock. So Arkadelphia, Brown Springs, and Willow. Uh, this is now going to be heading your way. We're watching this structure right here that could produce that rotation. So Clark, Dallas, and Hot Spring County. So uh, we're going to continue to probably toss back and forth to our anchors, Donna and Kevin, of course, for those damage reports. But as long as we have that tornado warning in effect, uh, we're going to give you the updates with that. So there's going to be a lot of that going back and forth. Either way, these storms are dangerous. Little Rock, just as a heads up, these storms are tracking farther north and east, and I do think that activity is probably going to pick up in that 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock time frame yet again for us into Pulaski County. Very well, that could be the case. But what we want to watch right now, as far as the track with this storm right here, just off of I-30, Witherspoon 442 is the arrival for you all. Brown Springs 445, Donaldson School. We're looking at 449 for Willow 454 and for Fairview School 459 p.m. Pat, can we go ahead and, and also focus in on what's going on closer to Malvern as well? What, you can see we have that very heavy rainfall. Again, if there's something that's going on, it's going to be right in this area here. He switched, Pat has switched on over to our uh, rotation. And this is right over Central. This is Malvern. Here's Highway 9. That's going to be heading track, tracking, I should say, farther north and east. Let's go ahead and zoom out uh, just so we can see the multiple warnings here. We have two active warnings, correct? We have more, yeah, three active warnings. Yeah, that one's a little bit farther east. Yeah, toward Forest City. And uh, not that we don't care about you here in Cotton Plant, but that has since moved farther east. So let's focus on what's going on uh, south and east with south and west, I should say, uh, with that new warning. Again, we have two of these active warnings. There's Benton. And you can see Benton right here. This includes Malvern. We do have two warnings. Let's go ahead and query this one that's over Malvern. Until 445, there we go. Butterfield, Gifford, Malvern, and Rockford. Now, Benton, I do think that the area of most concern is farther south, but Sheridan, East End, uh, basically, uh, uh, just to be safe here, Benton, East End, Sheridan, I want you all to be prepared. We have this tornado warning that is over Malvern right now, and this is tracking farther north and east. So if this continues to head toward East End, then we're looking at a time frame closer to Prattsville for 445 for Belfast 452 for Sheridan 454 Sheridan Elementary School 454 so about five till five o'clock so again Easton yeah we'll, we'll go ahead and include Easton in that either way things are going to pick up yet again here in Pulaski County and to Sling County as well as we get closer to that five o'clock hour it is 433 if you are watching right now Please do not get on those roadways if you do not have to. If you have friends, family members who are wanting to go somewhere in Pulaski County and Saline County, really anywhere across central Arkansas, don't do that right now because we have more severe weather on its way. Track with this. Again, for Fenter, 440. For Toll, 447. Sheridan, 453. Sardis, 459. East End, 503. So again, things really starting to heat up here. Pick back up, I should say, with these thunderstorms closer to that 5 o'clock hour. It is 433 right now. Tornado warning until 445. That does include Malvern. The one over Arkadelphia looks like we still have a hook on that storm. At least a little bit of one. As still some very heavy rain associated with that Arkadelphia. You're under this warning. Griffith Town. Brown Springs, that's going to be headed toward Leola as well as Tulip. This one until 5 o'clock, that also includes Curtis. So we do have this warning for Arkadelphia, Brown Springs, Willow, for Clark, Dallas, and Hot Spring County until 5 p.m. So this could very well maintain its strength all the way until 5 o'clock as it gets closer to Tulip. So we have two of those warnings, one until 5 o'clock. This includes Arkadelphia. The other one until 445. That one, uh, that does include Malvern, and that just outside of Benton, also oh, just toward the west of Sheridan. But these are all tracking north and east. What I want to do, Pat, if it is possible, yeah, you can see hooks on both these storms. These are still nasty looking storms and these are still severe what we were watching with that. Pat, if we can zoom out just a little bit, I do want to, of course, so show Sheridan. Uh, there's Benton, Benton and Bryant. Uh, this is probably going to graze farther south. I still want you to be prepared. Here's Little Rock. Uh, I do think this is going to impact Pulaski County no matter what. 
because that is tracking farther north and east. Let's go ahead. I just want to give a heads up here and we'll zoom back on down to these storms. A track. Let's include Little Rock as far as just what's going on right here, because this is going to be our next area of concern. It is our area of concern right now, but it will be our next area of concern for Little Rock. Uh, so if this maintains its strength, again, Little Rock, we're looking at things picking up probably a quarter after 5 p.m. either way. Uh, we're still into the rush hour right now on your Friday. Please do not be on those roadways if you do not have to until all these storms have passed and things really going to pick up here by five o'clock. Bryant 501, Iron Springs 507, England 524, Lone Oak 537. All right, let's go zoom in on both these storms here and we'll go ahead and switch to our storm relative mean velocity. What that means is indicating any sort of rotation with these storms. And this I would assume this is, of course, coming out of Little Rock. So that looks like a bad reading right there. Fenter, I think if it were anywhere, it'd be right around here between Prattsville and Fenter. Maybe let's go, let's go a little bit farther. Let's go farther south and west. I want to see this other warning as well. They've issued, it looks like a severe thunderstorm warning downstream of that. And let's switch back to that velocity. Yeah, th this one closer to Arkadelphia looks more impressive as far as what we're seeing on radar right between Arkadelphia and Griffith Town. So again, that morning until five o'clock, let's push a little bit farther north and east. I still want to see this area of circulation or that rotation and that's going to continue to track farther north and east. Here's Sheridan. Here's Malvern. You're under that warning. Now I want to zoom in. So I'm not I, I'm not as concerned as what's going on in Malvern now. It's still something to take seriously. But Pat, are you seeing anything there at all? Yeah, it's 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 hard to see with this one, but we're still watching. This so, would be the storm. Yeah, it's east of Malvern, moving yeah. to Fent, Fent, Fenter, and it looks like uh, really just 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 a hair. I mean, yeah. just just a little bit right there. Okay. All right. So let's focus on what's going down closer to Arkadelphia then. Uh, let me, let me, uh, there is there is this severe thunderstorm warning in northern Pulaski County mm -hmm. and for uh, southern yeah. Faulkner and southern, and southern White, northern Lone Oak. There is some rotation with this. This okay. is in northern Pulaski County. It's just a severe thunderstorm warning, but there is some rotation here. Uh, this is in northern Pulaski County mm -hmm. uh, near the Macon area, Wals uh, Warsaw, Warsaw area, where, you know, near 89 and 107 meet uh, in northern Pulaski County. So there is some rotation mm -hmm. with that severe thunderstorm warning, though, only at this time. Okay, and how long is that severe thunderstorm warning? Uh, let me query it. I think it's, I think it's 545. Yeah, that, that, that is farther five, west. Oh, just 5 o'clock. Oh, it's of man, Cabot. Okay. my time's off. Okay, until 5 o'clock. Yeah, so that one's a little bit farther west of Cabot. It's west of BB, but Cabot and BB, heads up. You're going to be dealing with this severe weather uh, associated with that. This is more than likely for very gusty wind, but as Pat pointed out, maybe a little bit of rotation with that. So we still want to keep our eyes on what's going on north of Jacksonville, headed toward Cabot and BB, and then eventually making its way up into Searcy. So Searcy, you'll be dealing with some storms here shortly as well. Let's go back to what's going on here. Again, this now we're starting to see that hook still right between Arkadelphia and Griffith Town. Let's go ahead and get street level if we can closer to Griffith Town again, just south of Arkadelphia. Manchester Road over there closer to Darby Road, Pine Grove Church Road. Uh, this is what's going to be moving your way. So again, if there's some rotation, it's going to be right here uh, where that hook is. If we're going to produce a tornado associated with this thunderstorm, let's zoom a little bit farther back out so we can give reference to what we're going on right here. Again, this is, looks like the nastiest storm as of right now, but here's the thing. These are tracking farther north and east, so things are going to pick up yet again here in the portions of Pulaski County by the five o'clock hour. And that's going to continue uh, probably through six o'clock, maybe even a little bit after that. So if you do not have to get on the roadways, do not. Caddo Valley, uh, you're between both of these storms. Five o'clock is how long that tornado warning goes. That includes Clark, Dallas, and Hot Spring County, Arkadelphia, Brown Springs, and Willow towns. This all includes you. Again, here's I-30, here's Curtis, here's Gurdon. Uh, this is farther east, north and east of you all. What we're watching is where that hook is associated with that supercell. Let's zoom in again and let's switch back to rotation, see if we're noticing anything. Again, that tornado warned storm closer to Saginaw, not looking as impressive. It's what's over Griffith Town uh, that does look a bit nastier here as far as what we're seeing right over Highway 7. And that's going to continue to up to 128 as well. Manchester Road, and this is right over Griffith Town toward our south and west. This is south and west 
of Little Rock. Delark and Round Hill, that's going to be heading your way. Let's go ahead and zoom back out if we're able to. And I want to switch back. Yeah, perfect. It's just so that we can see that reflectivity. We're still noticing that supercell structure with this. We still have that tornado warning over Malvern, but the area that's a, a bit more potent and more concerning is right here. However, that is tracking farther north and east. Let's get a new track on this and push it a little bit farther north and east. It may end up actually being far enough south of Malvern, but still this could change a little bit. If we put that track past 270, and Pat's even going to include Sheridan here just so that you have ample warning and a heads up. If that maintains its track, then Brown Springs 447, Willow 455, Landers 5 o'clock, for Leola 505, for Fenter, 511, for Millerville, 517. So that's going to continue to push that way. I'm wondering if we can actually get Sheridan on this track here. Yeah, I'm not seeing Sheridan on here, but I would imagine it's going to probably be closer to 5 o'clock, 515 uh, for you all. Yeah, there you go. 520 for Sheridan, Sheridan Elementary, 520, White Oak Bluff, 523 and notice how this is going to be south of us into Little Rock. So yet again, we'll be dealing with more of those storms. I know a lot of people, of course, responding to damage. Uh, we responding to injuries. We've had those out there, uh, but we're going to be dealing with more severe weather here shortly in the next half hour across portions of Pulaski County. As so everybody needs to be prepared to find a shelter when that ends up hitting. If we can go ahead and uh, zoom back out, I know we do have that severe thunderstorm warning that did include parts of northern Pulaski County. Uh, so that's now pushing a little bit farther north and east, Austin, and then Searcy, BB, you'll be dealing with those thunderstorms there. This is not a tornado warning, it is a severe thunderstorm warning. That is until 5 p.m. So notice how Little Rock, the metro here, Camac, Village, West Little Rock, the Heights, Hillcrest, Sherwood, North Little Rock, uh, Woodyardville, Scott, Kerr, Jacksonville. We're not getting rain right now. You may be looking outside your window and thinking, oh, the storms are gone. We can go out and respond to all of the damage that was produced earlier from these storms. That's not the case. We have more weather on the way, more severe weather on the way at that. So please keep that in mind. Do not drive right now. If you do not have to, it's going to be a dangerous situation out there. Mountain Springs, we have very heavy rain for you all. And Cabot, let's go ahead and zoom back on down to our southwest because this is giving us an idea of what's going on. Pat was just checking on that one to make sure we weren't seeing any sort of rotation that was starting to strengthen. This is the nastiest storm that we're seeing right now onto our radar. And once we're starting to see that darker shades of red and pink, again, a very heavy precip. Here's our legend right now so you can see what we're talking about. Brown Springs, it is coming down. Potentially, some of these storms could produce some hail. That was the case earlier this afternoon. I'm not hearing of those reports as of this very second, but we're still dealing with a very nasty storm right here over Griffith Town. Again, if there's any sort of rotation, it would be there. Caddo Valley, what we've switched over is to hail. Maybe some hail that would be produced with that. Uh, you can see with that. Arkadelphia, again, you're kind of between these two cells, but right over here within this curvature, this hook, Brown Springs and Griffith Town, you're still in an area uh, that is dangerous, and we still have that tornado warning. This one until five o'clock, I do believe. Manning, pardon me, Willow, we're all you're all in the pathway of this. Leola, it's eventually going to be moving your way as well as Dogwood. Again, this tornado warning until five o'clock. Arkadelphia, you're hearing the sirens because of that. More than likely, Brown Springs and Willow, Clark, Dallas, and Hot Spring County. If you are under a tornado warning, if you are hearing sirens, what that means is a tornado is imminent, whether that is indicated on radar, which is what we're watching right now, or it has been spotted by chasers or train spotters out in the field on the ground. You need to move into your safe place. Hopefully you are already there. Arkadelphia, Griffith Town, if you're listening right now, you need to stay into your safe place and make sure that you protect your head as well. Again, it is the debris associated with the tornadoes and the wind that is affected with that. That leads to more problems here, injuries and deaths in a tornadic situation. So we want everybody to still remain alert. It is 444 right now 
we still have another hour or two at least that we want to be watching these storms out here. And Don, I want to go ahead and toss to you. You have some updates. Yeah, and this just, uh, I, I just received this email from Pulaski County. Pulaski County has declared a state of emergency in response to significant storm and tornado damage throughout the county. This declaration, as, as most people know, when they make these kinds of declarations, it allows the county to receive support from the state and um, municipalities to declare emergencies. Um, also, Pulaski County is in communication with Governor Sanders' office, and they stand ready to offer their assistance. And I guess Faulkner County, Saline, and White Counties have also offered to help Pulaski County. They have not released how many people have been injured or if they're um, are any deaths in association with this tornado, but the damage is really, really bad. We've been showing you pictures of it. Um, I believe we also, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're gonna have uh, We're uh, interrupting right you, because Pat, you had something that you were wanting to say with that storm? Well, with the storm in northern Pulaski County, uh, northern Lone Oak and southwestern White, wall cloud reported, rotating wall cloud reported, there is the hook echo, the looking for signs of rotation, and the weather service is about to issue a tornado warning for this storm. Okay, and this is the one that we're focused on right now on radar? Yes. Right here. So this does include Cabot. It does include Ward. Uh, it does include BB as well. There's that tornado warning. Thank you, Pat, for going ahead and give us a, giving us a heads up on that. So wall cloud has been indicated on this. Again, if you are tuning in, we are the Arkansas Storm Team. We are streaming on Fox 16 and KRK4 right now because of severe weather, and we have more of it to talk about. Tornado warning until 515. Austin, BB, Cabot, Ward, you are under this tornado warning. That's because a wall cloud has been spotted, and there's also indication on radar of that rotation. Faulkner, Lone Oak, Prairie, and White Counties, this is you all. So a path on this, Cabot 447, it's 447 right now. Austin 449, Ward 452, BB 458, McRae 504, and Garden 507. Gardner, pardon me, this is going to be heading your way. So Sylvania, you're under this track. Again, the area that we're noticing any sort of rotation is going to be right here between Mountain Springs and then 167. So Austin, BB, Cabot, Ward, this includes you all. You need to be in your safe place. We just went over that. Uh, you need to be there right now. These storms have been monsters throughout the course of this afternoon. This really picked up afternoon. It is now close to 5 o'clock, and more of these storms are on the way. They're moving in from our southwest and tracking northeast, closer to 50 to 60 miles per hour. Pat, do you know the track as far as how fast? You said 50? Mm -hmm. Okay, so northeast at 50 miles per hour. Cabot? You're in the path of this right here. Cabot, Austin, Ward, you need to take this seriously because there is a wall cloud associated with this storm. What Pat has done is he switched it on over to velocity to indicate that rotation. This is going to be traveling along 167 from Cabot up toward Austin, up toward Ward in a matter of minutes. Old Austin and Cemetery Road, this includes you all. Lloyd Henderson Road, this includes you all. Looks like we do have an RDOT cam. This is over in Cabot. There is a storm that is rotating in Cabot. There has been a wall cloud that has been spotted here. And the RDOT cam will show you that ominous sky right now. We have a lot of cars on the road currently in Cabot. I don't like to see that, but if you are driving, you end up seeing a tornado. You are going to want to drive away from that tornado at a 90 degree angle if you can. If you cannot, do not go under an overpass. You, what you need to do is pull over and find a ditch and get in that ditch. That's what you're going to have to do if you're on the roadway right now. If you're able to find a gas station and go into that gas station for coverage, you're going to want to get away from all of the windows, things like that. Again, at this is going to concern our drivers here. They are driving along where we are seeing a wall cloud as well as an area of rotation. There is an active tornado warning that does include Cabot, that does include Austin, that does include Ward. Here's along 167. I believe that's where our RDOT cam is as far as what we're looking at currently. So this is the area of rotation still moving. I'd say smack dab right over Austin, 167. It's getting a little bit messy to see this heading toward Ward. Here's Morrison Street right here. Here's Ridgeway Road along 167. That's going to be our main ra road here that we're focused on. The area, is area of rotation, here's Irons, Mountain Springs, I should say. Austin, right over here. 
just north of 167. So let's go ahead and put another track on that. We'll zoom out just a little bit as well. Uh, because it looks like that pathway and that trajectory is going to continue along 167. Again, there's that stream from RDOT right now. I'm not quite sure what direction this is looking at into that, but we can at least get a live look as what's going on into Cabot. Again, this tornado warning until 515 Austin, BB, Cabot, and Ward. This all includes you. Faulkner, Lone Oak, Prairie, and White Counties. Now, Mountain Springs, this is toward the east of you all and we'll continue to track farther north and east Valonia. This is east of you all as well. You are not under that tornado warning. The track for that BB 459 for Butlerville 501 for Edwards 503 Walker 512 Higginson 514. It is 450 currently. For Happy 517, again, we are watching these storms. These storms have produced tornadoes so far this afternoon, and things are still ramping up. That is the tornado warning we're watching with that wall cloud. I'm wondering, Pat, if we can zoom out really quickly and touch on what was going on closer to Arkadelphia. Is that still looking nasty down there? Okay. So that has, we have that severe thunderstorm warning. Okay, so Malvern, you're under severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, we have a, a downstream severe thunderstorm warning that's going to be heading toward Easton as well. So we still need to watch this cell right here. We still need to watch the cell here south of Malvern and the cell that is north of Sheridan. So that's going to be heading that way. Can we get a track if we can zoom out really quickly? Let's get a track on that at, and get it closer to Little Rock. Uh, the closer one, yeah, right here, closer to East End and Sheridan. So you can see that's going to be pushing farther north and east. This is going to affect portions of uh, southern Pulaski County. It's already affecting Grant Hot Spring and Saline counties currently, and we do have that other cell coming. So uh, this is what we are going to be forecasting here, more of this severe weather. As far as Sardis, 504, Orion 510, for Wrightsville 519, for Higgins 521. All right, let's go back up to the, our tornado warning. I just wanted to touch on that very briefly. There's Little Rock. There's more of those storms. Here's our tornado warning. So Little Rock, we're wedged between these warnings currently. So things are picking up uh, right on time. 515 is this tornado warning right here that does include BB, Austin, BB, Cabot, and Ward. Faulkner, Lone Oak, Prairie, and White Counties, this is you. The latest track, that's really heading along 167. So for our drivers on, on 167, not liking that, because whether we see that tornado warning or that tornado uh, come through or not, you're still dealing with torrential rainfall. And that's not good driving conditions out here. McRae, 503 for Walker, 511 for Happy, 516. Jasmine, 517. Andrews, 521. West Point, we're looking at 519. So we're watching that very closely. And, and that's the latest with that. Again, can we just check our rotation very quickly? And then we are going to get an update from Donna here. I just want to make sure that this rotation has not intensified. And we'll switch on over to velocity. Okay, so that's still looking about the same. Again, this is south of BB and just outside Ward. We have this tornado warning that we're watching again just to the north and east of Little Rock, but we do have more storms toward our southwest that we are going to continue to watch here. So let's zoom out just quickly here. Cabot, you're now on the western side of that. Little Rock, we're right between these warnings. I want to touch base with Donna real quickly then so we can get some updates from her now that we're not seeing anything uh, as extremely potent, but we are wanting to visit this back very quickly. Okay, and, and I'll make it I'll make it quick as Kevin and I are both sitting here just kind of monitoring things. Finally, though, numbers are starting to come in. A lot of people have been concerned about how many people have been hurt in this storm. UAMS, one patient. That's what we have right now. Baptist in Little Rock and North Little Rock, 17 patients. These are all victims from the storms. And CHI St. Vincent telling us they have multiple patients. They didn't give us an exact number, but they said multiple. So um, there have been some numbers out there floating around, and I, we just want to lay some of this um, information to rest um, in terms of casualties. Uh, so that's where we are with that right now. We're still waiting to hear back from Children's Hospital if they actually received any patients there. Folks in uh, Searcy and Bald Knob, they've been posting about falling debris 
in those areas. And that's something we should all be thinking about whenever, you know, there are storms like this, there could be falling debris. So a lot of people want to run out and, and, and take a look and see what's happening. Just you got to be careful doing that. Sometimes it's, it's best to just stay home. Fire station number nine on uh, Shackelford and Rodney Parham hit by the storm. That's an area we've been talking about a lot, but over on Chennault Parkway, if you're familiar at all with the Baskin Robbins, and I think we might have some video of this. The Baskin Robbins there also hit, uh, in, and that's in, in West Little Rock. So um, trying to see if, I'm, if, I, if there's anything else I need to, well, yeah. As you, as you go ahead and look Baskin at that, Robbins. I, I'm looking right now online and I'm looking at video on, on Shackelford Road and it literally looks like a bomb went off. Mm -hmm. um, the devastation is just unbelievable. Now, There's the Baskin this Robbins. is on Chennault Parkway. There's a, the, and you can see the interior, the, f the complete front of that Baskin Robbins on Chennault Parkway mm -hmm. is gone. There, there's the shot that is really compelling. The entire side of that building, brick building, sheared off. Um, the destruction, and then the nail spa, which is right next to it, looks to be intact. Um, so this tornado appears to have played a little hopscotch game with with, with some of these um, with some of these businesses. But you know, it went from Chanel and then it went over to Rodney Parham, which is where we're seeing a massive destruction on, on Rodney Parham to the Breckenridge uh, shopping mall there, as well as the Kroger. But again, uh, looking at some of these images and pictures and video along Shackelford Road. Um, I mean, it's it it. This is a significant tornado. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm looking at video right now of, of a gentleman carrying out a dog who appears to have been injured from the debris field, and there's not much left there. Um, just a, amazing video. And based on what you said on the reports of number of people injured and so forth, let's just hope and pray mm. um, hard that those numbers stay down low. And, and yeah. Kevin, I, I need to point out too, when, when, I, when I talk about these, these numbers, uh, that these are what they're telling us in terms of injuries. I just need to, one other thing, uh, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. tweeted, Little yeah. Rock is setting up a temporary emergency shelter. It's being set up at Hall High School for any folks who've been displaced. And you can imagine that there are people looking for a place to stay tonight. Red Cross has also uh, set up a, a facility as well, and I, I don't recall off the top of my head where that's going to be located, but I know Red Cross is actively uh, doing what it does best day in and day out to help those impacted by these storms. Carmen? It's something to be taken very seriously, and we still have current warnings out there, so thank you, Donna and Kevin, for those updates. We still have this tornado warning right over BB. Uh, Pat is uh, centering this here. It, it's the town of BB right now that we are watching for this area of rotation, that tornado warning until 515. So as Donna and Kevin have been mentioning here as well, we've had damage reports, we've had injuries, and we still are dealing with that severe weather. This is going to continue to pick up here. It is 458 right now. That will continue for the next hour at least. But of course, Arkansas Storm Team, we are going to stay with you the entire time to keep you updated. Looks like right between Ward, that's the area of concern here, but old Austin along 367. Pat, what have you been noticing? You've been watching this, you know. I think it's kind of like the, the, what I'm seeing the best rotation is there just south of BB on 31, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, just on the, the road going south of BB. Right. Just do, do just straight south. And we've not had any sort of damage reports yet or anything, no. a confirmation with this quite yet, but it's still something that these storms have been producing tornadoes, the damage, and that have since led to injuries. So this is still something to take very seriously. I want you in your safe place right now. If you are into BB, if you are into war, that's going to continue traveling uh, closer to 367 through the town of BB. If that ends up being anything, you can see actually where that potential rotation is. Again, the as far as the rotation that we saw with velocity, that looks a little bit farther south and west. But either way, we still have this potent storm uh, that we are watching now heading toward Lebanon Road. 
if we can go ahead and zoom out, let's go ahead and get a new track on this again because we still have this active tornado warning. McRae, you were getting hammered right now with all of that rainfall. It is 515 PM. Now I know we still have our chasers out there. I'm not sure if we can pull their streams or not or where they are, but if we can get an update with that eventually. But in the meantime, we'll continue to track this. Of course, Griffith Ville, we're looking at 513 for happy 515 for Jasmine 516 West Point 518 again. We've been talking about desert just a little while ago. Uh, it looks like you're in the cusp of that polygon or that tornado warning, uh, but these storms are to the north of you all either way. Hey, you may be hearing those sirens because of that and because of the parameters of this. This is north of Edwards. It is south of McRae. It is going to continue to track farther north and east. Higginson, it is raining. It is pouring over you all currently with this thunderstorm. Let's go ahead and zoom back out if we can. Cabot, this is toward the north and east of you. But again, as far as who is under that warning, BB Ward, this is south of Searcy, so if you live in Searcy, if you have friends in Searcy, this is south of you all really quickly. Uh, farther east, looks like they have a tornado emergency uh, that is closer to West Memphis. That's where Zach is. Our chaser is where this tornado emergency is. So uh, we dealt with that into Little Rock. What that means is uh, what is a confirmed tornado moving through a higher populated area that would lead to more than likely catastrophic damage. And we dealt with that earlier today. We're still dealing with that currently as well. Served near Parkin, so the tornado emergency for Parkin and for Oral. Okay, and that's a, a little bit farther east. So this is going to be into Memphis's market, who is going to cover this. We are covering, of course, what is south of Searcy. We're also watching what is farther south and west. This is a severe thunderstorm warning, not a tornado warning, but we still have those thunderstorms moving into east end. So again, southern Pulaski County uh, getting some of that heavier rainfall moving through. Caddo Valley, Gifford, as well as Malvern and Rockport, you are under this severe thunderstorm warning until 515. This outside of Arkadelphia. If we want to zoom back on out so we can see where our warnings are again, this is the line of storms. We do have more storms that are going to eventually come up, but these are the strongest where we have that severe thunderstorm warning and looks like a new severe thunderstorm warning here and that does include parts of southern Pulaski County. So this severe thunderstorm warning until 530 p.m. That does include East End, England, Iron Springs, as well as Wrightsville. So this severe thunderstorm warning just to the south of the metro and along 530 here toward East Easton and Woodson Cane Creek. That is in effect until 530 for parts of Grant, Lone Oak, Pulaski and Saline County. Again, you're seeing these live shots of damage here from these storms and from these cells and these supercells that we continue to see. So putting a track on this because it does include southern Pulaski County. Wrightsville, we're looking at 514. Tafton, 515 for Bredlow Center, 519 for Keough, 527 England. 529. So Little Rock and Little Rock Metro, and uh, this is just south of you all. So here's Little Rock Metro, essentially right below the five o'clock time period here. If, if uh, Pat, you can zoom out just a little bit so we can show people where the orientation is this for Little Rock. Again, here's East End. Here's Little Rock. So again, not raining here, but Southern Pulaski County, you're getting hammered with this thunderstorm. So we need to watch this cell very closely. Let's zoom back up to what's going on farther north and east because we still have this tornado warning. Uh, we just wanted, I just wanted to focus on what was going on in Pulaski County very quickly here. Uh, Griffithville, we're not seeing as much of a hook here. So this is looking not as, I, I guess I shouldn't say concerning because it's still something very significant, but it's not as potent as what we saw a little bit earlier. That rotation not as obvious as what it was earlier. For Griffith, Griffithville High School, we're looking at 513 for Jasmine, 516. For Pryor, 521. For Enright, 523. Again, this tornado warning until 515 p.m. BB, this is now toward the east of you all, so we're still watching that very closely. If we want to switch on back to rotation to see if we can see any of that with this. Again, not noticing any more bad news associated with this storm, but we still are seeing a little bit of that rotation. Now, I know we, ha we have Pat Walker here. We have Joel Young. We, of course, have Juliana Cullen, too, the, the whole storm team. I'm wondering if 
Joel and Pat, y'all are free to chime in as well. If you've been hearing any damage reports, anything associated with this, or is this looking? Not that particular storm. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of damage pictures from wind outside mm -hmm. of our coverage area, as y'all were mentioning earlier. But uh, right now, uh, that storm in particular, haven't seen anything in reference to it. Okay. Okay, so not, uh, not receiving anything, but still noticing a little bit of rotation. So again, that tornado warning still continues here uh, for another 25 minutes, or I should say for another 10 minutes because it's 515, that expiration time. Not hearing any indication, of course, of that expiring early, but this is south of Searcy. So if you live in Searcy, if you have friends, family members in Searcy, you may be hearing those sirens uh, because of that. Joel. Uh, no, I was just going to say, uh, and if we can switch over to Max uh, 2 really quickly, I just want to do a quick reset and remind everyone uh, that we still have a tornado watch that's in effect across most of the state right now. Uh, this is a particularly dangerous situation, a PDS tornado watch that continues until 8 p.m. This really, especially over the eastern part of the state, remember we have a high risk, a rare high risk uh, day today. This is, uh, and I'm going to pull up uh, this map here. Uh, that shows just that. We've got that high risk here across uh, much of Arkansas here uh, where we have a significant risk. So we're going to be monitoring that here very closely. Um, again, I just wanted to give you a quick reset, remind you that there's that tornado watch, and uh, we're going to be monitoring it. Absolutely. And I love the reset, actually. If we can, I'm wondering, let's zoom out even a little bit farther just because uh, I know people are going to be uh, more anxious and it's going to that anxiety is heightened because we've already seen that damage. We've seen these tornadoes across the state. So a lot of you may be wondering how long is this going to last? Let's go ahead. Let's get a track all the way down in Texarkana just as a kind of kind of as a, a very good estimate of what we can expect. What we're looking at right now is drone video of Little Rock, Rodney Param area, and this is the first time I'm seeing this. And you can see the damage from that tornado. I mean, we saw it on radar. That's why we had the tornado emergency. And that is just something unbelievable here. Uh, so these storms, uh, they are nasty, they are potent, they are severe, obviously, and they're producing that damage. Uh, so as far as that line, again, if that pushes a little bit farther north and east, uh, we're looking at Centerville, 6 o'clock, Reader, 634. What I really want to do, though, Joel, is I want to zoom all the way out, include Little Rock, and let's just say, let's put the end of the line, let's just say... You know, maybe the storm's probably closer to Arkadelphia when that's going to be passing through southern Pulaski County. I, I want to kind of give a deadline for when this is finally going to be out of here. I'm sorry. Um, yes, the Arkadelphia storm. Yeah, let's go ahead and just to, just to give a general idea of when that's going to be passing farther east of us into Little Rock. Uh, but you can still see that this damage is devastating. It is not good to see here with this, and we still have these severe thunderstorms that are south of us into the city of Little Rock. So Whitehall 539, England 556, so that's when that will be a little bit farther east. So probably by 6 o'clock, a lot of this is going to be pushing farther east of us into Pulaski County. This is not going to be an event that's going to last very late into the night again. Everything that's coming through at the highest level of what it is, is this afternoon from what we just saw into the early evening hours. By late tonight, all of this should now be out of us. Let's go ahead and zoom back into that tornado warning that is south of Searcy, and let's see if anything has changed with that. Griffithville and West Point, again, just south of us, uh, south of Searcy, I should say, and toward the east of 167. We have this tornado warning until 515. It is 508. And we're still maybe seeing a little bit of a structure here that could produce some of that rotation with that. Uh, we've not gotten word of an additional warning with it, but we do have a severe thunderstorm warning that has been issued a little bit farther downstream. So still a cell worth keeping our eye on. If we can switch to velocity to see that rotation, and that's going to continue to push farther north and east. Again, with these storms, they have been severe. We've seen that. That's evident. We have lots of damage out there. We're going to continue to update you. If you are tuning in right now, it is 509. 
We are the Arkansas Storm Team. We are streaming both on Fox 16 and KRK4 News. So as we continue to get these damage reports and of course new warnings, we are going to walk you through it and we will give you those updates. So stay with us here. We have another hour at the very least of this severe weather here across central Arkansas and other portions of the state. This tornado warning until 515 again for parts of Lone Oak, for parts of Prairie and White counties. This is south of Searcy. I do think this is going to continue to graze farther south away from you all, and that will continue to push farther north and east. Uh, so Searcy, uh, you should be okay here, but you're probably hearing those sirens if you are anywhere along 167 or south of 167. Pat, are you noticing any rotation with this? It just really doesn't really show like it has a whole lot yeah. uh, with it. Well, maybe a little bit tighter now just here. Yes. Just southwest of Griffithville. Still situated here over Griffithville. And yeah. Forget about the storm down in Grant County. It's mm -hmm. it's not severe. I mean, it's severe now, but that's something we don't want to ignore. In Grant County? If, yeah, if there's some, it's showing some signs of rotation. I, I don't necessarily see them putting out a warning in the immediate future, but let's not forget about it. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, thank you. And, and there are multiple <laughs> warnings, multiple storms out here that really shows you we had the environment here. We have not been under a level five risk, which is what we are under currently into parts of Arkansas since April 27th, 2014. So if you remember Valonia, so it has been that long since we've seen that level five out of five risk. And unfortunately, it has panned out for today. So we still want to watch every single one of these storms. It's not a situation where uh, one just forms and then it weakens all of a sudden. It, all of these you don't want to mess with. Uh, so we do have those severe thunderstorm warnings that are in effect. I know the tornado warning, but we're just not seeing as much rotation uh, that looks as potent or ominous. So we'll focus on what's going on in Sheridan. And of course, we have a lot of viewers. We have a lot of people. We have a lot of friends at down into Sheridan. That includes Miller Villa as well. And that is a severe thunderstorm warning until 530 p.m. So regardless of whether we end up seeing rotation with this storm or not, and it produces a tornado, you're still going to have very heavy rain. You have the potential for hail with the thunderstorm in Sheridan, and you have gusty wind. We're already dealing with damage across the area here and quite a bit of it. More wind and very heavy rain is not going to make matters any better, obviously. Center Grove, 525 as far as that storm moving in for you all. Hardin, 532. For Arkansas Department of Correction Diagnostic Unit, we're looking at 536 Whitehall, 536 West End, 538. So again, we've included some um, landmarks here and other areas so that can give you an idea of where this is. Let's go ahead and clear this uh, so you can see exactly uh, where the strongest of that storm is. Again, here's Sheridan. Here's 167, here's Millerville, here's Dogwood. Again, Joel had mentioned keeping an eye on this. Leola, this is toward the north and east of you all. Uh, what we may see is a little bit of rotation associated with that. Prattsville, this is farther east of you all, and that's going to continue to push farther north and east toward Center Grove. Whitehall, uh, you'll eventually be into this path here as that continues to push uh, closer to Pine Bluff as well as 365. Here's 530. And again, the area of rotation we're watching is right over here. It's looking a little bit broad. Again, when we see uh, the red that's away from the radar, green toward the radar, and you know, kind of a common saying here, when red meets the green, there's something in between. So when we start to see this become brighter in color, when we start to see uh, that become a little bit tighter, then that's where we could see the potential for something more imminent as far as rotation and tornado. But right now, this is not a tornado warned storm. It is a severe thunderstorm warning that does include Sheridan and Millerville. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. I want to switch to reflectivity just so we can see precip. Just if you look at rain alone, uh, this is torrential rain that's moving over Sheridan right now. We also want to watch the cell that is closer to England. Again, this is south of us into the Little Rock Metro. Both of these severe thunderstorm warnings. I want to touch on that tornado warning one more time. That should expire. I'm sorry, Pat. Yeah, it's supposed to expire in one minute. Yeah, so just one one more touch on that again. 
It is 514. We have one more minute on that. Doesn't look like they're going to issue a downstream of that. And then this is now going to be farther east of you, Cersei. Okay, we can go resume back to what we're going farther south of Little Rock. Again, we have three severe thunderstorm warnings now with all of these cells. So all of these cells here are capable of producing severe weather. That's what that means. Sheridan, uh, what is over top of you all right now does look to be the most intense storm of these three, but all of them are going to be cap capable of producing that severe weather. So here's Dogwood, Sheridan, right over top of you all along 167 towards Center Grove. I'm wondering if we can zoom out again and get a track on this and push it farther north and east so we can include some of our cities. Let's go ahead and include Pine Bluff. Let's get kind of a, a wide swath of, of what we can expect as far as these cities. Looks like they've canceled that warning that was over Arkadelphia, but we have a new one uh, that, that was issued farther downstream south and east of Searcy. So if we keep this track up with this strong storm, we're looking at Pine Bluff 554. It is 515, so we have about 30 minutes for you all. England 554, Hamilton 610, DeWitt 625, Clarendon 634. Again, severe thunderstorm warning until 530 p.m. So we still have active warnings out here. Uh, this one until 5.30 p.m. Pat, if we can go ahead and get another query on the other one a little bit farther north, uh, that does include England, that one until 5.30 p.m. So we have at least another 15 minutes that we are tracking this severe weather with these thunderstorms. Uh, so Easton, England, Iron Springs, and Wrightsville, you are all under that warning until 5.30 p.m. Again, it is close to 5.16. Now we are uh, the Arkansas Storm Team. We have many reports of damage. We've had reports of injuries from these storms. We had a tornado emergency in Little Rock earlier. Pat, did, were you say Pat and Joel? Uh, we do have a tornado warning. Okay, here we go. And, and this is the strongest storm that we are seeing on radar right now, right over Sheridan. So that's what we've been watching. Again, that's the strongest storm. Here's Little Rock. Here's Little Rock Metro. This is in Sheridan. So Sheridan, you need to be in your safe spot right now. You have a tornado warning. This is in effect until 5.45 p.m. This is going to be crossing over 5.30 very shortly here. Oakland Heights. Prague, this includes you all, 167. Again, if there's that area of rotation, it's going to be situated right here where Pat is putting uh, the initiation of that track. So here we go. Doylestown, 527. Harden, 530. Samples, 532. Whitehall, if this maintains its track, 534. For West End, 535. For Pine Bluff, 538. So this does include parts of Grant and Jefferson counties until 5.45 p.m. There's enough rotation here associated with this storm that the National Weather Service have, has prompted that tornado warning. So now, Sheridan, you are more than likely hearing tornado sirens, and that is because a tornado warning is in effect right now at 517, and that is until 545. This does not include Little Rock. This is south of Little Rock, including Sheridan and it is going to be moving farther north and east, eventually making its way into Jefferson County. So the area of rotation right here, here's the city of Sheridan. We're focused on right closer to 167, right around Miller's, there's Millerville. Here's some of these street names I wanna point out. Forestry Road, as well as Grant County. We have County Road, it looks like 502. I'm sorry, if I, my producer, Okay, we're watching for this area of rotation. Again, Sheridan, Millerville, Doylestown, you are all under this warning. You need to be in your safe place currently. Pat, you're the one, of course, monitoring radar right now and driving it. What are you seeing with this storm? The rotation is broad. With that, the hook echo is what's so extreme. And with mm -hmm. the, uh, notice the high level of reflectivity up here yeah. in Sheridan. We were likely getting some uh, hail mm -hmm. and, and you know, maybe ping pong or larger. So you have an extremely strong updraft creating that hail and extremely strong updraft in this rotation is uh, possibly, you know, can give us the tornado. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I'm not convinced there is a tornado out there right now because that rotation is just so broad uh, with it. But, you know, they strengthen up or they tighten up pretty quickly. 
They do, and we've seen that. We've seen that these storms are destructive, that they have produced tornadoes. So uh, this is, of course, a good call that we have this now warned because of that. And, and again, Pat, when he is really pointing out the strength of that updraft that really shows you the intensity of the storm. So this is a severe thunderstorm and we do have a tornado warning on it because of that rotation that we are seeing and that is just outside of Sheridan right now. 545 is uh, when that is set to expire. Pastoria, Pine Bluff, Sheridan, Whitehall. You are all under this tornado warning. Of course, this does include parts of Grant and Jefferson counties because of that. Here's 167, here's Highway 35. This is going to continue to track farther north and east. Doylestown 529, Hardin 533, Oakland Heights 534, Moody Elementary. We're looking at 535 p.m. for the arrival of this. Can we switch back to reflectivity? And we can see really the intensity of the strongest. Again, uh, the darker shades of the red, as well as that very bright pink, indicating that very strong uh, rainfall, at the very least, potentially some hail that's being picked up here as well as far as what we're seeing onto radar. So here's Highway 270. Again, this does include parts of Grant and Jefferson County. There is a tornado warning in effect because of rotation indicated on radar. And that is going to continue to track farther north and east over 530. So again, if you were driving along 530, this is heading your way. Again, the most intense part of that storm is currently over Center Grove. It is now east of Sheridan. So Sheridan, you are still under this warning and you still may be getting obviously some effects from the cell, but that is pushing farther and farther east. So Center Grove, you're now in the center of that and that's going to be heading over toward 530 and eventually closer to Pastoria with this tornado warning. So we are hearing those sirens with that. Can we zoom out just briefly here just so I can give you all in relation where we are in Little Rock compared to where that tornado warning is. So here's Little Rock, here's Sheridan, and that's going to be pushing farther uh, north and east. Pine Bluff is under this warning. Whitehall is under this warning as well. That does make sense. But again, if you drive along 530 from Little Rock to Pine Bluff, uh, this is your route here, and this is where that warning is included. I know we do have RDOT cams along 530, in this path too. So if there's something that is to be seen on that, we will pull that up. Joel, I wanted to switch over to you too to see you've been monitoring these as well. As far as what you're seeing, uh, is this uh, what is the most concern for you on radar? Well, so far, I mean, this is the only tornado worn storm we have right now. And look, I'm, I'm just glad that we're only looking at one at the moment, but and, and it's in an environment that is capable of, you know, strengthening. So we've got to watch these really closely. This storm is about to cross out of Grant County here shortly near Prague, and it's going to eventually track over Highway 270 there over near Oakland Heights, or really just north and west of there near the county line, and eventually work its way up toward Whitehall, Pastoria, and that area. But at the moment, this is the only tornado warning we have out there. I'm zooming out a little bit more, and I say that this is the only tornado warning in central Arkansas in the KRK and Fox 16 coverage area. There is a uh, tornado warning up here up toward Crittenden County, and that's significant up that way. There's been some significant damage in the uh, area of Wynn, Arkansas. If you have family and friends there, you might want to call and check on them. That tornado has moved on, but it's a significant situation from what we're seeing through our sources there in eastern Arkansas. But again, just to look at this storm a little closer to remind you, first off, there is a tornado warning that is in effect for eastern Grant County and western Jefferson County. This does include the city of Pine Bluff, but friends in Pine Bluff, I think this is going to stay north of us here. It'll probably be north of Whitehall. Places like Samples and Pastoria are more likely to feel the effects of this storm. Large hail near Center Grove right now, perhaps, and that storm keeps tracking toward the east. Uh, I do do want to remind you, of course, um, uh, we want you to, if you live in this area, find your tornado safe place. You want to find a sturdy structure, lowest floor of your house away from windows. You don't want to be in a mobile home. Uh, find a small room, no windows. If that room is a bathroom that you think is typically your safe place, if there's a window in that room, it's not a safe place. If it has an exterior wall, it's not a safe place. There's nothing magical about a bathroom that makes it safe. 
It's just that typically your bathroom's in the middle of the house. Stay put until you're given the all clear, and I would advise you to wrap up in blankets and pillows and uh, maybe put on a helmet just, uh, you know, to protect yourself from any flying debris. Places you don't want to be, cars or trucks. You don't want to be driving down Interstate 5, uh, 530 here. Uh, you really don't want to be on 270 either because uh, even though right now, and I'm going to take this down, I want to look once again at velocity. This is still pretty broad rotation right to the south of Center Grove. That's moving kind of toward Doylestown and eventually up towards Samples. We are so far looking at broad rotation. What that means is the rotation is there, but it's not tight enough. It's not bringing it to the ground right now. Let's hope it stays that way. But friends here in Whitehall samples, I would be in your safe place. If you are along, or if you have friends or family, you know right now that are driving on 270 or driving down 530, go ahead, give them a call. Let them know that we're tracking this and there's a possibility that this storm could drop a tornado. Again, right now uh, it does have rotation and it could certainly spin up. And look, I'm, I'm going to zoom out again here because I want to show one thing. Nothing over southeast Arkansas. Now, how is that even relevant to this storm? Well, the wind, the inflow from that storm, it's not feeding any other storms. It has direct access right now to the Gulf of Mexico moisture. And for that reason, uh, because it has what we call unimpeded inflow there, it's not being blocked by anything. That thing can strengthen a good bit. I do want to remind you we have a uh, rare level five risk for severe storms as we go through the rest of the day. That actual level five risk is uh, just east of Pine Bluff. So we're seeing a supercell thunderstorm with large hail and rotation that is moving into a level five out of five risk area. And Little Rock wasn't even in the level five risk area. So and of course we saw what happened there. So uh, right now, you know, as long as this thing doesn't drop a tornado, we are incredibly blessed. But uh, right now we've got to watch this storm here approaching Pine Bluff areas really just north and west of Pine Bluff. It has that classic uh, kidney bean shape to it that we've talked about with these storms all day. And so all it has to do is, uh, you know, tighten up that rotation and and Carmen, it's possible that may be tightening up a little bit right now as we uh, look at this a little closer does look like that and even when we noticed of course on reflectivity too uh, that's also starting to look a little bit more intense but yeah by the he way here we go are we good okay. can you hear me no if you were can you hear me oh my ifb died okay Okay, I was like, nah, I didn't touch my mic. All right, uh, so what we're watching here, of course, uh, Joel had mentioned this uh, too, indicating a little bit of that starting to tighten. And now we're starting to see, yeah, maybe there could be uh, some areas of rotation with that. Now we're not starting to see more of that linear line. What we mean by is a straight line. Now we're starting to see more of those kinks in this line. So center growth, you need to be in your safe spot. Doyle Sound in your safe spot. This is right along Highway 270. This is heading toward Whitehall, toward Pastoria. Pine Bluff, you are in this tornado warning. Again, it is 527 right now. If we can go ahead and get that query up, just so you all know, if you are tuning in right now, of course, we've had a very active day here with that severe weather and with tornadoes. We are the Arkansas Storm Team. We are streaming on Fox 16 as well as KRK, and we are going to continue to do so as long as we have severe weather. And we have severe weather right now. Tornado warning until 545 p.m. We've been watching the cell. It was broader before. Now it's starting to tighten up. And what that means is we could end up producing a tornado out of this. So we still want to watch this very closely. It's still something uh, that should be taken seriously. Samples 533, Whitehall 534, for Pastoria 538, for Haywood 545. Now, as far as Pine Bluff, that tracks not specifically over you all, but you are still under that tornado warning. Watson Chapel, this is just north of you all. Center Grove, again, we're watching the area that could have that potential rotation very close to you all. That's going to be heading over 530 very shortly. If we can zoom in very closely, I want to point out some street names if we can, and then let's switch on over to that ro to that rotation or that velocity to indicate here. Alloway Road, we're looking at German Springs Road. Here's 104, Highway 104, uh, Wampler Spur. 
This is going to be right over you all. Again, this is focused on to Doylestown for the community. Here's Oakland Heights. Here's Whitehall. The city of both of those. Again, Sheridan Road, Goodman Ave. And that's going to be pushing farther north and east. Here's 530 along 530. So again, if you're traveling along 530, if you're used to that right from, from Little Rock to eventually Pine Bluff, uh, this is moving toward Whitehall as that continues to track farther east. Again, this is looking a little bit more linear as a whole in structure. We're not seeing something that's an eye popping area of circulation or rotation onto our velocity, but we're noticing that there are enough of those kinks here in that, that there could be that rotation produced. So that's why we still have that tornado warning uh, that continues here for Hardin, for Oakland Heights, Again, this is going to be heading over Doylestown. If not, we're going to get a new scan shortly to give an update with that. Let's go ahead and zoom back out just so you can kind of see. Again, when you notice, of course, not only on reflectivity, the very deep shades of red as well as pink, uh, but if we can switch back to rotation, once we start to see more of the bright red, the bright green, coming together, that's the area of concern. And again, what we need to notice is, yeah, Pat's doing a good job here of moving this back and then pushing it forward. So notice how a little bit farther back, let's say it was 520, 10 minutes ago, looking a bit straighter here, this line, now pushing it forward closer to 530. Now we're starting to see maybe a little bit indication of rotation there, a little bit better indication of rotation. That's right over top of Oakland Heights. This is going to be moving over 530 right now and then eventually making its way closer to Pastoria. I do think that this pathway with this will be closer to Pastoria as opposed to Pine Bluff right now. But either way, we want you to still be in your safe spot into Pine Bluff and into your safe place. Now they've issued a downstream severe thunderstorm warning, so uh, that's a little bit farther east. So they may or may not continue this tornado warning. Either way, it's still in effect for another 15 minutes until 545. As far as the timing with this, we're looking at Whitehall 535. That's in the next four minutes for Pastoria 539 for Cheryl 544. And it looks like for Wabasika 552. That's going to be heading your way. So again, the area of rotation just outside of 530. Let's go ahead and zoom in close to that. And I'm wondering if on correlation coefficient we're seeing, we can just briefly switch over to that. I doubt we are, but something to notice with that. Yeah. Lower around Harden, mm -hmm. but all in all, it does look to be high, which is which high values of obviously that are good for us. Right. When it's messier like this, if there was something that was a very easy to kind of pick out in all of this, uh, even as you uh, just looking at it at home, uh, then that would be more concerning. Now, when we look at things on radar, obviously radar is kind of like a flashlight, right? And so that beam, it's going to eventually, you know, make its way a little bit farther up. So when we talk about things higher up on the beam, it's going to be higher up uh, away from the surface. And so that could lead to a few problems in making it a little bit of a messier reading, but it's still something to be taken seriously because we can still see that rotation on that based off of it. So here's radar right now, a very heavy rain coming through, potentially some hail associated with the storm in addition, of course, to that rotation. Whitehall, you were under this at 530. Here's that if you're heading from samples down to that. Joel? for Izzard and Stone County. This is up, up in the northern part of the area here. That is okay. uh, just south of Melbourne. And it looks like they did end up canceling that warning for Pine Bluff. Am I not? Am I correct in that? So we still have that severe thunderstorm. Okay, it just expired. So let's go up to this one. Okay, so this is our only tornado warning now uh, across our area. 6.15 p.m. That is how long that tornado warning is. So Independence, Izzard, Sharp, and Stone Counties. I know we've been focusing a lot on what's been going on into central and southwest Arkansas. This is farther north. In fact, this is north of Batesville. We do want to focus on this because I assume, and Joel's the one who heard this alert, this is because it is radar indicated, the rotation. Is that correct, Joel? believe so so let's uh let me play that is yeah it's capable of producing radar indicated rotation there uh just south of gid it looks like yes okay so here's highway 69 here's gid 
Here's Zion. Here's Sydney. Here's evening shade. Again, that tornado warning that is until 615 PM. It is 533 Pine Bluff Whitehall. The tornado warning for you all that was expired uh, or rather canceled. Uh, and so we're watching this tornado warning right now. So that rotation had weakened enough that we weren't seeing that imminent threat. Independence, Izzard, Sharp, and Stone Counties. This includes you all. So, some areas to point out. Mount Pleasant High School, 537 will be the arrival time of this storm. Sydney, 544. Evening Shade, 548. Cave City, 550. And Dr. Tom's Park, 552. So there's Cushman right here. You are not under that tornado warning, but the storm is north of you all over in to get along Highway 69. Here's Hickory Valley, and this is going to continue to push farther north and east. Mountain View, I know we have a lot of viewers over in Mountain View. Uh, this is farther east of you all. So Mountain View might be a good reference point for you to figure out where, of course, this area of rotation is. You were not under that warning and the storm is tracking farther north and east. So uh, you should be good to go, Mountain View, uh, at least right now. Of course, this is going to continue to push farther north and east, actually toward evening shade into portions of northeast Arkansas. So now it's the time frame of this line that we're really starting to th see things pick up over northeast and east Arkansas with these storms. We still have storms out here into central and southwest Arkansas, but our only tornado worn storm currently uh, that covers our area is just outside of evening shade for parts of Izzard County here and north of Cushman. That's going to eventually making its way into evening shade. If we can switch Pat back to our velocity and let's zoom in if we're seeing anything different with this. Again, this has been radar indicated rotation. You're saying it's far away from getting it. Um, I'm going to switch to Memphis real quick. Right. See what getting Memphis doesn't give us a better picture, I don't think. Yeah, it's a little bit harder. Let, let's switch back to uh, reflectivity. And I do want to zoom out a little bit. Let, let's zoom out a lot, actually, not even a little. Let's zoom out a lot just so people can see it in reference where we are. Again, east of Mountain View north of Batesville. We have one of our radar down into Little Rock. We have another radar in Fort Smith, and then we have another radar over into Memphis or Millington, really. And, and so notice how that radar is a bit far away from this storm. Both of those radars are. Here's Little Rock and here's Memphis. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit hard to get a reading on this, but National Weather Service has seen enough of that rotation. We're still seeing it as well to warrant that tornado warning. Again, if you are in the Little Rock Metro, uh, we do have some rain, some thunderstorms heading our way, some severe thunderstorms that are a little bit farther south that are going to be heading towards Stuttgart. Let's zoom in uh, one more time into this warning, of course, that is north of Batesville and outside of Mountain View. Again, Mountain View, or you are not in the path of this storm. In fact, this storm is heading away from you all, but it is a, a strong storm and it does have a tornado warning on it. Can we query that tornado warning really quickly just so we can give people a an update on what that is. That is until 6 15 p.m. Again, for parts of Independence, Izzard, Sharp, and Stone County. So we do, of course, cover some of this area in our viewing area, and that's why we are focusing on this storm currently, since we do, of course, have viewers and people out here, and this is could be potentially a dangerous storm. Right now, though, for what we're seeing, it's been difficult as far as what we're getting on radar because both of those radar sites are a little bit far away from that. Pat, are you getting any reports associated with that? I know Pat and Joel are both monitoring uh, this, of course. Joel's probably the only one. I'm, I keep getting kicked out of chat, so Joel probably is the only one with it. Was uh, earlier when they issued the tornado warning for Izzard County. So right now, I mean, that's the only one out there. 7,000 feet off the ground at the lowest level at that point. So yeah, it's way up there. Right, exactly. Just like if you think about it with a, with a flashlight, it's, it's just going to keep slanting upward and that's harder to see that. So still that tornado warning that we are watching very closely here. Uh, you can see that latest uh, with the radar indicating we still have very heavy rainfall with that, but that's going to continue to track farther north and east away from Mountain Home and toward evening shade. If there is a tornado, or at least that storm capable of producing a tornado. The area of concern is going to be closer to GID right now. 
and then eventually making its way over onto 167 farther north. Now we're getting closer to northeast Arkansas as far as this storm is concerned. Let's switch back to reflectivity because again, this is a messy view currently and let's zoom back out. I do want to give an update here. Of course, it is 539. If you typically tune in to Fox 16 at 530, we are obviously doing storm coverage. If you are watching on CARE K4 News, we are doing storm coverage. So we are on both platforms right now. This is Arkansas Storm Team. This is why we do that. We do have Laura Monteverdi and Bob Clausen on standby here. With We will get those updates, of course, with damage as well, too. There's a lot of damage to talk about and updates associated with that. We still want to talk about, of course, our active warnings that are out there currently. So Pine Bluff, we did have that tornado warning over you all. It is now a severe thunderstorm morning, so still watching that very closely. We have a very small polygon that's into far southwest Arkansas. That is that severe thunderstorm morning closer to Texarkana. Uh, but our radar, if you've been following us along this whole time, it's not as intense as what it was a lot earlier. Again, we really reached the height and the peak of those strongest storms during those afternoon hours. Now we still have that unstable environment. We still have those strong to severe thunderstorms that are out there currently as of 540, uh, but this is still on the track and the path uh, to start to push farther east by this evening, eventually out of Arkansas. So by late tonight, we will not have any storms. Uh, in fact, it probably won't even be that late tonight that we won't have any storms, but I know we still have power outages out there and uh, we will at least have uh, drier conditions heading the weekend, but it's still going to be very breezy, still very windy. Pine Bluff, again, you still have that severe thunderstorm warning. Let's zoom back into that tornado warning just because that is still active, uh, albeit harder to read. If, Pat, you want to zoom into that tornado warning, that does include parts of Stone and Izzard County. Again, this is heading away from Mountain View heading toward evening shade. Gid, you are now on the western edge of this. It is heading towards Sydney though. And let's go ahead and get a switch on back to rotation so we can see if there's been any changes with that. This tornado warning until 615, it is 541 right now. Again, still not able to see a whole lot with that. I do want uh, to include Joel in this, and I, I'll probably just go ahead and toss on over to you, Joel, real quickly. Uh, so you can tell me if you've been hearing any reports, anything confirmed with this tornado warning. I haven't seen anything, and we've got to remember, unfortunately, this uh, the one that we're tracking right now up here in Izzard County. It's crossing over into Sharp County. It's in an area that we don't have a lot of good data, and, that, and that's unfortunate for the folks up that way because, uh, you know, of course, we want to be able to give you accurate information and it's tough when we're not able to get good data. You can uh, see that rotation is going to be right in here. We're going to zoom in a little closer here and uh, look that rotations near the Needmore area. It's about to cross over into Sharp County, which is outside of the Fox 16 KRK coverage area. But for right now, still a tornado warning continues for Southeastern Izzard County and crossing over into southwestern Sharp County near Sydney, uh, just west of Maxville, and uh, that will continue working its way north and east toward Evening Shade and Poughkeepsie as well as Maxville. So right now that is uh, basically right on Highway 58 crossing over into Sharp County now. And like I said, uh, it's outside of our area, but you may want to go ahead, phone a friend, call and let your friends know up around Evening Shade that there is a storm that's had some rotation and uh, you know, I will note one thing. There's the edge of the tornado warning. The rotation would be right there. I believe they will probably, uh, and this has shown some signs of weakening. I'm going to double check on that when I say that. I want to make sure that this has weakened a little bit. Let's go back in time. So we're looking at about when this first when this warning was issued near uh, Guion. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, Pat. You can correct me there, Guion. Gid, that's where that rotation was. G U I O N. What is that? It's oh, right there. Gion. Gion. Okay. Anyway, that's tracked northeast. It has weakened some as it's tracked up towards towards Sydney. We like that, but we do have to remind you. Look, we've got other than that one tornado warning for Izzard County, which will likely. Um, and I'm waiting for an answer in chat where we're trying to find out if this will be extended over into Sharp County. But right now, you know, this morning we talked about how 
there's not going to be a lot of storms, but the storms we see can be strong. And that's what we've seen so far. If you look at the map right now, there's only, you know, really just a few, a handful of storms, but these storms can be, you know, if you look at them on radar, you wouldn't think they were all that strong until you really dive down into the velocity. And this is the one storm right now that looks the strongest in our coverage area. It was one that prompted a tornado warning over eastern Grant, western Jefferson County. This is going to be moving up toward Gethsemane. And look, we are uh, seeing this move into an area where we are far more conducive for strong tornadoes. And I hope we can dodge a bullet from here on out, but I can't ignore the fact that right now that storm in Jefferson County right there, it is moving into an area where we are in a level five, a rare level five risk for severe storms. So we really need to watch these storms as they continue moving eastward. And Carmen, we're also talking about, you know, southern Arkansas there. We've haven't seen really a whole lot of action down here. That means this atmosphere has not been turned over. We still have a cell down here into parts of northwestern Lafayette County there that just came out of Miller County. That's still in the western part of the state there. Uh, I'm going to look at that from the Shreveport. Let's look at Shreveport velocity. It's kind of tough, uh, but it is a supercell storm there south of Hope. And as it moves east, it, it could strengthen. So, uh, you know, as much as we we've seen a lot happen today. And in a sense, it almost feels like this should be coming to an end soon, and I wish it was. But uh, southeast Arkansas, though, we haven't seen a whole lot yet, and those storms just haven't gotten to you yet. And your atmosphere is primed, so we've got to keep watching for you. Again, remember, we still have that tornado watch that is in effect that goes until uh, 8 p.m. And uh, I'm going to check here in just a moment to see if there's any talk as to whether they are going to extend that warning past eight o'clock or what. So uh, I'm working on trying to get that information for us right now, but do want to remind you though until eight o'clock and we still have a couple of hours on this watch. It is a tornado watch, a particularly dangerous situation. PDS tornado watch. These are only issued. I can't tell you the last time I had a PDS tornado watch on my watch. So just uh, that's how rare these can be. Uh, but that includes most of the state. Now, I do think that the risk has really come down for parts of the state here. Let me go back to the map and kind of draw a line as to where I think we are in the all clear. But I, I also hesitate to do that because uh, let's just look at dew points really quickly. Um, and again, that uh, tornado warning up in Izzard County, that rotation has moved over into Sharp County. You still have very humid air up here, even through Little Rock, up into north central Arkansas. So that said, you know, I think overall the risk is coming to an end. Little Rock and areas north and west of I-30, but we still have a few cells out there that just can't be ignored. And I'm going to go back one more time here. We're going to check on y'all up into Izzard County here. Uh, again, like I said earlier, this storm is moving uh, mostly east. It's moving over into uh, Sharp County, trying to get a look at this from the Memphis radar. It's hard to do it. Looking at it from the Little Rock radar, you got a better picture there. But is there is there rotation? Yes, still just south and west of the evening shade, uh, but it is moving into uh, the Jonesboro television market and we're going to just keep a In fact, they have just dropped the tornado warning for Izzard County. So uh, that said, and Carmen, I want to circle in with you. Is this the first time all e since noon? Is this the first time we've been without a tornado warning or did we go for a minute without no, it no, no, we've had straight? We've had tornado we had warnings. We've had at least one tornado warning uh, since a little bit afternoon up until now, 547. Yeah. Uh, so we still want to focus a little bit what, what the plan is here, uh, Joel, just so I'm communicating with you too in the studio. Uh, we're going to keep on this storm uh, that does include parts of Jefferson County until uh, at least 550. We do have Bob Clausen and Laura Monteverdi here who are going to give us some updates as far as damage, as far as what we've seen so far with these storms. And just so you all know, too, uh, we, of course, are in what would be our typical 530 newscast. We are the Arkansas Storm Team. We are streaming right now on Fox 16 as well as KRK 4 News. But we do want to continue to monitor these storms. Again, areas farther west, we're including northwest and west Arkansas. It is looking better for you all. And I, I guess I just jinxed it. Uh, we have a tornado warning. Actually, Joel jinxed that because he said it was the first time we didn't have a tornado warning. So 
All right, this was the storm we wanted to watch and we wanted to keep our eyes on. This is the strongest storm and that's where that tornado warning is. If we can go ahead and get that query on it. And that does include all timer. And that is headed towards Stuttgart. So Stuttgart, go ahead and prepare your safe place. Know where to go and be ready to go into it because here's this tornado warning until 615 for parts of Arkansas, Jefferson, Lone Oak and Prairie County. And this is going to continue to track farther north and east toward all timer at 552 Wabasika. 556 Walnut Grove School 556 as well. Goldman 609 is the time for you all. Stuttgart 614. Now Joel had mentioned this. Uh, the environment that's prime for these strongest storms is now uh, closer to south southeast Arkansas as well, where we've not seen a lot of that roll over. Still a very potent storm here uh, that we need to watch very closely. Just on reflectivity alone, looking at precipitation, right? This is going to be rain fall. Uh, we have very heavy rain here. If there's that area of rotation, let's go ahead and zoom in. This is northeast of Pine Bluff. So Pine Bluff, this is heading away from you all this storm, but it does include Wabasika. It does include Alzheimer. It does include Humphrey and it is headed towards Stuttgart. Cheryl, this is just outside of you all, but you are getting hammered with that rainfall currently. And uh, this is all along Highway 1. Uh, highway 31, pardon me, all timer. This is heading your way along 79 toward Wabasika and then eventually Humphrey. So the tornado warning here until 615. It is 550 right now. We've been dealing with tornado warnings multiple since a little bit afternoon some of which have produced tornadoes and damage across the state and then especially here into Little Rock as well as Central Arkansas. So that morning is going to continue again 615. It is 550 right now. Ellison, Blackwell Road, Alzheimer, Newton, Newtown, I should say. This is where if there is that area of rotation, it's right over here and we are seeing enough rotation or in National Weather Service is seeing enough rotation to indicate that warning. And this is by far the strongest storm that we are seeing across the state here and at least our area that we cover as far as the TV is concerned. So 79 Highway 79 up toward Highway 63 again Wabasika. This is going to be heading toward you. It does include Arkansas. Jefferson, Lone Oak and Prairie counties, the cities of Alzheimer. I want you in your safe spot. Humphreys, Wabasika as well until 615. Is there anything on correlation coefficient? I'm wondering, Pat, if we can go ahead and switch to that. And again, what this does correlation coefficient is if there is any sort of debris, it would show up on correlation coefficient. And when we switch back and, and Pat in this instance is switching back from radar uh, to correlation coefficient is to see if that lines up. If that lines up, then there's more likelihood that there could be some debris associated with it. And Pat, what are you thinking? I think, you know, where we see the lower values on yeah. the on the uh, CC uh, just north of Alzheimer. I think it's right. the into the inflow area and I just think it's just the absence of data yeah. more than more than debris at this point. Right, right. I, I would agree with that as well. And, and and so does Joel. So we so we are all in agreement with that either way. Still rotation that's indicated here. We don't have anything that's confirmed on the ground, but we still want you to take this seriously. We still want you in your safe space place here into Wabasika, into Alzheimer, into Ellison, although this is pushing a little bit farther north and east. I'm wondering if we can get a velocity reading as far as get a kind of a, a guesstimate and estimate, I, I should say, on how quickly uh, this is. Again, not seeing a whole lot of that tight rotation like what we saw earlier in the afternoon. Uh, that gate to gate shear is 65 miles per hour. So what that does is that takes uh, what's heading toward the radar and away from the radar. So we could be very well dealing with 60 mile per hour wind gusts in association with this storm, whether we end up seeing that tornado or not. So uh, this is going to and could possibly lead to more damage as well as power outages. This one just specifically over Alzheimer and Wabasika heading now uh, toward highway. It looks like 83 and then eventually making its way farther north and east toward Humphrey and then eventually towards Stuttgart. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can get some reference 
for where that warning is. And then we'll go ahead and put that track on where the area of rotation is and then heading towards Stuttgart. Uh, so as far as Goldman is concerned, 607 for Stuttgart, we're looking at 612. It is 553 right now. This tornado warning in effect until 615. That does include parts of Arkansas, Jefferson, Lone Oak and Prairie County. Now, Pine Bluff, you are now out of the way of this storm. The storm is actually heading away from you and tracking farther north and east towards Stuttgart. So now it's going to be places like Stuttgart that need to be ready here because that's the path and the direction that this is headed. Again, tornado warning until 615. That does include Alzheimer as well as Humphrey and Wabasika with that rotation. And we're watching that very closely. I do want to switch back to reflectivity. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so as well, so I can give a little bit better idea uh, of where the strongest of these storms are again and where they're really tapping into the most energy. Again, I, I do think Northwest and West Arkansas for the most part, uh, this is not as concerning for you all. In fact, I think that severe threat is coming to an end for you all. However, we still have storms that are riding along I-30 uh, that are going to be bringing in some more rain into Little Rock. We do not have an active warning over Little Rock, but we do have that tornado warning that is east of Pine Bluff and that is headed toward Stuttgart. So Joel had mentioned this earlier earlier southeast Arkansas you've really not had a whole lot of these severe thunderstorms roll through so there's still plenty of fuel to work with now we are getting later in the day getting closer to our sunset of course uh, so earlier in the day we had ample amount of fuel but we still have enough fuel to see this and we're starting to notice that a little bit of that hook structure with that storm that is headed towards Stuttgart and just outside of Pine Bluff for this tornado warn storm until 6 15 p.m. So that also includes Humphrey. Let's see, Pat switching it back over to our rotation. It's either there's either dust or something in there or there's nothing at all. Yeah, so you're it's, talking about what's between Alzheimer and Humphrey. Yeah, exactly right there. Yeah, yeah. Right up here. That's that surge right there, yeah. Yeah, so th so that's something that we need to watch. And that's of course I'm sure what National yeah, Weather just right Service there, Wabasika. Right over Wabasika. Yeah, so, so either way, we're still dealing with a very powerful updraft, which indicates we still have all of that heat, that fuel, that moisture to produce that updraft. And that in turn is obviously producing that severe weather. Wabasika, you still need to be in your safe place. Of course, your safe place, what we mean by that, away from windows, number one, put as much between you and outside as you possibly can. You don't want any debris coming through those windows or through those house, the house or apartment or wherever you are. Make sure that you protect your head if you are able to do so. Uh, so watching that very closely here again, tracking farther north and east uh, with this. Again, we still have this warning until 615. Stuttgart, uh, you are just outside where this polygon is, right? But we still want to watch the storm because it's still not looking very good. Humphrey 602, Stuttgart 612. And that's going to be moving your way really between, I'd say, 612 and 615 for the city of Stuttgart. Pat. Otter and Humphrey is reporting a rotating wall cloud now. Okay. Uh, so that's that's confirming that increased height of rotation at this point. Okay. Also, uh, I'm going to take you up to Carlisle Hazen area. There is increasing rotation now with the storm there. Uh, watching here around Carlisle and Hazen. Yeah. Uh, so right around Hazen, see that see the hook there. Yeah, south you of Hazen, can see so. that hook again, uh, just like a fish hook right here. So there is that little bit of rotation on the southwest side of Hazen now, or right. it actually should be over just to the east of Hazen actually now. Yeah, and that, that's probably moving along very close to I-40 here and then eventually making its way closer to Bisco. So we still have those two areas of rotation and that we do need to watch again for that hook that Pat had mentioned uh, over there closer to Hazen. And then I do want to move back down because you did say you said Humphrey. Yeah, uh, rotating wall cloud reported uh, okay. a spotter Humphrey. in Humphrey can see the rotating wall cloud. Okay. So they're kind of looking right back into the storm down Highway 63, I, I suppose. Okay, and we are seeing this on radar. Uh, in order for us uh, to know it's on the ground, uh, we typically need that debris signature where we're starting to see that lofted up or we need a train spotter on the ground. Uh, so it's very helpful that we have eyes on the ground right now uh, to see that rotation and to see that wall cloud, which again could end up producing that tornado. So spotters over in Humphrey. Here's Long Bell Road. 
Here's Jetta Road. Here's Mulberry Grove. And there's Acorn Gill Road. Uh, the area of rotation, probably right along here. That spotter is still in Humphrey they're able to see that rotation and that wall cloud. That's probably moving right over top of them right now. Looks like it's heading towards Sending Loop and then eventually going to make its way farther north and east closer to Goldman. Stuttgart, again, here's this tornado warning. You're probably hearing sirens if they're going off because uh, this does include part of the city, the southwest portion of the city of Stuttgart, North Stuttgart. This is going to include you as well as far as the line of that pathway with that thunderstorm and that is capable of producing a tornado based off of what we're seeing on radar for that rotation in addition to of course the eyes on the ground which the spotter is indicating that there is a wall cloud and therefore some of that rotation that can confirm that uh, from the surface and from the ground. Here's Wabasika. Wabasika, this is going to be passing through and away from you at all very shortly. This is going to be heading along 63. There's Humphrey. Okay, so we have our storm chaser, Derek Smith, out here. And is he the one in Humphrey? Okay, so it, this is our storm chaser here, our Arkansas weather watchers, Derek Smith. He's down in Humphrey. He has his eyes on that. And you can see that lowering. There's that wall cloud. Houses there. Yeah, right over the houses, as, as Pat is mentioning. That's the area of focus we want to watch. Right over top of those houses. So if there's going to... Okay, okay. So this is, this is a video here from what he's seeing over from Humphrey. Uh, so you can see that lowering. You can see that rotating wall cloud. You could see uh, if there's end up being a wedge there, then that would be where it would form. Uh, so again, that's what we're looking at over into Humphrey. That's where our chaser is. Here's Humphrey. Here's along 63. There's Wabasika. Wabasika, this is now moving away from you all. But we do have that tornado warning until 6.15 p.m. All-timer, Humphrey, Wabasika, this all includes you. However, this is now pushing a little bit farther north and east away from you all. Arkansas, Jefferson, Lone Oak, and Prairie Counties, this includes you all, or at least parts of those counties. Humphrey, very heavy rainfall here. And this is going to kind of make its way farther north and east along 63 and then eventually up into Stuttgart. So let's go ahead and get another track on this. Goldman, you're under this as well. And Stuttgart, just outside of that. But I want to go ahead and include you in that path just in case here. Goldman, 609. Stuttgart Junior High, 613. Stuttgart, 614. Elmira, we're looking at 620. And again, we're watching the area of rotation right here. Let's switch back to velocity and let's zoom in pretty tight on this. We're still seeing that hook. Okay, and we're still seeing that level of rotation there too. South of 63, uh, this does include parts of Humphrey. There's the city of Humphrey. There's where our chaser was. That's where Derek was. And then that will... Well. Still seeing that rotating wall cloud. Okay, and, and I'm not sure. I know that was video. Are, do we have live stream at all of that chaser, or is it just video? I know my producer can tell me in my ear. Okay, so the live stream is down, but we at least saw the development and the rotation of that storm. That does confirm that. So right now, east of Humphrey, and then that's going to be making its way closer to Goldman, and then over on to 165. Here's 165. There's Elmira, and then I want to zoom out a little bit just so we can so show Stuttgart. There we go. So you can see that. So by far, the most potent storm currently is where that tornado warning is, and we have another at least 10 minutes on that. Let's switch back to reflectivity if we can. And then, yeah, it, it's still a very strong storm here. It, it's still, and we do have another tornado warning. Pat, you had mentioned that rotation closer to Hazen. And there we go. So we have two tornado warnings right now. Uh, we have the one that we have been mentioning over there closer to Humphrey headed towards Stuttgart. A new tornado warning. This just in until 6.30 p.m. Bisco, Brinkley, Cotton Plant, Deval, Pluff, you are all under this. And that's going to be heading toward Brinkley. This is kind of the same pathway. A lot of these storms have been taken that we've been really watching into Prairie County. Uh, this now including Woodruff as well as Monroe counties too. So Bisco, 609, it is 603 right now. 
Eden 618, Brinkley 624, Cotton Plant 626, Wheatley 630. So we need to watch this very closely for that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's touch base on this one that uh, does include Brinkley and then we'll visit Stuttgart again. So there's that hook that we're watching. Again, th this just outside of Bisco. Here's I-40, and this is going to be traveling east along I-40, basically your same pathway that you would from Little Rock over to Memphis. This is going to be the same thing over here. Bucks Landing, there's Plunkett's. Uh, this is what we're watching very closely along I-40. Can we switch to our velocity real quickly? Yeah, so Hallsville. That's where we're noticing where that is, if we are starting to see that. And you can see, yeah, that, that rotation did tighten up a little bit uh, over there. It's still not looking e extremely significant, but it is tightening, and that is indicating some of that strengthening where we could actually see some of that rotation that could produce a tornado. So tornado warning until 630. That does include Brinkley here, uh, and this is just a long I-40. Uh, I should Bisco and Brinkley, including both of you all, heading over Hallsville currently. So that's where that's going to be. And then that's going to track either along I-40 or really along a 70, Highway 70 for that. Either way, Bisco, I want you in your safe spot as well as Eden and Brinkley. Let's go ahead and switch back to uh, this tornado warned storm that's closer to Stuttgart, farther south, if we can zoom back out a little bit because uh, we do have two active warnings right now uh, we do uh, and this i don't like this as much uh it's just uh, it's just a better return of course of what we're seeing still showing that rotation over there closer to humphrey goldman and then eventually going to make its way towards stuttgart if we can zoom out just a hair so you all can see where stuttgart is essentially here's humphrey and here's Stuttgart. There's that tornado warning. Again, this one until 615. Still rather broad rotation, but we're at least able to see it a little bit better compared to the storm that we're watching over into Bisco and Brinkley with that tornado warning until 630. Is is that right, Pat? Uh, I believe it is uh, six, what, yeah, 615. Right, but as far as that rotation for what you're seeing, specifically focused on to Humphrey are you getting any sort of returns or reports or okay reports coming in here which is good news the we'll check the debris indication it's still got a little bit of, as it goes into the inflow the values mm -hmm. are lower but of course there's less stuff in there so you tend would get you would get the lower values uh, in the inflow area too so that those that inflow there along 343 Mm -hmm. uh, going up toward Goldman, just now east of uh, Humphrey. So 343, Scening Loop Road, Townsend Lane, those are those uh, areas in the inflow area right up into the updraft, which would be the mesocyclone, a possible tornado. Okay, and let's, let's zoom into some of these street names, okay. though, too, uh, because either way, we're still dealing with a very powerful updraft and a very powerful storm. So it looks like we have H. Black Road, we have Don Lloyd Road, Miller Lane, Shannon Lane, Sunshine Road, Randolph Lane. Uh, this is going to be heading your way. I want you in your safe spot. Let's go ahead and zoom a little bit farther north and then track a little bit farther east as well. Roth Prairie Road, this all includes you. Burkett Road, Tendall Dryer Road. Uh, this is going to move over Shannon Road. Uh, again, we do have that tornado warning until 615, the one we're focusing on right here. Uh, looks like we have Riga Road slash Road. Again, this outside of Stuttgart. Humphrey is the area that we have our chaser who noticed that wall cloud rotating wall cloud and we're still producing a, a rather strong thunderstorm with this. So we do have that tornado warning uh, that cell. If there's that hook again, it would be closer to right here south of Goldman now and farther west of 343. We've switched it back to velocity to indicate any of that rotation again between 343 and then 152 south of Goldman, technically south and west of Stuttgart. Let's go ahead and revisit that other storm closer to Bisco and Brinkley. I want to see if there's been any change with that because we do have two right there. Again, we're traveling essentially along I-40 right now. It looks like Brassfield as well as Dagmer. That's going to be heading toward you all and then eventually making its way into Brinkley and then maybe eventually into Wheatley there uh, east of us into Little Rock. So this tornado warning until 6.30 p.m. So we are watching two active tornado warnings. Pat, if you can zoom out just a little bit, I want to show both tornado warnings. 
just so you can see in comparison these cells right notice uh, the darker red and the very bright pink so we're getting a very strong radar return right now that is moving over the city of Stuttgart. So this tornado warning here that is just outside Stuttgart and that does include Humphrey until 615. The tornado warning that includes Bisco and Brinkley there east of us into Little Rock. In fact, east of Carlisle now along I-40 that one until 630. But you can see both of these indicating as somewhat of a supercell structure and could end up producing those tornadoes. So that's why we do have those two tornado warnings in effect. It is 609. We are still covering the severe weather that really started a little bit afternoon. Uh, these are very strong storms. We still have an unstable environment, uh, but a lot of that now pushing farther east. Here's the city of Little Rock. You can see that here. Uh, we had some rain move through, but we do not have an active warning over Little Rock, but we do have two active tornado warnings farther east. And a third one now, new one. And new now a third warning. one. Okay, so there's enough rotation, and, and you can see in comparing these cells, uh, this is the buffer one. Uh, this is the stronger one. And so what that means is there's enough rotation uh, that this is still posing an imminent threat. So a new tornado, tornado warning has been issued farther east. So Stuttgart, we've been warning you that this is heading your way. You are now under that tornado warning until 7 p.m. Uh, so this has been extended farther downstream and farther east. Hazen, this storm uh, that we are tracking that we also have a tornado warning on now east of you all. So Brinkley now heads up to you. You need to already be in your safe place, but you really need to be prepared for getting ready for that. Stuttgart, here's where we're watching again, really moving right over top of Stuttgart currently. Again, Elmira, this includes you, Duncan, Holly Grove and Stuttgart, what we've been mentioning for parts of Arkansas, Monroe, and Prairie County. So this is this tornado warning that's going to eventually make its way farther north and east. So as far as the track with this, let's go ahead and yell out some of these cities and these times. Elmira 618, Lookout 622, Preston Ferry 624, Holly Grove 630, St. Charles 632. Our R.CAM cam that you see right here, this is a shot of Brinkley right now. That is for this storm right here. So again, this is what's going to be heading toward Brinkley. And, and based off of what we're seeing with the R.CAM, cam, that is a low cloud deck here. You can see that and and I can't tell in the and you know the farther part, I guess, if, you, if you're looking at the screen, the way, farther away from the RDOT symbol uh, where some of that sunshine is coming through, but maybe if we're starting to see some of that rotation of that wall cloud, uh, that might be it. So I would imagine that this RDOT cam is actually looking west onto I-40 uh, over there into Brinkley. So that's what we're watching. Again, we want to watch this area right here. That's really starting to lower. Notice we still have plenty of trucks, plenty of cars on those roadways, and we do have that severe weather out there. Again, if you are uh, wanting to drive, uh, it's not going to be a good idea right now, at least for the next hour or so, especially into portions of East Arkansas as we continue to monitor the severe weather. So if you do not have to drive, I do not recommend it because you don't want to be caught in a tornado warning or tornado worn storm as to what we're seeing right now. Let's go ahead and switch on back to radar. Dot camera is about 10 miles away from uh, the updraft in that lower base. Okay. Okay, and, and still a very strong updraft with that. Again, this over Brassfield, and that's going to be heading toward Brinkley this morning until 630. But let's go ahead and track a little bit farther south. Uh, you can see Clarendon there. Again, uh, this is our stronger storm that we are noticing, at least based off of what we're getting in from radar. Right smack dab over Stuttgart. This tornado warning until 7 p.m. Let's zoom into Stuttgart. Getting some uh, golf ball or larger hail in Stuttgart right now. Okay, just just from the reflectivity of this alone, I would not be surprised if that is the case. Uh, so we're talking about damaging hail, right? Golf balls falling from the sky, that's not good. So cars, houses, um, 
maybe the only silver lining if you need a new roof golf ball size hail is something but other than that this is not a good scenario here uh, we're still seeing a little bit of that rotation but what we're noticing as far as that reflectivity uh, getting back on radar is uh, some very strong reflectivity and reading back now we're noticing look at white and very, very, very bright pink there, right smack dab over Stuttgart. So at the very least, we could be dealing with some hail. So again, a legend, once you start to see that very bright pink, uh, that is indicative of that. That's now moving a little bit farther east, at least of this out of the city, uh, but we're still getting that. Here's Highway 79. Again, if we're getting any sort of rotation, it'd probably be a little bit farther south of 165. And then this is going to continue to track farther north and east. Now, uh, Joel and Pat, I know that they're monitoring these reports as well. If you end up seeing any sort of reports of hail, uh, just let me know. If you raise a hand, I'll be able to see you uh, and we and I'll go ahead and toss it to you so that y'all can give updates with that. What Pat has done, though, right now, uh, he has switched it over to indication for hail and yeah, OK, the pass for that track coming out of Humphrey. At the very least, we talked about updrafts, right? And Pat had mentioned that very strong updraft is necessary to produce that hail. Eventually, uh, that hail is going to form and it's going to have nowhere else to go but down. Uh, it's going to come down, of course, w with our gravity. And uh, that could very well be the case over into Stuttgart. Either way, there's still enough rotation indicated on radar that we still have that tornado warning until 7 p.m. Now, I know we still have that tornado warning for Goldman and Humphrey, but this storm is now moving away from you all farther north and east. So that's going to continue to track that way. Let's go ahead, zoom out just a little bit. Let's go ahead and get a track because at the very least, I do want people to be prepared for severe weather, even in the same in the sense of hail, whether it's hail or tornado, we want you to be ready for this. Yes, this is moving at 70 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour. OK, so we've been monitoring these storms. They've been 50 to 60 miles per hour, now 70 miles per hour. So uh, that is speeding up. That is strengthening 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Even if we see that, uh, whether it, we have a tornado or not, that's going to lead to damage. Power outages, trees down. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some reports of that coming through closer to Stuttgart now. So for Duncan, we're looking at 631. For Hicksville, 642. For Marvel, 644. And for Rondo, we're looking at 651. Brinkley, uh, you still are under this tornado warning. We have two active tornado warnings. One over Stuttgart until 7 p.m. The other one that does include Brinkley until 6.30 p.m. So we are watching that as that continues to push farther north and east. Pat, if we can go ahead, are you hearing anything about the storm Brinkley? I do want to, I kind of want to ping pong back and forth between these storms, but it is the one over Stuttgart that does look more menacing to me. I don't see anything. It's just the, there's still no reports of tornado, which is still capable of producing the tornado there in Brinkley or just west of Brinkley. Okay. It looks like it's about to clear out of uh, Prairie County and be an exclusive northern Monroe, maybe southern Woodruff County storm. Uh, it's okay. nearly... Uh, nearly crossing uh, all the way out. Okay, let's go ahead and switch back to our velocity. Let's check that rotation one more time. Uh, this does, is a bit messy. It's a bit broad. Uh, let's switch back. Let's, uh, once you finish tracking through that, we'll go ahead and, and track farther south. And let's go back into our, what we would say, buffer storm. Uh, honestly, this, this, what's closer to Elmira uh, f yeah. looks more of a concern here. And then let's zoom out a little bit more and I do want to just touch base as to what's going on. Again, I'm only able to see what is being shown to me right now. Yeah, here we go. Okay, uh, so Stuttgart, this is now east of you all. It's tracking away from you all. It's going to continue to make its way into portions of east central Arkansas. And then Little Rock, uh, things are starting to wind down for us. OK, now we really need to focus on what's pushing farther east. So now it's areas like this, essentially from Brinkley and Bisco and uh, south of Searcy uh, down into southeast Arkansas that are dealing with their fair share of that severe weather. So we have two active tornado warnings currently. Uh, this is Arkansas Storm Team Storm coverage. We started this a little bit after noon. Uh, we are on KRK4 News right now, as well as Fox 16, and we will continue to be on both until the threat for these tornadoes and tornado warned storms uh, diminishes. So tornado warning until 630. That is uh, the one that is 
over Brinkley, I believe. No, let's see. Yes, for Brinkley and Bisco. Tornado warning until 7 p.m. for Almira, Duncan, Holly Grove, and Stuttgart. Let's go visit at that rotation over Almira one more time because that's the one that looks a little bit beefier here and capable of producing a tornado if that is the case. Either way, we're still getting very strong uh, readings back from our radar and reflectivity. So at the very least, we could be dealing with some large hail closer to Stuttgart or at least the components necessary for it. And what's Pat's done here, Almira, please be in your safe spot right now because that indicates uh, that rotation here based off of velocity either way. Uh, something to take seriously with that. Haven't heard any confirmation as of yet, uh, but that does look like the more impressive, more capable of producing tornadoes storm uh, based off of the two warnings that we are currently watching, but we still have those in effect. Again, it is 619, uh, the one farther north uh, for Bisco as well as Brinkley until 630. Joel. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead. We can swap out here uh, really quickly if you want to switch gears. Uh, let's uh, get, we're continuing to track two separate tornado warnings right now. One of these uh, not quite as strong as the storm farther south. This is a tornado warning now for Brinkley. Brinkley, we need you to be in your safe place. Let's talk about where those safe places are. Lowest floor of a site built home. You want to find a sturdy structure. Go to the middle of the lowest floor. Find a room that is surrounded by other rooms with no windows, wrap up in pillows, blankets, a mattress, whatever, and perhaps wear a helmet as well. As well. Now, right now, this storm coming toward Brinkley right now. Let's look at velocity really quickly and uh, get an idea as to how this is looking. This is broad rotation. Uh, not quite as strong as the one a little farther south. Let's take you down into Arkansas County. Uh, this tornado warning here still in effect. Uh, that circulation, that rotation just to the north of Elmira. So right around Elmira Highway, Arkansas Highway 130. We need you in your safe place here as well. Crockett's Bluff probably staying south and east of Casco, uh, but kind of moving to the east, north and east. So Casco, Cro Crockett's Bluff, find your safe place. Sturdy structure away from windows, middle of the lowest floor. Find a room with no windows. I know a lot of people go to the bathroom, but if that bathroom has a window that faces the outside, that's not a safe place. That, of course, that window can be dangerous. You got glass. It could, uh, you know, be an, an issue there. So uh, wrap up blankets, pillows, that type of situation. This rotation pretty tight compared to the one a little farther north. I do want to look at uh, correlation coefficient. Let's look at the debris signature or let's see if there is a debris signature. I don't see that and this is a stout looking storm likely has large hail falling here along Arkansas 146 between Stuttgart and Casco. So for that reason and the fact that we are in such an environment that's capable of producing large tornadoes, you know, the fact that this hasn't so far, we are g glad to see it. But at the same time, we need to be in our safe place. Casco Crockett's Bluff Highway 153 here. That's where that circulation is now just to the north and east of Elmira. But I would imagine some folks here that live along 153 probably still consider themselves part of the Elmira community. So if you live in this area here, especially north, uh, right along 153, 130, and then back to the east as you approach the White River at Crockett's Bluff, you need to be in that safe place. Lowest floor, away from windows, and uh, I wouldn't be shocked if there is uh, some pretty big hail there. Uh, you know, moved through Stuttgart, this storm did, and it's continuing to work its way eastward, so probably going to be dealing with some hail there. But to recap, and if you want to zoom out a little bit, we can show both of these tornado warnings that are in effect right now. This one in particular for northern Arkansas County. This is going to be crossing over the White River here soon near Casco and Crockett's Bluff and eventually work its way over into southern Monroe County. In northern Monroe County, there is a separate cell that we were just talking about. And while right now it's not as impressive as the one that's a little farther south, closer to Elmira, this one is moving toward Brinkley and it's moving right along Interstate 40 or just north. So you got a lot of folks who are driving along there. You may want to give them a call and say, hey, there's a storm near Brinkley. You might just might want to pull off somewhere, maybe for city. Might, if they're heading westbound or if, you might, if they're heading eastbound, you might have them just pull off uh, and just avoid that storm right there near Brinkley. Let's put a track on 
Uh, actually, l Carmen, let's go a little farther south and uh, or Pat, I guess you're doing this. I'm not sure who's behind the radar here, but uh, that storm right here near Casco. Let's put a track on that as it goes here from north of Almira back over here toward Ragtown. Uh, that's moving to the east. How, uh, about how fast is that moving now? 70 now. So yeah, as these storms, as those uh, the upper level dynamics kick in, those storms are going to race a little bit faster here. So Casco, Preston Ferry, Crockett's Bluff. Uh, we're going to continue to get this track here. So Casco, Preston Ferry, Crockett's Bluff between now and 630. So within the next seven, eight minutes. Then from there, Lawrenceville, 632, Holly Grove, 633, Ragtown, BB Junction, Palmer, Postel, Hicksville, and eventually that'll take it over into Lee County, Arkansas, which is over part of the Memphis uh, television market. But we're going to keep our eye on this. Car uh, Pat, Carmel, let's zoom in a little closer here. This does look like we have a bounded weak echo reg region here just north of Elmira. That's where you have the rain wrapped around the rotation here. So you see how you can see there's green surrounded by orange and red. That's what we call a bounded weak echo region. That's where you sometimes have such strong rotation that it wraps rain around it. Let's pull up velocity real quick and see how that looks. That strengthened a little bit right there along Arkansas 153. There's 33 right there that runs south of Casco. So here's Elmira back in this general area. Holdridge, Elmira, that's going to be moving through the Crockett's Bluff area. So let's talk about where your safe place is. Once again, Crockett's Bluff. Let's take this a little more seriously now. Uh, I know it hasn't really been all that it's been kind of coming and going in intensity. Let's treat this a little bit more seriously now as this may be trying to strengthen a little bit. Find a sturdy structure, not a mobile home. Mobile homes can be very dangerous in this type of event. Uh, you want to uh, avoid being in a car or a truck or a mobile home. Find that lowest floor of your home, an interior room, a room that is surrounded by other rooms. And if your bathroom has a window, it's not a safe place. That rotation right there is uh, south of Casco. That's Highway 33. This is Highway 153, and that's probably going to be moving due east. So this is the White River right here. There's Crockett's Bluff that's going to track to the east there. So again, let's just stay in our lower, our uh, safe place, lowest floor, away from windows, cover up in blankets, pillows, whatever you got to do. Perhaps put on a helmet, protect yourself just in case this were to touch down very briefly, uh, you know, this type of setup really is more favorable for storms that can stay on the ground for long periods of time. Like we had the one Little Rock earlier. Uh, this one here, it's in an environment that's much more conducive for that to happen. But uh, so far, we've been in good shape. But uh, still, rotation is right there to the south of Casco. I'm going to step over here so you can read. This is a tornado warning still for Arkansas County. It also includes far southern Monroe County here and even that southeast corner of Prairie County. But honestly, Prairie County, the southeast part of the county, no longer really at risk. So I want to zoom out just a little bit more. And can we look at rain mode on this? I want to see how this is looking. You can see it's got a hook. The hook is there. There's Elmira. It's now northeast of Elmira. It's going to be moving toward Lawrenceville. You can see how this is taking more of an east northeast direction. So this will eventually make its way over toward Lawrenceville south of Holly Grove. Holly Grove, you're going to have some big hail. Look at that near Lookout south and east of Lookout. All of that lavender color there, that's large hail and that's going to keep tracking toward the east, eventually making its way over into Phillips County. But until then, we've got to watch that hook right there. Let's zoom in a little closer and see how velocity looks at this point um, and see if it's it's still there. It's still fairly tight. It has kind of looked a little bit bullish at times, but uh, you know, let's let's treat this very seriously. Lawrenceville, Deep Elm, let's put a track on that once again and get some town names up here as this crosses over here into Monroe County. So right now that is near Crockett's Bluff. It's going to keep tracking east. Crockett's Bluff right now or within the next about three minutes. Lawrenceville, and when I say three minutes, by the way, that doesn't mean wait three minutes and go get in your safe place. That means it could be on your doorstep in three minutes, so take shelter now. Deep Elm, Ragtown, Pine City, Palmer, and Turner, all of that between now and 640. So uh, in the next 20 minutes, all these areas may be affected. Postel, Turner School, Hicksville, and then Marvel back into Phillips County. So 
keeping a close eye on that. Carmen, I do want to zoom out a little bit and uh, or Pat, uh, we can look at both of these at the same time. Again, this one up here, maybe zoom in on Brinkley just to make sure it doesn't look that impressive. I think the southern storm may be choking it off a little bit. Yeah, it's it, if anything, though, it is moving right along I-40 and I would imagine, you know, even though when you look at this on radar, it doesn't look as impressive as a storm farther south. I would imagine anyone driving on I-40 right now is probably really concerned about it because it's probably a really nasty looking storm in person. Yeah, let's see if we can get that Brinkley camera. Also, there may be some cameras that look from Forest City and this area, I believe uh, you might also be able to find a shot there. Juliana working behind the scenes here to get a get us a live view of what's actually happening up here into parts of northern Monroe County over into uh, St. Francis County. Of course, that's actually now moving over into St. Francis County. So quite honestly, uh, there's a live look there. You can see uh, quite a bit of turbulence in those clouds. Honestly, this is at Highway 49 and Highway 70 just on the south side of Brinkley and uh, you can see there just some nasty looking clouds, but I think that rotation there if we can switch over to velocity real quick just to make sure how that looks. Yeah, there's rotation, but it's not all that tight and it's crossing over into St. Francis County, which is part of the Memphis uh, television market. So we will hand that responsibility off to them. If you have family and friends in uh, St. Francis County, just let them know uh, that that's heading into St. Francis County, but it has weakened a little bit as it's come out of Monroe County. I do want to take us a little farther south now once again to this storm uh, in Arkansas County. Still a tornado worn storm. And before we forget about it, Pat, we need to reset. And I also want us to look at storms down into southwest Arkansas. Those are all in Calhoun. Picking we'll up a, a little bit more. So let's get another track on this. First, let's look at velocity and see how that looks. OK. Still, it's maybe broadened a little bit. That rotation is near Crockett's Bluff. They've adjusted that tornado warning pat. Uh, it looks like that's, uh, have they, did they trim just the southeast part of it? Because it looks like it's got more of an easterly component to it, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe they did. It is moving, uh, moving, but they're saying moving northeast at, uh, you know, 70 still, but it's been honestly, more east. It looks like it's moving it looks due more east, just about. Go back here. Eh, yeah, it's east northeast. North. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so there it goes. So it's kind of heading back toward Ragtown. Let's hope this doesn't drop. It got that rotation and pat it. I would almost you might want to move that a little bit east because it looks like it may already be across the White River there. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Deep Elm, Ragtown, Pine City, Palmer, Postel, Turner, and Turner School between now and about 642. Uh, Pat, I don't want to neglect this storm. I want to make sure we have all our bases covered. But Pat, let's go down really quickly and get a look at this storm. These storms down here into South Central Arkansas. Uh, we talked about these storms down into Southwest Arkansas. They're still moving into that environment as well. And there is a nasty storm here capable of producing probably quarter size or issuing a tornado warning. Soon. They will be issuing a tornado warning soon here for Washita County here very soon. So we're going to be watching this area here. Let's while we wait on that tornado, let's actually look at velocity real quick while we're here, because if we know that there's a tornado warning coming. Yeah, right there. There's your rotation here west of Camden. This is Highway 278 in Washita County. That's going to be moving over Camden right now. There is rotation tornado warning soon to come for Camden. Camden that'll eventually work its way toward East Camden, of course, and eventually over the Washita River into Calhoun County. We're going to continue to keep a close watch on this particular storm. Uh, just waiting on that tornado warning. It looks like it's just been issued. So brand new tornado warning now issued for Washita County. That includes areas here along 278 Camden and then along uh, Highway 79 around Bearden included in this. Uh, but that rotation is right on seven, uh, 278 to the west of Camden. And uh, right now, if we uh, if we could get a track on that, that's going to take it into Calhoun County here very soon uh, as well. So here we go. The rotation is going to be right in there, closing in on Camden. Now Camden, that'll be on your doorstep in the next five to 10 minutes. This says 640, but parts of the west side of town will it'll get to you first. Kent. 642 Warner at 644 Harmony Grove High School East Camden Shoemaker Eagle Mills all of those locations between now and 650 and then it continues Millville 
of course, it'll pass through the Arkansas Fire Academy, that area there, Millville Bearden, Bearden Middle School. I will say I think this will probably stay mostly south of Bearden, but still. We're going to keep a close, close watch on this particular storm here as this is an, an, an environment. It has direct access to Gulf moisture. It has all the upper level dynamics it needs right now. So we got to watch all these storms here because they are certainly going to be potent, uh, likely producing some large hail even just to the north and west of town, perhaps uh, with that particular thunderstorm. Let's look at let's look at velocity once again and see how that's shaping up velocity. It's it, it, what's that? into town now. Yeah, it's moving into Camden now. So as we mentioned, you know, that list showed 641 for Camden. It's already moving into the west side of Camden right now. Uh, let's look at debris mode real quickly just to see mm. what we've got. A big mess of data that does not tell me right now that we have a tornado on the ground. But here's the thing, Camden, you know, we're not going to know it's on the ground until it's already on the ground. So let's treat this as if, uh, you know, a tornado is trying to develop overhead. It may try to. It may not actually touch down until it gets past you, Camden, but it's a little close for comfort, right? So we're going to keep a close watch on this again to remind you this is a tornado warning right now that is in effect for uh, Washita County as well as Calhoun County, and this warning goes until 7 p.m. The time right now, 634. You're watching Arkansas Storm Team uh, severe weather coverage right now. We've got Pat Walker here with us, along with uh, Chief Meteorologist Carmen Rose. I'm Meteorologist Joel Young. This rotation is closing in on Camden right now. Uh, and it'll eventually continue to move off toward the east northeast. You can see that uh, there is some stout wind with it, some, you know, some rotation. Uh, but so far, this is this is still a fairly young storm. I mean, this is just really getting its act together. It's the first time this one has prompted a tornado warning. Let's zoom out just a little bit. I don't want to neglect our friends up in Monroe County here. Uh, there is still a tornado warning there uh, that is uh, still affecting areas uh, such as uh, Crockett's Bluff. It's actually crossed over the White River now and uh, still has a nasty hook on it as, a, as it approaches Ragtown and Pine City. Pine City getting a lot of hail right now. So this tornado warning includes Monroe County. The National Weather Service in Memphis has issued a new tornado warning now for northern Phillips and southern Lee County, or really most of Lee County. That one there uh, for for Lee, Phillips, St. Francis, and then Tunica County over in Mississippi, that will go until 715. And by the way, the fact that they've already issued a tornado warning over into Mississippi for this storm, that tells you how fast it's moving. And uh, yeah, that's that's a fast moving storm. And you know, those upper upper level dynamics are really kicking in now, causing these storms to move a little bit faster. Uh, the faster they get out of here, the better, but also they could do some damage in the process. So that rotation now, it's across the river from Crockett's Bluff. So it's right here in that wildlife refuge. It's kind of taking it up toward Ragtown and Postel. So we're going to keep a close eye on this here for you in Monroe County. And by the way, I don't want to forget about our friends down in Washita County. There's a list of those tracks. Carmen, do you have any new information? I do, yeah, and I know what we're going to focus, of course, on what you're focusing on right now since we have the two warnings. Just so people know, Camden, we know that the sirens are going off. Those have been activated, and that's because we do have that tornado warning. So I'll keep up that Camden storm here on 2 Max. 2 Max 1 will focus on that other tornado warning that has been extended off into Mississippi. But just so you know, Camden, we know the sirens are going off. It's because there is that area of rotation for that tornado warning until seven o'clock. Joel. And uh, again, we, we're going to go back to that storm here in just a few moments. This storm here in Monroe County, it'll soon get out into Phillips County and then from there it'll go on into the Memphis television market. But right now we want you in your safe place here in Monroe County. Let's go over those locations once again as far as where uh, where your safe place is, where you should be. You want to find a sturdy structure. Mobile home is not where you want to be in this situation. You want to find the middle of the lowest floor and you want to be in a room that is surrounded by other rooms. No windows. If your bathroom has glass, I've got a bathroom that's in my hallway. It's surrounded by other rooms, but there's a glass panel right above the door there in that bathroom. And I'm like, no, that's not my safe place because I don't want glass flying around, right? So there it is right there. That storm moving toward the east northeast and uh, that let's look at velocity real quickly once again on that near Lawrenceville in eh, that is we're, we're getting some colors here that indicate some strong 
it, we certainly have rotation and uh, you know that's it's kind of tough to get good data when you're halfway between radar sites but right there uh, south and west of Ragtown really right along uh, well here's uh, US Highway 49 this right here is Highway 1 between Marvel and St. Charles this right here is uh, where that tornado could possibly be if there is one and uh, you know the National Weather Service in Memphis already issuing a tornado warning well in advance of it so if it hasn't produced one yet it very well might because it's moving into an environment that is certainly conducive for that. Uh, let's look at uh, our correlation coefficient, which is the way we look at debris. I just want to make sure. Do we have a, is that, what are we looking at there near Ragtown? Let's go back to velocity there. Mm, we might have a tornado. Uh, is that, can we go back and see how that's evolved just to see if that's, that could be a tornado on the ground near Ragtown in Monroe County, south and east of Deep Elm. What's that, Pat? Around Lawrenceville, it's really muddied, and then you get out yeah. here just west of Ragtown. Yeah, I can make that argument. Ragtown, let's be in our safe place near New Cut Road, McCaslin Lane. I wouldn't say it's a very well-pronounced debris signature, but debris is debris and if it's in the air and we're seeing it on radar that means we got a tornado out there so we need to make sure that we are in our safe place mccaslin lane new cut road this is monroe county if you're just tuning in you're watching arkansas storm team coverage here along with pat walker uh carmen rose here and uh, myself we're tracking this here over southern monroe county new cut road mccaslin lane be in your safe place lowest floor away from windows um, we're going to keep a close eye on this storm. Carmen, I know you're watching that storm down in, um, down in Camden. Make sure if, if you see it strengthening, please let me know. We want to make sure that we have all of our bases covered. We haven't forgotten about you down in Washita County. What is that looking like? Do we want to take a visit real quick? Sure. Yeah, and we can pull up Max too, just so you can see too. I know I know we have multiple warnings out here. Of course, Camden still holding on to, of course, that rotation. Uh, you can see it right over top of Camden. Again, it's it's not the best reading here, uh, but Joel, of course, is circling that with that tornado warning until seven o'clock. Again, we know that the sirens have been activated. I've not I've been monitoring it. I've not seen it. I will interrupt you, of course, if we yeah, see something. Please do. More so. uh, I'm going to go back to the Monroe County storm mm -hmm. here because that is the strongest at the moment. It'll eventually move out into the Memphis television market here very soon. Ragtown Pine City. Pine City is just getting big hail. That lavender core right there along Highway 86 there where it comes out at 49. Likely some big hail. If you have family and friends driving down this road, I would let them know maybe uh, maybe pull off and not try to drive through that storm right there because that's quite the hail core. Did they cancel the tornado warning for Monroe County? Query. What's that? I took it off oh, the you query. Took it off so you can, okay, gotcha. I was yeah. about to say, did that get canceled? Because no. I didn't think it looked like it needed to be canceled. Uh, but yeah, so that rotation still here in Monroe County here very soon. It'll be over here into Phillips County. Uh, if you have family and friends driving along US Highway 49 south of where it crosses over 79, I would say hold off. Or if you have family or friends driving down 49 west of Helena, West Helena, maybe hold off before you get to Marvel. That's going to probably move right over Marvel here very shortly. So Postel areas just right around there over here to Marvel and eventually that goes over into the Memphis television market. So we'll just keep a close eye on it here until then. Uh, and again, right now, let's talk about, uh, let's put some town. Let's once again get another track on this, Pat, uh, as that moves off toward the east. I know this is moving out of our area here very soon. We're going to bear, bear with this, uh, but that's going to keep moving east. Palmer Postel just inside uh, Phillips County at 645. So here in the next few minutes, this is going to be in Phillips County, Hicksville 647. And you can see this keeps going over into Lee County. A lot of these locations here over northern Phillips and southern Lee County. Uh, so again, that's the Memphis television market. But if you know anybody in that area, give them a call. Don't just assume that they know. Don't just assume that they've been weather aware like you have, perhaps. Uh, let's make sure everyone is taken care of here. Uh, we know what this day has been capable of. We've seen tornadoes. We've seen injuries today. Let's hope this is almost over. Let's hope it's almost over. That storm soon to get out of our area, but for the time being, it's still over southeastern Monroe County, and it's soon about to cross over into Phillips County there, just to the south and west, or west-southwest, of uh, Marvel. 
Uh, once again, we have two active tornado warnings. Let's zoom out and regroup just a little bit. Let's go back to the statewide view and uh, let's recap. We've got in our coverage area two tornado warnings. We have one here near Camden. Carmen, how's that looking? Still showing about the same amount of rotation there. Again, we still have uh, rain and obviously trees down there. It's going to be a little bit harder to see that. But of course, if we are noticing that it is now east of Camden, if we're starting to see that area rotation, it's just outside the city of Camden. That tornado warning still in effect here until seven o'clock. Haven't gotten any sort of confirmation of anything on the ground, but I haven't seen anything weakening with this storm either. Uh, so we're still keeping a very close eye on what's going on in Camden. That's going to continue to track farther northeast at 50 miles per hour. So you can see that tornado warning, including parts of Calhoun, Dallas and Washita counties uh, that may eventually be making its way closer to Fordyce, I'd say in the next 30 minutes or so. So we need to watch it not weakening, but not seeing anything confirmed or anything that is necessarily strengthening. Joel. Yeah, so it's just kind of holding its own at this point down here into parts of uh, Calhoun and Washita counties. This is kind of near the Camden area. We're going to be giving that storm probably way more attention here very soon. This tornado warning that's for southeastern Monroe County just about to cross over here into Phillips County. You got heavy hail there along Highway 49, more than likely just west of Marvel, right at the Phillips and uh, Monroe County line. Uh, so keeping a close watch on that storm. But like I said, they've already issued that tornado warning all the way over into Tunica County, Mississippi. So for that reason, we can tell it's moving fast. The faster it moves, the faster it gets out of here and the faster we can get some sleep tonight. Uh, but again, that is a tornado warning that continues for Monroe County until well the warning that we have popped up here that's the one for northern phillips southern lee county that's until 7 15. i believe we can actually probably start to switch gears i want to go back down to washita county and i do want to point out well first of all we got that storm that we were just talking about over camden that carmen was watching and is watching and we're all watching it closely here let's look at velocity on that i want to make sure that this is not tightened up. Carmen's watching it, of course, right now. It, as she said a moment ago, it hasn't really strengthened, but it hasn't weakened. So it's still under a tornado warning. And as the storm keeps moving northeast, it's still getting into an environment that will likely prompt a new warning eventually on down the road from Fordyce. Earlier, I mentioned this will probably stay south of Bearden. I still think that's the case, but if we switch over to the rain mode, Bearden, you're still going to get some heavy rain, maybe some large hail out of this. So Shoemaker up here toward Bearden and then up 79 up here toward Fordyce. Eventually that'll work its way toward you up toward Chambersville as well into northern Calhoun County. So this is kind of riding right along the um, Calhoun and Washita County line. So uh, right around East Camden. Camden, this has actually moved on from you. Thank goodness uh, that has moved on from you and it'll continue to work its way north and eastward. Let's get a look at, uh, you know, let's look at the debris mode of radar just to see how things are looking. I wouldn't necessarily consider that to be uh, that's you know what we're probably seeing here in that green here. That is probably the inconsistencies because you have hail in that storm. You have rain in the storm and when the radar looks at that, it sometimes gives you what looks to be debris. So uh, right there, just south of Shoemaker, south of Eagle Mills, probably some large hail. But right now we don't have what I would consider a tornadic debris signature. I hope we don't see another one of those for the rest of the day like we saw in Little Rock earlier. But for right now, let's hang in there. Calhoun County, you're still under that tornado warning that goes for uh, how long does that go until Carmen? Uh, I believe this one is until seven o'clock. Okay, uh, so there you go, seven o'clock. Just about 14 minutes left on that tornado warning there for uh, central northern Calhoun County. Washita County, this is really more so now north and east of Camden. So I know Kent, Warner, uh, a lot of these spots are still technically in the warning, but that thread is really shifting. It's kind of moving right up Highway 203 uh, there right along the Washita River. That'll keep moving north and eastward toward Chambersville here soon. Let's get another track on that storm here as this continues moving to the east. It's going to ride right along. Is that the Washita River that runs right in there or uh, this? whatever that river is uh, anyway. Uh, let me see, a wider view. 
it it's in that area. I think I think I think that area is a river there's that, a lot of rivers that, that, that can flow there. that converges into the Washita. Okay, well that general area right here near Bearden and maybe the Saline. Okay, yeah, that that would make sense there. Or uh, anyway, so that storm keeps moving off toward the north and east here. So right along this county line there, the river that forms a county line between Washita and Calhoun County. Uh, and that'll keep moving north and east toward Chambersville and Fordyce. Let's get some town names here. You got Bearden at 658. Well, probably the rotation stays mostly south of you. The hail will probably move overhead. Woodbury 702, Little Bay at 704, Thornton at 707, Big Hill at 709. Beach Grove at around 711 and then eventually it's over into parts of southeast Dallas County. So right now, by the way, southern Dallas County, you're under this tornado warning that goes until seven, but it does not include Sheridan. That said, by the way, let's go a little farther north. I saw a thunderstorm that was popping up over northern Dallas County, southern Grant County. I want to make sure and I think I said Sheridan earlier. That's not Sheridan's not in Dallas County. Sheridan is in uh, Grant County, but this storm here uh, has popped up. I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if that tries to uh, do a little something as it gets over toward Pine Bluff eventually, because we still have these ingredients in place, even though the, we've had storms that have moved through there. But right now, uh, that one is non-severe. This is the only one out there that is really uh, you know, tornado warned right now, and uh, it's still, it has a hook. Oh, it's absolutely a hook there. And let's look at velocity. And uh, I want to just get a, has that strengthened some? It, we're still looking on the edge of the Little Rock radar site. So let's see if we can look from Shreveport just to get an idea. I don't expect to see very much out of that one either. Uh, yeah, it's just messy data right here. It's just hard to tell, but County Road 406 east of East Camden. There's likely some hail up here near Shoemaker, the Washita, uh, Washita Road 240, uh, that area somewhere in that uh, general vicinity east of Eagle Mills, likely some large hail there, but you can certainly see there's a hook. The storm is rotating. But the thing is, the question is, is it bringing that rotation down to the ground? And so far, I haven't seen any evidence of that, but we're not letting our guard down. Tornado warning continues for another 11 minutes here for northeastern Washita County and parts of west, uh, west central and northwestern uh, Calhoun County. Dallas County, you're technically included in this on the south side of Dallas County. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if at some point here very shortly, this tornado warning gets extended up into uh, areas like Thornton and Chambersville. If this storm just kind of holds its own, like Carmen said earlier, it's not necessarily strengthening, but it's also not necessarily weakening either. So uh, right now that tornado warning, it continues until seven o'clock. So 10 more minutes, but I wouldn't be surprised if they issue a new tornado warning for that. Uh, other than that, let's zoom out. Let's get a reset again at 650. You're watching Arkansas Storm Team coverage. I'm here with Chief Meteorologist Carmen Rose, Pat Walker standing by here. I'm, uh, I'm Meteorologist Joel Young, and you've got that storm here over eastern Washita County that has just crossed over into Calhoun County that right now is the only tornado warned storm in the KRK and Fox 16 coverage area. There is a tornado warning back here that just crossed out of Monroe County, now into Phillips County. That's moving off toward the east and northeast up into Lee County. So that's in the Memphis television market now. So as I mentioned this morning, not a lot of storms, but the storms that we have are intense and certainly have the capability of producing a tornado. Uh, this one here crossing over the river here out of Camden, crossing over into Calhoun County right on that county line uh, still has you know just enough strength that could be producing some large hail maybe some damaging wind in some cases but it's a small storm in area it's got a hook let's look at velocity real quickly I it's what now less pronounced it's than less pronounced I don't see it as tight rotation it's just you know areas of yeah it's it's very bullish in terms of what kind of data we're getting out of it uh, I'd still be in my safe place Bearden south and west of Thornton Thornton technically not under that tornado warning and it's possible that the National Weather Service does not feel the need to add a new tornado warning farther downstream let's hope not uh, but that's something we're going to need to keep a close watch on uh, but again that is a tornado warning here that goes until seven o'clock we have about uh, looks like about seven more minutes on that one. Uh, any word uh, on Weather Service chat, whether they're going to let it expire? No, there's no, 
there's no word on that one. Um, they're getting. Eh, I think they'll probably say something in the next. Uh, uh, they they'll say probably say something, something about then? three or four or five minutes from now if they're going to do a plan on that. Gotcha. But here's your storm you mentioned earlier coming yeah. out of Dallas in the Southern Grant County. Uh, you know, it, it's. It looks like it might be trying to form a little bit of hook on the backside of it, Joel. Yeah, you know, and the thing is, we've seen on radar these. Even the showers, not necessarily the thunderstorms, but even the showers, all are trying to take on that kind of a kidney bean shape or that just super cellular shape. And that's just the fact that even the showers, not just the thunderstorms, even the showers are rotating. And uh, so, you know, whether they bring the rotation to the ground, that, that's what eventually makes it a tornado. But right now, uh, Millerville, just some heavy rain with that little cell that's moving through. Not even really a lot of thunder and lightning with it. I don't think we have any real thunder and lightning with it, do we? Lightning is turned on right now. Oh, it is. So yeah. we don't have that there. Let's look at the one down. I'm just curious. Let's look at the one down here into, all right, there's a lot more lightning with that one. And, and a lot of times you have a lot of lightning that picks up with a storm when it intensifies. Let's go back and just look at how the lightning has evolved with this storm, just as a reference as to uh, whether this, is, okay. So it picked up in lightning, it looks like, once that tornado warning was issued, as it passed over Camden, obviously there was still some thunder and lightning with it, but we have seen a uh, drop in the amount of lightning we've seen with this storm as it's approached Bearden. Right now it is right around Bearden, just south of Highway 79. It's going to keep moving northeast toward Chambersville and Fordyce. But as of 640 or 654 right now, uh, this is it is not strengthened. It has just held its own there. Let's look at velocity again. I just want to look and see what we've got here. It's it's not the most impressive rotation there. So I wouldn't necessarily expect immediately a new tornado warning to be issued. I wouldn't be shocked that if this strengthened some a little later on down the road. Uh, but right now, it looks like Camden that has moved off to the north and east of you. Fordyce, let's hope this doesn't strengthen before it gets to you. But Fordyce, this is going to be moving up your general direction, maybe staying just south of town, closer to Chambersville. And eventually it works its way up into Cleveland County, up closer to Kingsland and Mount Elba. So we likely have some hail with it. I do want to uh, zoom out and can we switch? Are we on? Uh, I want to go back to Carmen, your computer. You've got temperatures up there. I just want to give folks back home uh, a look at the map right now where I mentioned earlier today we would have few storms and look how little thunderstorm activity we actually have. But all of these storms are capable of rotating and producing tornadoes and that's why I said you know when you look at radar don't be deceived just because there aren't that many storms out there the ones that are out there can be strong and we've seen that already southeast Arkansas those temperatures are in the low 80s you can see we are seeing things really calm down north and west of I-30 north and west of uh, 67 uh, but right here, these are the storms here that we're going to be watching very closely. This one here in Grant County, not severe, uh, but this one down here right along the Washita and uh, Calhoun County line. It is a tornado worn storm. And right now, let's just zoom in a little bit closer and make sure that this hasn't strengthened anymore. Or if it's weakened, let's just see what's going on with it. We checked on it just a minute ago. Uh, obviously still some hail with it, likely near Bearden. Uh, let's look at velocity. There's rotation. All right. Has that strengthened a little? Well, in, it looked more potent it, over there closer to Camden. I it was agree. actually moving through the city of Camden. As far as like these latest scans, it looks still looks almost uh, identical to yeah, what we've been watching. Yeah, I don't watching. think it's really strengthened a whole lot more yeah. than that. And that's that's a good thing. I right. really hope we can keep these storms, uh, you know, low in from here on. But uh, we still got storms out there that are going to be tracking across South Central Arkansas for a little while longer. Tornado warning will continue for just a few more minutes here for Northern uh, Calhoun County. Uh, Washita County Camden technically you're still under the warning but that storm has now moved on for the most part and uh, weakened considerably now as it's kind of moved uh, through the Bearden area and it's approaching Chambersville now uh, there's another look at it <laughs> that is a weak looking supercell right there that is just uh, I, I'm you know, not the hook it or the it's barely a hook. You're right. I mean, we're going to stay on it. We still have that tornado warning. Sure. It goes for a few, a couple more minutes. But uh, overall, I think we have seen this peak. 
I hope we have. Uh, but the risk isn't over. Still southeast Arkansas, you're going to have a little while longer to go. Uh, Bearden, this is kind of moving by right now. Harlow, 702. Little Bay, 704. Thornton, 707. Uh, by that point, it's outside of that warned area. Are we getting any word from the National Weather Service right now as to what their plans are now with this warning now that we're within about three minutes of its expiration? They're probably going to keep it up. I've not heard anything as far as them extending it. Right. I mean, uh, as so we, they'll just let it expire. They but will probably from there, let it expire. Yeah. Uh, from there, I think if it was going to be extended, we probably would have already seen that at this point. Right. Uh, but again, we're still watching it here. Uh, right. Want to. Uh, again, let's let's zoom out. I want to do once again a reset and I want to show the tornado watch. I meant to do that a moment ago. Uh, this is still a tornado watch. It's in effect. Have they removed any counties from the tornado watch? They did. Earlier. They did. By the way, they're, they're going to replace the tornado warning with a severe thunderstorm warning. OK, so the, the, the tornado warning down here in Calhoun County has weakened enough that they have decided to replace it with a uh, severe thunderstorm warning. So that'll come here shortly. Let's switch over to a different computer really quick uh, over to the other Max box. And I want to show you the areas still under a tornado watch. Several of these counties, I would argue, could already be removed from this. You can see that the warning, the watch does not include Polk or Montgomery or Yale County anymore. It doesn't include Conway. It, it does include Conway proper, but honestly, I think the worst of these storms have moved on from there. Little Rock areas along the 3067 corridor in northwest, you're in good shape. Areas down here across southeast Arkansas still uh, pretty dicey there. Uh, remember, I, I do want to show uh, once again, Pat, if you can, can you pull up the day one severe risk? Once again, that is uh, the level uh, five risk for severe storms here over east central Arkansas still in place. So uh, we're still going to be watching these storms here. Arkansas storm team is going to be here for you. Keeping a close eye on that. Uh, Pat, I think that's a different map there. You can go ahead and pull up radar again. Um, we'll have that. Uh, all right, right now uh, we are going to turn now our coverage over Tyle to uh, OK, so we are turning now to Tylisa live in Jacksonville. Uh, Tylisa, you've been there for a little while, kind of going through and seeing what's happening. What kind of damage have you seen? Yeah, right now we're in Jacksonville along North Oak Street, where you can see behind me the debris that this tornado this afternoon caused. You can see just this leaned over power line pole. There's been a lot of scattered tree branches that were caused by this tornado. Now over here, we're going to walk over here this way because you can get a better look at just the damage with these trees. You can see trees toppled on top of each other, trees toppled on people's houses. You can also see this truck that has been flipped over. I was told everybody inside that truck is okay. You can also see over here by this stop sign, trees have been uprooted from the ground. Along with this house that's by that stop sign, part of the roof is off. And you can see just more trees snapping in half because of that tornado. Now, we also saw a lot of police officers in this area checking to make sure people are okay. Now, when I talked to some community members in this area, I was told a lot of their power is off. They're hoping it comes back on. Some people have been trying to get hotel rooms in Jacksonville, but they say a lot of the hotel rooms they have reached out to have been booked. They're now trying to get some hotel rooms back in Little Rock, hoping to get some help there. Now I have reached out to the city of Jacksonville. I have been told that if anybody does need help, they need to call 911. Please do not try to do anything yourself. If you need help, call the police and they can come and assist you. We are urging everyone to just be careful especially if you are walking or driving in the city of Jacksonville. Reporting in Jacksonville, I'm Talisa Hampton. Back to you. All right, thanks again. That's Talisa Hampton right now uh, there in Jacksonville. Uh, again, right now we do have that severe thunderstorm warning that's been, uh, that tornado warning down uh, south into Calhoun County. It's been replaced with a severe thunderstorm warning. So now we're going to turn things over to Bob Clausen and Laura Monteverdi with more updates on this damage that's being uh, seen here across Pulaski County. Joel, thank you very much. One word can describe today, and that would be relentless. We have seen a marathon of information and images since about noon, so that's about seven hours. Very few of those 
images are good, if at all. But we have some updates that, uh, that are promising. Uh, there have been some injuries, although those reports are coming in um, slowly, but uh, not as widespread, I guess, the injuries as much as the damages. This is a statewide event that we're in the middle of today. Yeah, uh, Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. just tweeted and is listed the how many people are in the hospital right now. They have not received any reports of death. Mm -hmm, which which we pray that does not that changes but um that does not change but we have that drone video now you could take a look when you look at this video you see the damage and this is starting i believe near rodney param mm -hmm. uh and i-430 that's where that kroger is and then that drone video just takes you out over into those neighborhoods there are a lot of homes the, back there the images that have been coming and have just been um just eye-opening. It's as if um, in the middle of the day everybody is going about their business. Usual when we see things like this and then the uh, the board game of life is just literally tossed about and it's going to take a long time for a lot of people to be able to recover from from what they're dealing with right now. Um, and we know too that the rescue crews are out there. Yeah. Pulaski County Sheriff's Office for one in the metro area said this certainly is not the time to get out and, and look around. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a problem we're seeing. Roads are roads clogged, are blocked. traffic is not moving, and emergency vehicles cannot get in. In fact, the mayor tweeted out an area they're asking you to stay away from. That's by Interstate 430, Rodney, mm -hmm. Parham, Midtown area. Anywhere uh, yeah. in and around Little Rock. Yeah. Uh, because you also have to keep in mind too that there are uh, MEMS and other uh, emergency mm -hmm. crews out there still trying to make sure that people get located. Uh, family members without a doubt trying to make contact with other ones and then of course the power restoration efforts are underway which also means too that a lot of these areas the power lines are down right. creating a very dangerous situation for everybody even the rescue crews so they need a wide berth so they can get their job done and naturally so people can also try to um, wrap their minds around what they're seeing today. I mean, just taking a look at some of these images, and I'm sure a lot of the people that we're speaking to today because the damage, this this started around noon outside mm -hmm. of Hot Springs mm -hmm. when, when it spooled up, and then it just kind of made a bean line to all the populated areas all the way up into Searcy. And our storm team just wrapping up a short time ago, and we also know the town of Wynn suffered a great deal of damage there. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be, uh, you know, and I'll go on a limb, so this, is, this, will, this will be listed as a national disaster. Oh, yeah. the, the state will need a lot of help, and so yeah. will the folks here. Here. Emergency shelters are being set up too. Our community is coming together to do that. There's mm -hmm. a temporary emergency shelter at Hall High School for anyone who has been displaced in North Little Rock. The community center on 2700 Willow Street is open if you need a place to go. And then look at this at Holy Soul School. They have a fish fry going on for people, for people. who just need something to eat. Yeah. Um, our reporters are saying. There are just people on the ground walking around. The Red Cross also opening up a shelter. Um, they opened that up about an hour ago at 6 mm -hmm. o'clock, and that's at the uh, Calvary Baptist Church, and that is on uh, Cantrell Road. So Red Cross, uh, of course, on the ground, and uh, a lot of people. This is Arkansas, and Arkansans are going to be reaching out to help all of our neighbors. We want to take you out now to uh, Gary Burton Jr. He is uh, joining us now live, and I think he's at Shackleford Road. Yeah, that area got Rock. hard hit. We were seeing video of it earlier. Gary, what are you seeing where you are? I mean, you guys, absolutely heartbreaking. I'll say that multiple times in this moment. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. If you just look at Little Rock, it just shatters your heart. I'm here on North Shackerford Road. Just take a look here. This white car is trying to get out. What I was told by a neighbor is that uh, as the tornado was hitting this area, this car was coming and it actually ran over a fire hydrant. That's why you see this water gushing out and into this home uh, that you see. Uh, neighbors here living in this area has been trying to uh, get it get out as this water just continues to gush in. If you look backwards, I'll have my cameraman turn, turn around. Uh, multiple people have been having to evacuate this area. You can see luggages. Multiple people have had their dogs with them, their kids with them, very young. I'm talking infants and toddlers strolling out down this street because they have to evacuate this area. If we turn around to the opposite side, uh, law enforcement is blocking off this roadway because they want to make sure that all of the homes, they don't want anyone staying here because they want to make sure that everything is safe. There's multiple down power lines. If you look, the fire department, this is department nine, it is station nine, excuse me, it's destroyed as well. Just so much damage here on North Shackleford Road here in Little Rock. And this is just uh, a part of 
multiple areas that are damaged in Little Rock. We were on uh, at Breckenridge Village earlier on Rodney Parham. That complex absolutely destroyed multiple businesses figuring out what to do next like eat my catfish and crown crown trophies trying to figure out what is next shattered glass the mcdonald's that's over there that's been working on uh for multiple months that has taken damage as well to cross the street from breaking ridge village the kroger um and multiple businesses over on rodney param just 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 destroyed as you see another another homeowner coming out with their pets um the emotions that i saw when people were coming home from work or wherever they were coming from headed back to north shackle road as they were coming back just the the tears in their eyes the 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 wonder of what's next because they didn't know uh if their pets were okay inside of their homes and they had to beg and plead to get past law enforcement here um so they can get inside and hopefully uh find their pets and get them safe and sound but as i mentioned just heartbreaking I, i'm i'm born and raised in little rock and i've never seen the city like this before and um don't want to see it like this again gary Burton jr i'll send it back to you I want to ask you a question, you know, speaking about being born and raised in Little Rock, this, mm -hmm. times like this, you see folks coming out to help each other as much as they can. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of that tonight. Uh, absolutely. I spoke with uh, a neighbor here. She said that, you know, it didn't take long at all until someone came and brought her a 24 pack of water. Um, I saw some neighbors uh, help sweeping glass off the front door as well. Um, as we mentioned, this gushing of this fire hydrant out here in this home, instead of actually going inside, I saw some neighbors had, had a system with their suitcases reaching into the window, packing things inside, passing it back out, and loading up the car. So yes, uh, the community is stepping up uh, just like Arkansas always does um, when it comes to disasters of such. Um, we're doing what we do. We're Arkansas. Arkansas strong, absolutely. Gary, thank you very much. Appreciate it. He was mentioning earlier Breckenridge Village. That area was just purchased and is going through yeah. renovation, too. All of those shops, there were shops about to move in there, open up. And that's right there off I-430, yeah. busy middle of the day. It's, well, like Ed mentioned, you know, the, the board game of life just gets tossed yeah. around. And you've got to gear up. And I've got to mention, while we have time, that our storm team has done a fantastic yes. job. And this is something, too, that we discussed with Joel yesterday when he was talking about um, mentioning and describing yesterday how he was setting up today and he says you know I really don't want to sound alarmist yeah. and I don't want as people to think that we're crying wolf because last Friday we had a similar situation and we did very well and he said I don't want people to think that you know yeah. we shouldn't let our guard down and that was the point he was trying to make can't yeah. let our guard down and boy we learned that today. Yeah, we get complacent. Mm -hmm. We really do. Uh, Neil Zerang right now is in North Little Rock. That tornado crossed over the river into North Little Rock. Neil, where are you and what are you seeing where you are? We're in Flintlock Road in North Little Rock, and the damage here is very extensive. We're going to walk and show you around a little bit. Uh, multiple homes missing, roofs, trees down all over the place. We had the chance to speak with a couple people. This home, one of the least affected, just some damage with trees coming through a room. Over here, though, a much different story. Uh, homeowner tells me that they're just finding places to put things in people's yards who are willing. They're looking for a friend that they can stay with overnight. Quasi, go ahead and show them what we're looking at over here. This goes down all of Flint Rock Road and then you can just keep looking around uh, across Osage Drive. Homes get a little bit less damage over there but trees falling either into the street or onto people's homes. This is where we saw the worst. There's a lake on the other side of these homes and the, the winds tore off these roofs. We've had lots of crews from North Little Rock Police, City, helping out, clearing the roads. has been the main focus today. That took hours. We saw some cars that were underneath trees. We saw, I mean, just look over here. You can show them quasi. This tree, 
taken out uh, this car, a lot of homes that are having to deal with this, right in this driveway too. I actually spoke to the homeowner, told me this used to be their garage, where you're just seeing now empty uh, areas. There's a tree that you can maybe see through all those um, the car under there. This home right here, same thing. And then if you look down the street, you'll see all these people. Let's help these people pass through. It may be a little bit different, but trees on homes. A lot of people, if they don't have family nearby, they're trying to figure out where they're going to stay. Um, I got to speak to this man earlier. Maybe he'll be willing to talk to us again. We're live right now. You mind telling us a little bit about uh, whenever you woke up, you said that man. you didn't realize what was going on. It was a lot of noise, and I just I had no clue what was happening. You know, it was a lot of banging and crashing, and then just everybody came downstairs, and luckily enough, the the basement saved us. And you said there were a lot of people in the home at the time when you were there. Yeah, yeah, the in-laws and all the animals. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, everyone, as far as we know right now, we don't know everything, but people are safe, uh, but y'all need some help. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to have to totally rebuild. Everything is ruined. Mm -hmm. There's not anything I think we can salvage as far as structure goes. Every tree in the yard is going to have to be cut down and hauled out of here and we got a lot of time, money, and energy that we're going to have to spend here. Mm -hmm. Well, know that Arkansas is sending you prayers, and they do need help down here, uh, Flint Rock Road and uh, beyond, just Osage Drive. So many homes down here. Quasi, if you just want to show them before we sign out. The damage keeps going on. You can see trees snapped all the way in the different distance, and it came all the way down this road. A lot of people just getting home for the first time because everyone was out with their chainsaws trying to clear the road. Uh, other homes just completely fine. So this tornado, uh, picking and choosing um, who's going to have a bed to stay in tonight and who's not. Of course, keep everyone here in North Little Rock in your thoughts and prayers. But we'll send it back in to you in studio live in North Little Rock. I'm Niels Rang. Neil, thank you very much. And uh, I mentioned earlier that this is a statewide event. You mentioned that um, National Guard will be moving out. Yeah, Sarah Huckabee Sanders says National, the Arkansas National Guard has been activated. They're going to be helping local law enforcement as they deal with the devastation that you've been seeing all evening. Yeah, and we're also expected uh, later on this evening, about 45 minutes from now, uh, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. will be holding a press conference updating us and you on the situation that's unfolding in Little Rock um, this evening and will be for the coming months. Yeah. And our Arkansas Storm team, again, they've been on the air since, what, 1 o'clock this afternoon? I think noon? it was shortly after noon because yeah. I remember watching the Joel on the noon show when yeah. the first warning kicked in and it didn't stop. Yeah, and I want to personally thank you guys. You were amazing. I was in my safe place in one of the neighborhoods that got hit. Keeping us safe, I can't thank you guys enough. You're taking a look at outages on your screen, Bob. 90,000, is that correct? 90,000 people without power statewide. Uh, and it's the possibility of that growing, too, is certainly there. Um, anything's on the table at this hour. Mm -hmm. uh, the size of the storm and the amount of storms. Um, it's been a long time since I have seen um, this many tornado warnings. Mm -hmm. um, one right after the other and uh, it just it just didn't give up I mean you sit you sit there and we thought that the storm team did a great job yeah. that they would get a chance to take a breath and just when they would take a breath another, another tornado one would pop warning. right up yeah, yeah. And, and I see those people coming home and I'm just trying to put myself in their shoes they're coming home after a day at work or at school not knowing if they're gonna have a home mm -hmm. to come home to it's it, it's it's gonna be like that for a couple of days the um, but as you mentioned too, that on the bright side of things, the brightest side mm. there possibly could be on a day like this, that the amount of injuries yeah. um, relatively low considering the amount of damage that you're looking at right. um, at some of the pictures. And, and no fatalities reported that, the, that we know hour, of. No I mean, that's usually we would hear about those by the, now. There was a, an apartment complex out in West Little Rock. Mm. I don't know if you've gotten to those images yet, but just destroyed. Yeah. Um, and, and you have to think that Perhaps at the time of day, mm -hmm. these folks were at work that may have saved them from, yeah. from injury or worse. So it's one of those things with tornadoes like this, uh, it's, it's anyone's game. Do we have any pictures? We c okay, we actually, 
We're going to head over to Samantha. We talked earlier about the Kroger on Rodney mm -hmm. Parham uh, and 430. That whole area, Colony West, uh, had a lot of damage, Samantha. Yeah, we're here at the Colony West Shopping Center right off Rodney Parham in West Little Rock. And I've been here really since this afternoon, and there is a significant amount of damage. I want to show you guys first right behind me what appears to maybe be the worst damage where we are right now. There's several shops. There's a State Farm, a Hibachi Place, a Rock City Running, this protein store. And I talked to a few people who were here when these all when this all happened. And actually, a woman who was in the Rock City Running store says that when the storm was coming through, a man was kind of being blown across the parking lot. He was trying to come inside, and the wind was just blowing him in. She says the owner of Rock City Running actually came out to check on him and was blown from outside back into this protein store that's right next to Rock City Running. He he is now at the hospital along with several others as we know being treated for injuries and trust me he is not the only one a lot of the people here have been being treated for injuries have been taken to the hospital this has been a pretty devastating damage as you guys can see now i want to also take you guys to this car right here we were looking at this earlier there's quite a bit of debris as you guys can see but we picked up this big car piece and it appears that this goes right on the back of this kia so take a look at this right here this is supposed to go what we think probably right here so quite a bit of damage where we are right now there's also a car flipped over right behind where my photographer is right now and then there's also a kroger behind that where the roof is totally off when i came here earlier today lots of people were inside taking cover again as i mentioned a lot of people have had injuries and they've been taken to the hospital a lot of people's cars are totally destroyed and so as i mentioned this is really devastating for a lot of people even the ones who weren't here a lot of people have been coming to see the damage afterwards this is a lot of people's you know neighborhood grocery store stores that they come to all the time so this is devastating for a lot of the people here and then, of course, here's the car that I was just mentioning that is totally upside down on top of another Camry right now. As you can see, there's people here on the scene working, trying to clean up already what we've seen so far this afternoon. We're going to continue following this, you guys, and keeping you guys updated on the injuries, what we've seen about damage, and just what we're seeing for the rest of the night. So for now, reporting live in Little Rock, Samantha Boyd, KRK4 News. All right, Samantha, thank you very much. And there are images just like that that are... Hard to take in because they're not normal. Samantha standing right next to a car that's upside down. Yeah, that's my Kroger. I go there, yeah. every, you know, I just went there right. yesterday morning when I see things like that. And I know many of you are thinking the same. There were people shopping inside at the time. We saw yeah. pictures of them huddled in the back. Uh, she mentioned Rock City running. We just want to let you know they were supposed to host the Capital City Classic 10K tomorrow morning. That is canceled. I just want to go ahead and let you know. Look inside those buildings. I mean, the fact that we, again, if we have not heard about any fatalities, yeah. uh, it's just, it's yeah. a miracle the at damage this point. damage puts so many things in perspective. And what really um, kind of raised my eyebrows today is when I heard Joel mention that the uh, mm -hmm. National Weather Service here in Little Rock let me know the magnitude of this storm because then they took cover. Yeah. And they handed operations off to National Weather Service in Memphis mm -hmm. to keep us covered. And I was like, this is a major yeah. deal. And at that point, because I was out, I, I live outside of Little Rock, outside of Pulaski mm -hmm. County, and I had to kind of held back because I didn't want to run into the storm. Into yeah. um, and then once I came on to um, 630, and then I noticed what really caught my eye with three ambulances mm -hmm. going in different directions. Yeah. And it was really, I knew this was going to be for everybody involved, um, all hands on deck, without yeah. a doubt. You mentioned that the emergency vehicles that's the first thing that i heard i walk outside to see the mm -hmm. damage and i just hear the sirens and i just start to pray because that's the first thing i thought of is all these people, people in their homes help. you hear those sirens you know people are in need of help and it wasn't until you get to work and we see the pictures and the videos like this rolling in and you just i don't think we still grasp how big this I storm it's, it's gonna it's gonna be a while before we really get our arms around yeah. just exactly how much damage is out there because the reports <laughs> are going to be coming in mm -hmm. and they're also going to be coming in from areas way outside of the rock we mentioned when yeah. um Searcy, and i know that there's going to be some places in garland county and, and stuttgart got hit as stuttgart, well stuttgart all, all across the state um people are going through this and it's, it's going to be a while before we really get a good picture mm -hmm. of the um the magnitude of this yeah. in fact uh speaking of when here's a, a look at um uh, aerial view of Wynn High School yeah. and you can take a look at the amount of damage that they're dealing with there in the small town of Wynn. Yeah, I, I pray. I think that everybody was out of the school at the time. I don't know if that's used mm -hmm. as a shelter. I'm not sure. Uh, but that entire town, uh, truly, I don't see one spot in the video that I've seen that has not 
had some damage to it, a lot of damage. And it is, this is going to be a situation, and we talk about this all the time, where neighbors are going to be helping neighbors. Mm -hmm. It's going to be neighboring cities helping neighboring cities um, get through this. And they'll rebuild, and they'll rebuild better. I remember when there was a uh, devastating tornado. I can't remember the year. A long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it hit Beebe, and it hit the school in Beebe, and they rebuilt, and they rebuilt a sufficient shelter for the mm -hmm. kids. Um, and th this is what happens out of that. And, and a lot of the schools today have got the... Um, safe rooms those for kids shelters, to get yeah. into in those shelters. So. Yeah, I think about that too. Usually we all head to one town to help, but there's so many different towns, cities, and neighborhoods mm -hmm. that are impacted by this. It just seems overwhelming at this point. Well, and then you think about when you look at the people who lost their homes, then yeah. lost their apartments, it's the, they're calling their friends, hey, do you have room? No, yeah. I don't. I'm looking for room too. Yeah. So this is going to be everyone. We're all in this together, and yeah. we're going to have to help out um, one another. And it's going to be a long time. And as mentioned, you know, the, the kind of um, searching is still going on. Going to get the power back mm -hmm. on. Going to get services back on. Uh, but it's going to be a, a, a slow crawl, as it were, back to the top. So patience for everybody going forward. Yeah, now this is drone video of Little Rock. Uh, you can see the area of West Little Rock. Um, I can't tell you exactly where that is. Um, oh, that is actually where we just were, Colony West. And then back behind that, you have all of those neighborhoods that are behind there. You have a bunch of apartment complex, mm -hmm. com complexes, those homes. Uh, I spoke to someone who lives right off of Old Forge, which is probably right in that area we're looking at. They said their windows were blown out. Their roof was taken off, uh, and many it's of the just, houses in that area are, are the same. It's massive because you yeah. look at some of the pictures, you yeah. know, the, the smaller pictures, and you think that's manageable, and then the shot widens out yeah. and widens out and mm -hmm. widens out, and it's, it's it, like I said, you know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, I don't know if there's paper, enough paper available in this building for me to write down what we have seen today. Yeah and what we're going to see in the, in the coming days. Yeah, you think about that too. We haven't even had a chance to see some of the damage that is out there. I mean, people are we just getting home. Surface. Yeah, and uh, usually, you know, we hear about these tornadoes at night and you mm -hmm. wake up in the morning and you see the I, damage at first light. You know, I, I would say there's a saving grace. This didn't happen at night. Yes. Uh, everybody, a lot of people would be home, would have been in those apartments, right. and none of us would be able to see what was going on. Yeah. We're getting a lot of videos, too, of people catching this funnel coming down. This is in Lake Wellington in Little Rock. You could see it. And, I mean, I saw shots where it was extremely wide. I'd yeah. be very curious to see just how wide this was and what's this rated. This. Um, yeah, you can see it going through. And so many people. Um, I had friends in the Baptist Health Building who were looking out. Mm -hmm. And you're watching this, and you feel helpless. And, and you look at this, too. And when we heard that it was on the ground mm -hmm. and it was moving, you, you just think, okay, two or three minutes right but it just kept going yes. and it kept going and then it was like well it's kind of weakening no it's picking up strength and yeah. it just kept moving yeah I was listening to Joel uh, and we were sitting in our closet that's the only space with no mm -hmm. windows I was sitting there with my two dogs and I had Joel talking and I was just praying keeping my dog safe um, and uh, he was saying this thing is picking up it's looking like it's picking up then hitting back down again picking up so I was praying before it hit Little Rock that it would pick back up again, mm -hmm. uh, but that's not what happened here. No, and it's been, I mean, it's going to be interesting too to see what the track was on this. Yes, because it started, it was headed towards Hot Springs mm -hmm. and kind of went north of Hot Springs, yeah. and thinking maybe that will be the end, and then it just kind of kept kept going into Saline County, um, kind of like running along parallel with uh, Interstate 30, like these things do, yeah. and just head through Saline County right into Pulaski yeah. County, and then right into North Little Rock, and then I, all the way up into Searcy. Mm -hmm. We did just find out that press conference that Bob mentioned uh, is going to be at 8.30 now. It's been moved, and Governor Sanders will be joining Mayor Frank Scott and other Little Rock City officials. So we're going to get a better idea uh, of the, the mm -hmm. scale of this, the damage, um, the injuries. Last check at, at Baptist Little Rock and North Little Rock. At Little Rock, there were 12 patients, four were critical. In North Little Rock, 11 patients, one critical. Uh, so that's, you know, 23 people there. Uh, that were injured in some way but again we have not heard of any fatalities not all those numbers could change though at this press conference and not a bad time too and i'm not sure what the situation is with the red cross but if you're thinking about doing something they're always looking for monetary donations and of yeah. course blood donors yeah. if you get the opportunity and That's if great point, I, yeah. I don't know if their facility is 
in good shape or not, or yeah. not damaged, I'm not sure. Well, but I'm we'll, thinking we'll the one right out, off Shackleford and Markham. Right, so exactly. We, I don't, would, would not be an ideal know. place, but um, mm -hmm. you can contact the Red Cross, and we'll try to get that information from the Red Cross as well, mm -hmm. pass along to you. Yeah. And a lot of this information that we're passing along to, mm -hmm. to you, you were probably not affected by the storm because you have you power. Have power yeah. You have a television Unless you're set, watching on your unless phone. You're, yeah. Unless you're online. Yeah. But if you get the opportunity to pass some of this information along to those folks who are affected and then taking a look at look at the size of that I mean that storm is just a monster. Yeah. When you when you see it and you realize you understand why we had so much damage in this mm -hmm. and this thing just stayed on the ground like you said I want to see the the track of that and just see how far it went and for how long too because it felt like a really long time it did and, if, and it, with, with these things two minutes is a long time yeah. is an eternity especially if it's barreling towards your house yeah. or over your house uh, to think that um this went on for almost it's, it seems like this one an hour yeah. or so okay this is napa valley uh this was one of the areas really hard hit we saw mm -hmm. a an apartment complex on that uh stretch of napa valley that it was heartbreaking to see there were people standing on the third floor and there was no way for them to get down. <laughs> and that's the worst place to be. You know, you want to, I always said, when I lived in an apartment complex, I, you make friends with the people, people on the downstairs. bottom floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they, there, there were people standing up there. Um, I think, I'm not sure that might be Agape Church. I'm trying to see Could that be. stretch. That's kind of, of in that area. Yeah, in that area over there. Uh, but that those images of that apartment complex i know katrin is there we're going to try and get her uh shortly but those images are very hard to look at you know you look at the size of this tornado um and the amount of tornadoes mm -hmm. i mean today is the day that will go down in, in history is the yeah. day the storms came and the claws came out and believe it or not it's not even just us i mean no. we're seeing tornadoes in nearby states too that are massive it's and we've gone through this cycle where it seems like the seasons have been relatively mm -hmm. quiet um, this one seemed to start and you know we had those series Wednesday 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 yeah. and then Friday and Friday and this Friday and here we are yeah I think we are going to end our coverage here on KRK is that correct okay we're gonna check in with uh, with Carmen Rose she's joining us now with an update and uh, hopefully the update isn't another tornado warning no, Carmen you guys have just had a, a short break well deserved fine job Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, the update here is not that we have a new tornado warning, so that's some very good news. I do want everybody to know, though, that we still have our tornado watch, our particularly dangerous situation watch that is still in effect here until 8 o'clock. Now, Pulaski County, we are not under that watch anymore. This is until 8 o'clock, so we still want to keep our eyes on what's going on into southeast and east Arkansas. If we switch over to satellite and radar right now, uh, we are noticing that uh, we're not seeing those severe thunderstorm warnings out there. Uh, so again, things are now starting to calm on down. So satellite and radar will show you we do still have a few thunderstorms over southeast Arkansas. Uh, that is just north of Star City, but I'd say north central, northwest, and West Arkansas, you are now in the clear. So everything is looking okay there. However, we still have that thunderstorm uh, that is closer to 530 that will continue there. These are not severe. Uh, so again, I want everybody to rest easily here as we progress throughout the course of the rest of the evening. And then tonight, everybody should be able to sleep soundly as far as the weather is concerned because we won't be dealing with that severe weather. In fact, if you're in Little Rock right now, you're probably seeing that sunshine. So we still have the thunderstorm over into Pine Bluff. We still have a tornado warning that's extending now into Mississippi, but no active tornado warnings or active severe thunderstorm warnings here across the state of Arkansas. That does include us. So we still have some of those showers that, again, closer to Warren. This has been quite a destructive day as far as those tornadoes are concerned. Again, of course, we've been talking about it. Much of this started afternoon. We had a tornado emergency in Little Rock this afternoon. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this end up being rated an EF3 or above based off of the damage that we've been seeing and based off of everything associated with that storm. We had multiple tornado warnings basically up until this point, closer to 7 p.m., so almost seven hours straight.
of dealing with those active tornado warnings. So everything, though, is clear now over West Arkansas. Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Mina, DeQueen, you're good. Russellville, Dardanelle, Heber Springs, Mountain Home, you're good. We still want to watch for some of these showers basically over the southern half of the state and southeast Arkansas. But Little Rock, we should be able to work on that recovery, restoring power, and helping with that damage. I know how this tornado worked is some parts of the neighborhood may be totally fine. Other parts of the neighborhood, obviously a completely different story. That was the case in Tecamac Village. And that was the case closer to Mississippi off of Cantrell. We have homes that have been damaged and some problems with that, of course. Now I'm wondering, Donna and Kevin, I know that we have them on standby here. They're going to give us some updates as far as that damage. But as far as the weather, I can tell you as a meteorologist in the Arkansas Storm Team, we are now in the clear and we'll continue to see things wind down with the exception of some of those storms over far southeast Arkansas. Donna and Kevin. All, All right. right, Carmen. Thanks a lot, Carmen. So we can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief now that things have calmed down, at least up in the skies, but now the hard work begins. Uh, devastation in and around central Arkansas and a number of areas, certainly a lot to cover, um, but I, I want to focus mostly on, on what we do know, at least at this point, and in terms of injuries, because I know a lot of people are, are wondering where we stand on that. Right. Th this is very fluid and it may change in the coming hours. Um, what you're looking at right now is when high school, um, I'll get to the, I'll, Donna, hold on to the, the uh, injury. The, the thought, injuries, yeah. Let I'll me talk, talk about, about this aerial footage, which uh, Fox 16 just got in, uh, courtesy of a viewer that I reached out to. Um, and she told me that uh, the city of Wynn is just devastated and that they need everyone to keep them in their thoughts and prayers. <clears throat> Ambulances and fire trucks are throughout this small town uh, in Wynn. The high school uh, devastated. Uh, as you can see there, that's what's left of the football field and the track. Um, and the high school obviously uh, uh, took, a, took a pretty significant hit, as well as nearby homes and businesses in that area. Communications are down, which is making it very difficult for ambulances and fire trucks to communicate with one another, to get to people. Um, there are unconfirmed reports of people being trapped. Um, I tried to get that confirmed. I'm still waiting to hear back. Uh, but that is the situation in Wynn, Arkansas right now. So again, keep them in your thoughts and prayers. But closer to home here in central Arkansas, certainly, Donna, a lot of devastation and a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. I, and, and where you left off with the injuries, um, so far, we have not heard of any deaths, and that we are so grateful for, because when you look at this video of the damage, uh, you, you might think someone may have perished. Hopefully that has not happened, but I can tell you UAMS reporting three victims that have come to the hospital um, caught in this storm. North Little Rock Baptist, uh, 11 with one person in critical, condition tonight and uh, in Little Rock 12 people four of them are in critical condition St. Vincent told us earlier they have multiple people that have been injured and, and some of these hospitals can't really spend a lot of time talking about it because they're they're just trying to take care of their patients and Children's Hospital we hadn't heard from them until just recently but they are a level one trauma center for children and they say they have treated some children there, but they could not give us a number, not yet anyway. Let me bring you up to speed also uh, what's happening at the state and federal level. Uh, Governor uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders has already declared uh, a state of emergency in the state, so that will open up resources and money uh, in areas where it's desperately needed. She's also activated the, the National Guard. 100 Ar Arkansas National Guardsmen have been deployed uh, to help with traffic in areas in which roads have been shut down due to downed power lines as well as trees. Uh, they'll also help clear the areas uh, where it's necessary. And then we are hearing that at 830. Yeah, I, I, just, I just got this. Pulaski County Coroner has confirmed one death 
in North Little Rock um, as a result of this storm. And we were just talking about, yeah. ab ab about injuries, but that's the only one that we have so far. We don't have any more information on that. Definitely some sad news there. Yeah. Uh, but just to finish my thought. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. No, that, that's, uh, that's just heartbreaking to yeah. hear. Um, yeah. And it could have been much worse, um, much worse. But uh, we're, we're being told that uh, the Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr., along with Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, will be holding a press conference mm -hmm. uh, at 8.30 this evening. Of course, we'll be carrying that live for you. But, but to hear about the one death, that's one too many. Right. You know, I, I don't want to say there's a silver lining in any of this. No, there isn't. But, but the timing of, of this, of when the tornado hit right around the noon time up until that time, you know, during the daylight hours mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people being at work, not at their homes. Um, that can make all the difference in the world it when it can. happens it that way. Can. You're looking at video here. This is of uh, the Napa Valley area. Obviously, we have drone video um, throughout central Arkansas. We'll be showing you uh, much of that so that you can see some of the devastation. I've seen video that we've been airing on our air where there are folks leaving their homes, you know, with, with all that they can carry, In suitcases, suitcases yeah. and that sort of thing. And many of them, you may have alluded to this, they need a place to stay. There are shelters available. In Midtown, uh, Little Rock, Hall High School, and that's at 6700 H Street. That's a shelter you can go to. In North Little Rock, there's a community center there at 2700 Willow Street. Pets are allowed. Now, obviously, if, if you don't, if you're not at home and you don't have access to a television, but if you know people and they need this information, share it with them. Jacksonville, First Baptist Church, 401 North 1st Street. Um, the Red Cross also has a shelter at 5700 Cantrell Road. We're going to collect all this information and put it in a graphic and have it for you. It will open at 6 o'clock. We're beyond 6 o'clock now. Um, so th those are some of the areas where people can go, at least for right now, until they can find somewhere to stay on a permanent basis until their homes are available. Yeah, this damage is, is widespread. As we mentioned, this all started right around the noon hour um, when, when the first tornado warning kind of surfaced in the Hot Springs area. It then quickly moved up to Pulaski County. And right around the 1.30, 2 o'clock hour, uh, there were roughly 2,000 power outages uh, throughout central, throughout the entire state, actually. But just to give you an idea of how quickly things changed between the two o'clock hour and the three o'clock hour, the power outages jumped all the way up to 53,000. And that was in just less than an hour. Right now, according to uh, what I'm looking at right now, uh, roughly 82,000 people are without power. As we take a look at the power outage map there, um, you can see it's now up to 86,000. The majority of them, obviously, in Pulaski County, which, uh, which took a direct but hit. But you know, I will tell you, Kevin, as, as, as we're looking at that, those numbers like in Lono County and some of the other counties are really increasing from when I last looked at this map. Yeah, and then once it left Pulaski County, it literally jumped the Arkansas River, went through North Little Rock, Sherwood, and of course in Wynn, which we just showed you some of the aerial footage there. So obviously the damage is widespread. The recovery is going to take uh, weeks, if not longer. Um, and there's some more aerial footage of some of the devastation that uh, we have unfortunately been having to report on over the past several hours. And you know, when you get a, a street level view, I mean, you're, you're watching it from high up above. When you get that street level view and you look at some of the neighborhoods, you can really get a feel for what people are going through. Flat Rock Road in North Little Rock. Yeah. Trees down everywhere. That's where I saw a lot of people with their suitcases. We might have some video that we can show you. People with suitcases, you know, folks trapped in their, in, in their uh, driveways trying to get out. Someone hit a fire hydrant and there's water all over the place. But there was a guy that Neil Zarang spoke to. He said, I mean, he, I guess he was sleeping and it woke him up. Uh, I, I wrote this down because it just kind of uh, touched me. He, he says, it was a lot of noise, banging and crashing. We went to the basement and it saved us. 
our storm team coverage, our entire storm team did a spectacular job and emphasized that, I mean, repeatedly, it almost seemed like every other minute, get in your safe spot now, get in your safe spot now, and it certainly paid dividends for that individual as well. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about uh, the, the damage throughout uh, central Arkansas. We, we want to go ahead and check out some of the footage from the Colony West Shopping Center, which, which took a direct hit. Samantha Boyd is there live. And Samantha, uh, just devastation in and all around you. Uh, give us an update on, on how things are going there and what people have been telling you. Yeah, Donna, Kevin, I'm here at the Colony West Shopping Center right off of Rodney Parham in West Little Rock, and I want to show you guys a little bit of the damage that we've been seeing. I want to first show you guys if we can maybe zoom in on this Kroger right behind me. This was the first place that I came to when we got here around 2.45 or 3 p.m. this afternoon. It was the place that at first I thought was going to be the most damaged. When you go inside, you can see the roof was totally gone. Rain was flooding in and there was produce, flowers, champagne bottles all over the ground. Customers were inside there taking cover. And then if we can maybe pan to the right a little bit, hopefully you guys can see the damage I'm talking about just right of that in the little shopping center to the right. There were several stores there where I know that people had lots of injuries. I actually was talking to one woman who was in one of the stores and she said the owner came out to check on a man who was literally being flown by the wind across the parking lot. And while that owner came outside to check on that man, he was flown back into an another store. He's now being treated at the hospital along with several other people who we know are also being treated at the hospital right now. And then you can also see hopefully these cars. There are lots that people are telling me they think are probably totaled. More cars than not in this parking lot have quite a bit of damage. Right now it's hard to see the car that I'm about to be talking about, but there's one car that's totally flipped over. It's on top of another car that's on back. So hopefully later on tonight we can show you guys that car. But again, a lot of the cars here are damaged and then everyone I've been talking to tonight whether they were here or not this is really just kind of devastating for the Little Rock community people who were here of course are traumatized by what they went through we don't go through this a lot here in Little Rock but the people even who weren't here are devastated this is you know where they go to the grocery store all the time this is where they go to the store all the time this other stores nearby this is of course very hard for people in Little Rock to see lots of people coming in and out just to look at the damage and then crews here already here picking up trying to uh, you know just get back on our feet a little bit here in this area so we are going to continue to follow this as you guys um, watch and stay tuned with us and bring you guys more updates so for now I'm reporting live in Little Rock Samantha Boyd Fox 16 News all right Samantha thank you uh, 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 Samantha can't I don't think she can hear us yeah. but um, she showed us the Kroger you go inside of the Kroger, which you can't go inside right now, but earlier we did take a camera in there. Hopefully we'll have some video or pictures that we can show you. It's, it's just devastating just to, to look at um, the destruction left behind that happened inside of Kroger as well as outside. So you can only imagine what those other stores and how they look inside. Those were some powerful, powerful storms that went through there. Rock City running uh, took a, took a, a, an incredible uh, Here we direct go. hit. Yeah, these you are actually able to see and that's, that's the interior right there of Rock City running right there, and you can just see all the insulation blown completely to mm -hmm. the back. I'm told some people sought shelter in the back of that store, and thank goodness they did, or else the injuries may have been much worse. Yeah. Uh, Trek Bicycle is also there. They took a hit. Uh, that's down a little bit further from where we're looking at right now. And let us not forget that right across the street is the Breckenridge uh, Center. Uh, Looney Bin, uh, all the windows are blowing out. They're shut down for the night. Uh, some of the, Jap the there's a Japanese uh, uh, like steakhouse or restaurant over there. You know, they had suffered some damage. So it, it was widespread, especially in that particular area. And one of the places over there that I've, I've my husband and I both like to go to eat my catfish. Another a area. very yeah. popular place, uh, yeah. along with the others, um, had some damage as well. And take keep don't forget this is a shopping center that was just purchased um, by by the Breckenridge, a, a yeah. Breckenridge shopping center, yeah, uh, that was just purchased. So now you know there's there's even more work to be done after all of this, but. Um, this has been quite devastating and station fire station number nine which is also over there was um was damaged as well uh, at 8 30 tonight there's going to be a news conference where we could potentially we will obviously have more information for you but in terms of casualties 
we may learn more about that and hear some new numbers. Yeah, there's some aerial footage of the area that we were just talking about of the Colony West Shopping Center. But if you look beyond that, this is what you'll also see several homes uh, taking a hit as well. Roofs ripped off, um, power lines down, trees down, uh, people without power, people without homes. Um, I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm actually in awe that we haven't heard about more injuries um, and, and, and even deaths. So in that regard, uh, I think we're all extremely grateful, although we do know that the numbers could change as this progresses and the search and rescue efforts continue. But take a look at what's left of some of these areas right here. I mean, it's just widespread massive damage that's going to take a very long time to recover from. I think one of the big things for me, Kevin, is almost being at a point of speechless. And, uh, you know, for someone who works in TV news, <laughs> that's, that's rare. But in all the years that I've gone on 20 years, we, we've been working here going on, on 20, 20 years. years. Yeah. I have never seen anything like this. I remember a few years ago when a tornado um, went close to Dickey Stevens Park and we had some folks from our newsroom who were there watching a game and they had to run for cover. But to, to in my m memory, actually seeing Little Rock being hit the way that it has, I, I, it's just beyond me. And that tornado stayed on the ground for so long. I mean, we, it, just, it just kept moving through, moving through West Little Rock and heading into North Little Rock and into Sherwood. It was just, it was, it was incredible. I also think, and we will be learning in, in the coming days once you know the National Weather Service takes a look and determines the, the, the power of this storm, whether it was an EF2 or an EF3 or EF4. Um, there are times when tornadoes come through and it just levels everything, just, just completely wipes it out. We didn't see as much of that. We saw roofs that were gone, a lot of trees that were down, and damage, not to minimize any of the damage, but um, I, I, I think it's fair to say, and we will find in the coming days, that this could have been even more powerful. No question. I mean, there were so many tornado warnings issued. Uh, again, Carmen and the rest of the Arkansas Storm Team did a fantastic job. Uh, as you just saw on your TV screen, several emergency shelters are up and running at this hour for those who may need assistance. Uh, they're in Midtown Little Rock, they're in North Little Rock, they're in Jacksonville. The Red Cross has also opened a shelter at 5700 Cantrell Road. Um, I mean, th they're pretty much everywhere. A and I will say this is what Arkansas does so well in a time of crisis. Whether it's in our own backyard or in our neighboring states, we rise to the occasion, we help each other out, no questions asked, and we do what is necessary to make sure everyone is safe, to make sure everyone is taken care of, and, and that's what uh, makes Arkansas so strong in so many regards. There's the look uh, when this tornado came through uh, the area of, of Pulaski County. Um, you look at that, your jaw hits the floor, and you sit there and you, and you pray when you're seeing this you know, happening live, but even now, after the fact, you look at that and you just say to yourself, oh my goodness. I know, it's, it's something you certainly don't, don't see very often that no. is for sure not in downtown not not in little rock i shouldn't say downtown but just not in little rock um it's emergency yeah, personnel are currently on site at impacted areas emergency personnel are currently on site at impacted areas of the city of little rock to ensure people are safe and traffic is flowing that was another thing that was happening today in some areas traffic was getting backed up on the freeways all because of of this uh, tornado in addition to the first responders, city public work staff of 80 employees will be working overnight, first on major arterials to ensure roadways are clear. So, you know, at, getting those roads clear is certainly a, a very important thing. You got trees that are down all over the place, and uh, you know, now you got to deal with homes. Um, the governor has issued, uh, has declared a state of emergency because there are so many areas, and we're spending a lot of time talking about Little Rock. There are areas all over the state that have been hit, 
and some of them hit pretty hard. So uh, needless to say, that's, that's why there's a state of emergency in place right now. Yeah, uh, North Little Rock uh, had some heavily hit areas, uh, Amboy, uh, Levy, Indian Hills, even Burns Park uh, taking uh, a hit with some damage there. Um, we're hearing reports of possible damage in Sherwood. Of course, we've talked about the damage done uh, up in Wynn, to, especially to the high school. Um, and I'm sorry, Jessica, our producer, wh where is Burns this again? Burns Park video. Is this the Burns Park video? Yeah, and you can see the tops of the trees there, uh, which is you know something you see all too often when tornadoes come through areas. But I mean, just it's like a razor blade. It just comes through and just shreds the top of everything and uh, scatters it. Uh, for, for miles in some cases, but uh, yeah, Burns Park definitely taking hits on North Little Rock, uh, assessing the damage there as well. Um, but I think moving forward, I mean, when, when you think of, it's hard to really think about moving forward right now because we're really like soaking in or letting all of what just happened sink in and trying to process all of that and also just trying to survive. It's going on eight o'clock, it's getting ready to get dark. People, you know, are looking for a place to stay if they haven't secured a place yet, or they're trying to go through their homes to make sure that they get everything they possibly can to take with them. Um, there's worry too about making sure that your your home is secure enough that no one goes in it. I, I, I've seen video where there are police officers blocking off roads. I would I would imagine that's going to be happening a lot throughout the night because that needs to be monitored to make sure that no one you know tries to cross the line and go into homes that have been exposed. But there's when you think about it and you put yourself in the shoes of someone who's just gone through this. There's so many things that you want to secure, your pets, your, your, your personal possessions, as well as yourself and finding a place to stay. It's an all hands on deck situation uh, across the state. Um, I mean, she, uh, the governor did activate uh, the, the National Guardsmen to, to assist with some of the traffic control issues that you were just talking about. Uh, to help clear with some of the roads uh, so first responders can have direct access to some of the harder hit areas. Um, that is no easy task, mm. especially when you consider the magnitude and the widespread damage that, uh, that we've been reporting on, that we've been showing to you. Um, it's, not gonna, it's, it's not gonna be uh, easy, but, and it's gonna take some time, um, so this is inside Colony West, and you can see the, the, the storm. This is before it and, hit, and, yeah. and Colony West obviously was hit by that tornado. So this was right before it happened. Um, and the video, I'm not sure who this is courtesy of, and it looks like it's about to run out because I'm sure that person had to run for cover as yeah. that storm was coming, barreling right toward them. There was also some damage uh, on Chenal Parkway as well. The, the Baskin Robbins, uh, which is right near uh, Five Guys, uh, Joseph A. Bank, right across the street from Bale Chevrolet, also uh, took a pretty significant hit. Purple um, Cow. Purple Cow, which, which was hit. on uh, Rodney Parham. Um, uh, there's the Baskin Robin damage, uh, and you can see the side of that building just sheared off, all the brick gone. Um, and then it just kind of hopscotched, it appears to have hopscotched from Chanel all the way over to, to uh, Shackleford and Rodney Parham, which is where a lot more damage was done there, but the complete front of Baskin Robbins just blown away, gone. I mean, and these are places that we go to all the time. Sure. And you know, it, it, you take into consideration too, Kevin, that someone, people are not going to be able to work because there's damage yeah. at their place of employment and that has an economic impact that, that they'll have to, to deal with. Purple cow on, on um, Chanel. Purple cow on Chanel. Mm, I thought it was the one on Shackle for um, Rodney Parham. Well, you might be right about yeah. that then. I think you are yes, right about that. Yes, it's over that. near okay. Pulaski County title. I stand corrected, yeah. yes. Yeah. But, you know, but the, the, this, when, when you think about this kind of devastation, it's, it's more than just what we're talking about with trying to find a place to sleep tonight. It's, you know, will you be able to go to work tomorrow? 
you know, uh, I, th there's so many other economic factors that we're going to have to deal with as well as, you know, insurance, bringing in adjusters and trying to figure out how long it will take to get things back to normal. It's going to take some time. Um, this is no easy fix. Uh, that's, that's for sure. I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but, um, you know, in, in I, I still want to come back and, and try and find something positive to say about this. And, and I keep going back to the timing of when this hit, because God forbid if this happened in the dead of night when, when people were at home or people were you know sound asleep, which we've seen happen before in neighboring states and elsewhere, and you wake up the next morning unaware of what you're walking, you know, waking up to, um, I, I just... I, I'm, I just I'm, I'm somewhat grateful that this happened when it did and that people were aware of what was going I on. I agree. I totally agree with you. We want to go to our Gary Burton Jr. Last time we checked in with him, he was at, uh, well, I think you've moved from where you he were before. He was on stagecoach, yeah. Are you still, still on stagecoach? He's on Shackleford. Shackleford. Gary Burton Jr. live. Gary? You guys, it's just a uh, devastating scene out here on North Shackleford Road. I mean, as you can look right here, debris, debris, debris everywhere. I, I mean, street signs blown off. I don't know what this one says. Reduced speed ahead, just street signs and everything you can imagine. Homes destroyed, water gushing out. Uh, the street even down there, you can't see it because it's so dark, but it looks like the street even have a has a crack in it uh, because of these tornadoes. I mean, it's just devastating to see so many families continue to try to walk down this street. But they're stopped by law enforcement uh, because they have evacuated this whole entire road. Um, all those that live on this road has been evacuated, as you can see uh, right here to my left. This family um, has their pets in their hand. Uh, they have to find another place to stay uh, tonight. It's just a sad scene as uh, all of these homes are destroyed. Here comes another family headed, headed to a different location because of this destruction that these tornadoes has caused. We're on the same street as uh, Station 9 for the Little Rock Fire Department. That dismantled as well behind that I took a, a short walk behind that because we couldn't go further just destroyed I mean to see little rock, rock like this is it's just very heartbreaking I can't put it in a, in other words heartbreaking is the is the only way to put it um, I actually met a lady who lives um, in that in this apartment complex right here she's from uh, Iran if, if I'm not mistaken uh, she, she's never experienced something like like this just frightening and tears were coming from our eyes um, just just it's hard to put into words so I'll go ahead and send it back to you all right Gary thank you very much that the water that uh, you may have seen gushing out of the street uh, from an earlier report that Gary did said a car was actually driving down that street lost control and hit a fire hydrant which obviously sprung the the water leak there and now all of that water is cascading into nearby apartments on the lower floors and all the way down the street Cre creating even more problems more on top problems. of what's happening yeah you know i i, I certainly do um, understand what Gary is saying and it's it is hard I mean he's out there in the trenches we're watching it like our viewers are we're, we're actually watching it unfold in, un, in the in the television monitor but this is something I mean this is this is home for us and to to see this happening to our friends and our neighbors and our families is is a very difficult thing to witness it's just so incredible that this morning when we woke up everything was fine <laughs> and then by the time you know we get home in the afternoon it's not okay anymore and it's 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 hard to take in and what really struck me looking at Gary's live shot is now it's nighttime and people are trying to maneuver there's 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 no power they, they don't have any lights I mean they're they're trying to get what they can so that they can get out of there and get somewhere safe it's, it's hard to, to actually watch that. Yeah, we saw in an earlier report that Gary did during our, our continuous coverage here of people leaving that specific apartment complex that he was standing in front of on Shackleford Road. And they were walking down the street, speechless, 
but they had suitcases mm -hmm. that they were and they're rolling them down the street where they were going hopefully a friend's house uh, a loved one's house maybe a, a nearby shelter but w what a powerful image to see them just with maybe a, you know a few items yeah. to get them through the next few days right. but walking down the street with a suitcase after everything they had had just been hit by a tornado you know and and this is some people's worst fear one of their worst fears i was with a group of people earlier um we were on the 12th floor of the jack stevens center at uams and once the storm started coming in and warnings started coming in folks just they just wanted to get out of there. Some of them didn't know what to do. They didn't know if they should just stay there on the 12th floor or if they should get in their car and try to get home. And, and I, I look back on how I responded to all of this and my thought was, oh, we'll be okay. And what do I do, Kevin? I get in my car. And this is around two o'clock when this storm is in West Little Rock. Yeah, at that time, I leave definitely. UAMS, get on I-630, and head toward downtown. That storm is right behind me. And I hear the alarms going off. I hear the siren. I'm thinking, wow, the siren's going off. And then I get into the station. It's like, oh, my word. Yeah. It, and it just shows sometimes we forget how serious or how in a moment's notice your life can change. And I, I think, if, if anything, today was a, a huge wake-up call, a huge wake-up call for me, specifically. I, I also think that, uh, in, in, if considering the time, this was right around the dismissal for a lot of the schools. Mm -hmm. um, the Little Rock School District, along with the Pulaski County School District, uh, I think made, made a very good decision in uh, to not, not dismiss? To not dismiss based on the timing. Um, the kids were, were all safe within the schools, and when that storm passed, then they said, okay, you know, parents, if, if you're able to and everyone is safe, now you can come get the kids. But um, unless they would have made the call to dismiss, like some school districts did, to release the students prior to the 12 o'clock hour or, you know, 1 o'clock, but I think right within that window, it's like, no, we're, we're not gonna let these, these students out just yet until we get the all clear. And, and I think that was, a, that was a smart call on their part. The group that I was with, there was a mother and, and, and she left in the 11 o'clock hour because the school was releasing the, the students at her school. Yeah, yeah. And so, and, and that was good timing, but you're absolutely right. And, uh, you have to make the decision and then you have parents that are coming to pick up their kids now you're going to drive off into potentially into the storm yeah. so I, I agree with you they made the right call we want to check in with neil zarang who's in north little rock a lot of damage there uh, first of all if you could just kind of paint a picture for us tell us where you are and what you're seeing neil not much going on right now in North Little Rock. We're on Flint Rock Road. You can see the uh, police in the background directing people into the neighborhoods. It's very dark, but I think you may be able to see some damage quasi if you turn down here. Um, a lot of debris thrown off of houses. Some is a house right next. Some others you can see power lines perhaps falling down that way. Uh, go ahead and turn right. This home lost part of an uh, entire room. You can see just one wall standing left on this home on Flint Rock Road off Osage in North Little Rock. Uh, I know we can't see a lot right now, but if we want to walk a little bit further down, we've been talking to people on this road in particular. It's been very badly hit, but a lot of progress has been happening throughout the day. We've had North Little Rock energy, public uh, department, um, police all out here taking trees off the road so people can get in, check on their homes. Trees just littered the road. You had cars that were under some of those trees and we've had roofs just ripped off. Um, we got to speak with the homeowners of this home, which thankfully not as bad. Just beyond that though, entire roof ripped off. I don't know if you can see across the street quasi, but a lot of homes experiencing window damage. A lot of people we talked to were in their basements or in an interior room whenever they heard window it's just popping. They heard the roar come across the lake here. And uh, I don't know if you can see that. Is that bright enough? And just 
entire neighborhoods just uh, people looking for other places to stay. Some people are planning to stay in their homes, others are staying with friends, and other people are still working at this hour. We can hear chainsaws in the background trying to get trees off of their home so that they can begin to put a tarp on perhaps before the next time it rains. Uh, we learned that the Pulaski County coroner did confirm at least one death in North Little Rock. We're in North Little Rock right now and there are shelters open. I'm sure y'all are talking about them, but there are lots of people with needs down here, people looking for shelter, um, any sort of hydration, food, and thankfully they're getting a lot of help from their neighbors, but they need a lot more. You can uh, just look out over here. Just look at the trees on either side of the road. Uh, just tree limbs lined up on this side of the road, tree limbs lined up on this side of the road, uh, different debris up in the trees. There's a chair in a tree up here not too far. This car is covered by limbs, and it's the type of thing that we're seeing right here. But you also see it if you go down to the end of the road and you turn right. You go straight, you see it a little bit, but then once you're out of that area, homes start looking fine. You may have a single out of place or it may look normal. There are even homes here that are relatively untouched, but others like this, um, just so much damage that uh, people told me they don't really know what's next. They don't really know what to do whenever their kitchen uh, the fridge got tipped over. There's no roof above their head. They don't know what to do when they're trying to bring everything out and they're worried about looters. It's a good thing North Little Rock police are here. They're hoping to see that presence continue uh, until things get bright again. But you can see emergency crews still at work here in North Little Rock, but we will send it back to you. I know there are important things for everyone to keep their eyes on tonight. You know, and uh, Neil, thanks a lot. And you, um, you, you're showing us some very important stuff, and it goes back to what uh, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. said, is the 80 crews that will be working through the night to clear debris. So just because it's dark outside, they're going to still be working because there is so much work to be done. And it's, it's, as it turns nighttime, I remember when Neil reported earlier, we were able to really, really get a yeah. good feel for what that street looked like. It, it was incredible to see all of the trees and the branches, the limbs, all of that just scattered all through the yards. And I think one home had their garage missing. It was just blown away. But Kevin, you know, um, a friend has been reaching out to me with, uh, with some information. This is something we haven't really hit on. There have been people posting that there are pets that are missing from their owners. And a lot of this, I'm sure a lot of owners are saying, where is my pet? You know, where, where what happened? And there, I, I, I see here with one where a, a woman found this little dog with a, a cute little collar, and not a collar, but a, a little bandana, but it doesn't have a collar. And people are just trying to help other people find their pets. So when something like this happens, I mean, it's scary for, for animals. They get very fearful and they run off. Yeah. And, and oftentimes they can't find their way back home. I saw some video earlier on social media uh, of a appeared to be an injured dog being removed from uh, some of the devastation along Shackleford Road. Uh, um, but yeah, that's unfortunately uh, what happens in situations like this. Um, uh, I just want to remind everyone that it's uh, ten, 10 minutes after 8 o'clock and coming up in about 20 minutes, hopefully, uh, we will be hearing from uh, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders along with Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. Uh, news conference has been scheduled for the 8.30 uh, hour and uh, we expect to be briefed on uh, the latest numbers, um, whether that involves uh, casualties. We know of at least one person uh, confirm, one confirmed death. Um, we know uh, roughly 20 to 25 people have been injured, some of them critically uh, in both Little Rock and North Little Rock. Um, but we will hopefully get a, a better picture of just uh, how much damage is done in central Arkansas from both the governor and the Little Rock mayor. And of course, we're going to stay on the air uh, until we hear from the two of them. It's going on 11 minutes after after the hour, and we should probably just remind you, I'm Donna Terrell, this is Kevin Kelly. 
Next to me, I'm from Fox 16. We're also on KARK tonight. We are doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the storm damage in central Arkansas and throughout the state. Uh, we have reporters that are out right now. We're, you know, part of it is keeping them safe as well. Uh, it's getting nighttime. They're transitioning to, to trying to tell us their stories. But um, we will be on tonight for, for several <laughs> more hours um, just to kind of help you understand what's going on navigate what's happening, try to give you as much information as we possibly can. We're going to go to uh, Tylisa Hampton, who is in, I believe, uh, Little Rock, well, Little Rock Police Headquarters, to give us an update on this news conference that's coming up in less than 20 minutes. Tylisa. Well, in less than 30 minutes, Governor Sanders, the city of Little Rock's mayor and more city officials will be having that press conference at the Little Rock Police Department. And as we wait on that, we know that the city of Little Rock put out earlier that they have experienced substantial damage as a result of that tornado that passed through central Arkansas. We were in Jacksonville earlier. We saw a lot of that damage. We know earlier people have seen a lot of damage also in parts of Little Rock. And as a result, the city has set up temporary emergency shelters for displaced residents, and that will be at Hall Stim Magnet High School. They said that shelter is currently open and accepted for the impacted residents. Now, we'll have more information for you later tonight, and we'll be streaming that press conference live at 8.30. So make sure to watch KARK.com, and also you can tune in at Fox16.com. Reporting in Little Rock, I'm Talisa Hampton. Back to you. All right, Talisa, thank you very much. Thanks, she mentioned the Hall Steam Magnet High School. There are also several other sh uh, shelters shelters out there. Now, I do realize that there are a significant number of power outages, but if you have the capability of communicating with people that you know who are without power, uh, I do want to pass along some important information about other shelters. Uh, we do have some graphics, too, uh, to back that up, but there's also uh, a shelter at Midtown Little Rock at Hall High School. North Little Rock has one at its community center on Willow Street, and there's one on Jacksonville that uh, Tylisa mentioned uh, because there was damage done there. That's at First Baptist Church which is on North First Street. And then the Red Cross also has a shelter set up on Cantrell Road. So several shelters ready to help those who may need it. And um, Laura Monteverdi uh, just sent out an email to us. There's another place where you can go. The executive director of Wolf Street, Justin Buck. Good. Yeah. He said that um, they're gonna be open all day tomorrow. Breakfast at eight o'clock, this is all free. Um, at 12, uh, they'll have lunch, dinner at 5. So breakfast at 8, 12 o'clock lunch, dinner at 5. He is asking, however, for volunteers to come and help get the word out for people and just to, just to help. So uh, share that information. Let people know that there's somewhere they can go tomorrow to get food. Um, if, if they need it, they could probably run in and run out. It's a place where they can go to charge their phones, use the bath water, I mean, excuse me, use the bathroom, get water and coffee. And, um, and he said, we'll be here to triage any uh, immediate service needs. Everything is free, but they need volunteers. This is Wolf Street. The video you're looking at is on some of the damage on, on Cantrell Road, the Pulaski County title building, if, if you're familiar with that, which is right near the Purple Cow. Uh, but you can see some of the damage there. On, on the right side of the building, as you look at this video, well, uh, the right side of the building uh, was, was sheared off. I mean, you could literally see right inside the office, uh, and see some of the offices. You could see desks. Uh, again, on the right side of that building, not from this vantage point, but I have seen other videos and photos of the Pulaski County title building there, and uh, obviously that took a direct hit. Just down the street, uh, not far away from that building, is the Purple Cow, which many people are familiar with. That's mm -hmm. where we go for the Purple Shakes, the hamburgers, the French fries, the good times. That took a hit as well, along with several other stores that are there, including a liquor store, which, which took a hit too. But and, and like I was saying before, Kevin, the, for many people, this is where they go to work. I mean, obviously, there are people who own these, these stores and restaurants, but this is where folks go to work. This is their livelihood. And, and now they're going to have to deal with that. So maybe their home wasn't hit. 
maybe maybe tonight they're sitting at home and they're resting and they're relaxing but when they get up in the morning they won't have a job to go to so this is just it's it's so widespread when when something like this happens it's not just the people who take the direct hit it's 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 other people as well oh it has a ripple effect no question yeah um again aerial footage of some of the damage um this is obviously in Little Rock. Uh, I, I believe that's the Colony West Shopping Center on the lower right hand uh, of uh, lower of right the hand of the video. There, there's, there, there it is. There, uh, that's the Kroger on the upper left, and those are some of the other businesses on the right. But as as it, as it pans off, and you can see some of the damage to the homes mm -hmm. directly behind the Colony West Shopping Center, and and it, and it goes on for quite some time. And that was the path of this tornado before it jumped the Arkansas River and went over into, into North, Little Rock. North Little Rock, Burns and Park, and Sherwood, Sherwood. On, on its way up to Jacksonville, and of course, eventually up in Wynn as well. It's going to be interesting when we do get information from the National Weather Service. You know, they come in and they survey everything and they give you, you know, exact numbers and figures and tell you exactly what the storm did. Obviously, we can see it. We can show you the video. Some of it is quite obvious. I, I wonder, though, um, what else they'll be able to tell us about this storm. It w was this one tornado that just kind of hopscotched, you know, from city to city to city? Or, or did other ones develop? Because there were so many tornado warnings issued, uh, and Carmen Rosa, along with the rest of the Arkansas Storm Team, doing a spectacular job, which is what they do day in and day out, especially when severe weather hits. But you have to wonder, you know, what, was this just one tornado that, again, hopscotched all the way up? Or, you know, were, were there more tornadoes that we have yet to confirm or I know about? I remember when, when we were in the heat of things, when all of this was happening, and, and, you know, obviously I couldn't say a whole lot to Carmen. She was very busy trying to, to track the storm. But I did whisper to her, I said, is this one tornado? And she said yes she at did. the time. Okay. Yeah, at the time she she said yes. So it, it's 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 amazing that it stayed on the ground as long as it did. What I wonder is, you know, if it stayed, I don't know. I mean, it, if it was consistently on the ground or if it was elevated at some point and then come back down or you know, I, I'm I'm no expert when it comes to you know these storms, but I I I, I do know the the stories that we've told and. Um, and, and what I've learned from our meteorologists here. Um, but one thing we all know about them is they can be very, very disruptive and devastating. Yeah, Juliana, Joel, Pat, Carmen, all just, I mean, they did, they did a great job. A, yeah. a great job of telling us where it was, when it was gonna hit, when we needed to be in our safe place. Um, I mean, you, you can't put a price on that kind of information because uh, it's, it's invaluable, it really is, especially when things uh, crank up as, as high as they did earlier this afternoon. Uh, we are getting close to the 8.30 uh, uh, mark, which is when uh, the governor and the Little Rock mayor are scheduled to hold that press conference. Uh, uh, really looking forward to hearing what they have to say, what resources will be made available to those who need it, um, and what their game plan is moving forward. Uh, in light of the devastation that we've seen throughout central Arkansas. So, you know, in addition to that, the question will be, what will tomorrow bring? What <laughs> will tomorrow bring? That's a tough question to answer. Well, it is, but um, I, I think we'll see a lot of people trying to go back home, trying to retrieve whatever they can. Um, I, I, this is going to be a story that we are going to be covering for a very, very long time. One thing that I will say pertaining to your question is, is you will see our Kansans coming together and uniting uh, and, and coming out of the woodwork from areas that didn't see any damage anywhere, but they will be coming down t to help out where they can and when and if it's safe in those areas. because. That's what our Kansans do. You're familiar with Donnie's foreign, foreign auto, right? You, <laughs> yes, you, you're I am, familiar man. with, yeah. Well, yeah. there's a guy that works there, and he's one of the people who will make sure that you get in and your car gets fixed or whatever it is you need. That's Todd. Todd sent me a message, and he said Donnie's was not hit because we know that storm was in that area. Sure. But he said that they stood there and they watched that storm go right by. When I say storm, I'm talking about the tornado. They watched it. 
go by. But what triggered me to tell you that was when you said what Arkansans will do, they will come in and step up. He said they left there and they went to North Little Rock to help people. That's what they did. That's what they did. After witnessing all of that devastation right before their eyes, they, they hightailed it to North Little Rock to do what they could to help people there. The video you're looking at right now obviously is of the tornado. We are looking west, um, out uh, west Little Rock, um, which is <laughs> where I live. So when I saw this video, yeah, I was, uh, I'll, I'll say it, I was freaking out, mm -hmm. wondering, you know, is, is my home going to be okay? Are my neighbors going to be okay? Um, but, you know, you, you look at that and the size of it and how fast it's moving. Uh, this was right around the, between the 2 o'clock hour and the 3 o'clock hour in, in West Little Rock. And uh, that's, an, that's some impressive, impressive video right there. It really is. And, and, and I can vouch for what you just said because you, you were very concerned about that. We were sitting here on the set while uh, our storm team was activated yeah. and we were watching video and when we first saw this video that was one of the things you said and then you said to me it's like Vutana, that's not that far from your home either that's true and yeah. so um you know so i got on the phone and 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 made a a, a call to to see if everything was okay yeah, but this may be the only time i was grateful that my wife was not home mm. <laughs> right you know Right, um, or that you weren't there either. Well, that's well, true, especially yeah. you know the the not knowing what was going on yeah. at the time and not realizing how close it was. But as it as it turns out, that storm that that tornado was just a few miles from our homes. It was, yeah, just a few miles. Actually, we want to check in now with another one of our reporters who has been extremely busy doing a great job for us. Let's check in with Katrin Asaf. She's near Napa Valley. Katrin, what do you have for us? Okay, yeah, guys, we are here on Napa Valley Drive. There are a number of apartments down this road that have been damaged by this storm. For example, these are the Lennox apartments. You can hear uh, that chainsaw that is trying to get rid of these. But where the light is hitting, look at this. Just the amount of damage that we're seeing here um, from the amount of, uh, of trees. You can see that that fence is actually bent in half. There are sheets of metal. Um, and there are still people coming out of these apartments. Uh, they're coming out with suitcases, with their dogs, with their families with their children anything they can carry to try and find some place to stay tonight because they can't stay here you can't see her right now but over here on this other side this is another apartment complex where there are literally walls of this building ripped off because of the force of this storm earlier today we could actually see into those apartments and we could see what was left behind as people scrambled to get out now again still a lot of folks here even without power trying to pick up the pieces and see whatever they can grab in order to get out uh, but a lot of destruction down here also on Napa Valley Drive. You won't be able to get this way by car and you won't be able to get that way. And down that way is by the Markham Shackleford area. And over here is closer to uh, Rodney Parham. So Napa Valley Drive is completely shut off as these people are trying to deal with the damage. But again, I mean, just incredible images, even in the dark. But during the daytime, I can tell you it's it's a lot worse as well. So that's reporting here on Napa Valley Drive. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated, but that's the latest. Just uh, incredible amounts of destruction and probably, I would guess, hundreds of people displaced from their homes tonight. And thank goodness those shelters, shelters are available. Some of them, I'm sure, will we'll go there. We would be talking with our reporters, but, you know, we're dealing with the effects of the storm as well. They can't hear our conversation, so we can't ask them questions because we certainly would. Uh, but um, I, I am just uh, uh, amazed at the devastation, the widespread devastation between Little Rock, North Little Rock, Sherwood, Jacksonville. It's just, it's just, it's almost hard to comprehend um, how bad it is. And, and, and the thing is, you can't really see it tonight. I, I, if, you, if you're just now tuning in, you, you missed out on the video or the live shots during the daytime when you could really, really get a, a good feel for the devastation because it is, it's massive. It's actually massive. Yeah, re it reminds me in some ways, and by no means am I comparing the two, but it does remind me of the 2014 EF4 that went through Valonia and Mayflower in terms of some of the visuals that we've seen in parts of central Arkansas today. Uh, obviously, the one in Bologna and Mayflower uh, appeared to be much worse, and we know that after the fact. But in terms of what happened today, we, we really 
don't know entirely just how devastating this storm was until the National Weather Service uh, gets a chance to go out there and take a closer look at the damage, the path of this tornado and the storm. And what was interesting is, is the Nor National Weather Service, which is based in North Little Rock, actually came out at one point and said, you know what, we're shutting down, we're handing the baton to the Weather Service out of Memphis to cover this for us because we have to take shelter now ourselves. And so they, they turned everything over to the National Weather Service based out of Memphis to continue monitoring the situation here in Little Rock as well as our meteorologists. When you, when you think about that, you, it, it really <laughs> makes you realize Rise. just how bad things got today. Yeah. Uh, when, when the National Weather Service people, the ones who work to keep us safe, to keep us informed of storms, had to step away from what they were doing and run for cover. I said right towards so, them. Yeah. yeah, it was that that was some storm that was that was barreling toward them. And, I, and forgive me if I, I keep saying storm. I, when I say storm, I am I'm talking about a tornado. I don't think anyone you, it, normally, Kevin, when when things like this happen, we don't say that it was a tornado. We, we wait for the National Weather Service to, to tell us. It. I don't think anyone will argue with us. We, first of all, we see it. <laughs> and, and number two, we see the aftermath of it as what we're seeing right there, clearly a tornado. In this particular instance, yes, you're right. But there obviously have been, you know, severe thunderstorm warnings where the winds are just Straight as powerful and cause Straight just, line. you know, significant damage as well. But, uh, you know, we, we've been showing you the video. Uh, several people have seen the video uh, or either saw the tornado uh, personally up close and personal and fortunately uh, did not get injured as a result. Thank goodness. But, you know, I'm, I'm still wondering, um, how long this tornado was on the ground, um, how big was it, um, how much or how long was the path of destruction, did it play hopscotch as it continued to, to move uh, you know, through a number of different cities uh, within, the, within the state of Arkansas. But yeah, um, and, and, and as of right now, as of 8.28 p.m., um, we're only hearing of one confirmed death at this point in time, which, which is astounding to me, considering uh, uh, what we've been showing you and what we've been reporting on. Um, we know at least more than 20 people have been injured in both Little Rock and North Little Rock, uh, several of them in critical conditions. So our thoughts and prayers are with them, but this could have been a, a, a much, much worse situation based on the size of that tornado that we've seen. Uh, Kevin, I, yeah, sometimes uh, it's funny when we're working together because you, you start talking about exactly what I was getting ready to, <laughs> to go to. That's 19 years of being together, Donna, you know. I, <laughs> you I, finish my thought, I finish yours. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, we are still waiting on the, the, the mayor of Little Rock and the governor of the state to hold a, a, a news conference and fill us in with, uh, with, with what's going on and what has happened. But uh, we can tell you, uh, just updating these numbers uh, in terms of what we have right now in, in, ter in, in, in terms of deaths and, 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 um, and injuries, uh, there has been, Pulaski County has reported one fatality mm -hmm. from, from this, this storm. Baptist Hospital in North Little Rock um, 11 patients have come in, one in critical, and it, for Little Rock Baptist Health, 12 patients, four of them in critical. Uh, UA, UAMS still reporting three people. CHI St. Vincent, multiple, multiple patients. They haven't given us a number. And Children's Hospital, a level one trauma center for kids. UAMS is a level one trauma center for um, for, for adults, but Children's Hospital, they said they don't know how many they've actually taken in in terms of children who have been injured in this storm, but they have certainly had some. So that's what we know so far. We're hoping that, uh, that once we have this press conference, they'll be able to update us with the numbers. Obviously, these hospitals are very busy with, with what's going on, and they can't always answer our questions as quickly as we would like for them to do so. 
Just took a quick glance at the power outages again. Um, it's, it's holding steady still a, a significant number of, of customers without power, roughly uh, 78 to 79,000. Um, thank goodness the storms have have pushed through. Is that that's not just Pulaski County? No, that's for that's for the that's entire why, that's for, for the, the state. That's for the entire state. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, to get those customers back up and and online, that is going to be no easy task. I, I wonder if the governor will uh, say that, you know. Uh, resources from neighboring states are, are heading in our direction to help us because uh, last week when that uh, tornado went through uh, Rolling Fork, Mississippi, I mean, our Kansans quickly responded to go down there and help them. And now the roles have been reversed, so you wonder if our neighboring states uh, will be offering assistance, especially when it comes to restoring power as widespread as this is. And once again, we should probably remind you of the <coughs> shelters where people can go tonight. Yeah. Um, we just saw Katrin Asaf with her report, and she saw people grabbing whatever they can, whether it's their pets, their children, their belongings, whatever they can, to leave and go somewhere. Um, we don't know where they're going. I'm sure some people have family. They have friends that they can visit. But there are other options. In Midtown Little Rock, Hall High School, that's a place. That, that, they're providing shelter there. That's at 6700 H Street. In North Little Rock, the community center there at 2700 Willow Street, and they specified that they will take pets. Also, Jacksonville First Baptist Church, 401 North First Street. And the Red Cross is providing shelter at 5700 Cantrell Road, and they are open now. We also have um, on the screen Hall Steam, uh, which I, I just mentioned, Hall High School. Uh, transportation would be available to Emanuel Baptist Church, uh, and, and you have a number there that you can call. Rock Region Metro, they are available. Well, they were available until 8 o'clock. Uh, providing transportation and I do need to mention Wolf Street yeah. Wolf Street they're not necessarily taking people in um, to, to provide housing but starting tomorrow morning bright and early at 8 o'clock they will have breakfast breakfast for you so if you want to go there and and get a bite to eat it's open 8 o'clock for breakfast 12 o'clock for lunch and I believe it was 5 o'clock for dinner tomorrow. They're looking for volunteers so reach out to them if you feel like you want to, if there's just something you want to do, it's like I, I wish there was something I could do to help, well Wolf Street would be a good place to start. We've been on the air uh, non-stop uh, for so long that my little laptop here is is, is dead. Whoops. But. Uh, Mine still works. <laughs> no, I was just making a point <laughs> of, of how long uh, this has been going on. I mean, this, this really kind of kicked up at the noon hour uh, when we were uh, on the air on the KRK side uh, with the noon newscast. Joel Young informing uh, viewers throughout central Arkansas to be prepared, and uh, he was spot on. And that's when uh, we activated the Arkansas Storm Team on both Fox 16 and KRK. And then that's when just things really picked up uh, when that first uh, tornado warning was issued in Hot Springs and it quickly expanded and went into Pulaski County, which is uh, what we're looking at is some of the damage along some of the interstates. Um, roads were backed up uh, along the freeways. Um, uh, that, that tornado crossed the I-430 and Rodney Parham uh, area and they just brought the traffic to a dead a stop. stop there and were not letting cars go underneath the overpass because they it's were concerned about all the debris in the road first off and then also the the structural integrity of the of the overpass That's after true. having a tornado just pass through well let me just say um, it, it, March 31st we're gonna remember this day for years to come that is for sure and so are other people who will be coming here to help us a volunteer team with Southern Baptist of Texas Convention Disaster Relief. Southern Baptist of Texas Convention Disaster Relief. They are dispatching people to Arkansas to, uh, to, to help with the tornado outbreak and help with See, the cleanup. I was just so talking about that. Our I neighbor, know, here, I know, boom, Kevin. Just like that, how do, it how, do, how do you know these things? It's mental <laughs> telepathy, I think. Um, they will be um, feeding units on their way uh, to Little Rock. Um, they're, they're going to start feeding 
people, they're going to set up a mobile kitchen. I probably yeah. Forgive me because I'm reading this as I go along. They're going to set up mobile kitchens to support families affected by the storm as well as first responders. And they're saying that their hearts are going out to their neighbors here in Arkansas. So we appreciate that. I'm sure in the days to come, in the hours and days to come, we will be um, greeted by other uh, folks from other state coming here, states coming here to help us because Arkansas always sends people yeah. to other states where disasters like this have hit. We always do that. And so now some people will be uh, returning the favor. And they also said chainsaw teams and chaplains are ready to head to Arkansas when called upon if mm -hmm. they are needed. Uh, that may be the case. We may find that out when this press conference starts. Uh, but it's very interesting. Uh, they also said the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention Disaster Relief that they're working in cooperation with Arkansas Baptist Disaster Relief who are shorthanded because they have teams responding to last week's storms in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Carmen Rose just just sent this out, and I, I, I'm pretty sure she's okay with with me going with it. Um, the National Weather Service uh, in Little Rock they're going to start their surveys tomorrow morning yeah. for Hot Springs and Little Rock, and she also broke down um, the tornado was issued tornado warning excuse me was issued around two o'clock for for Little Rock. 218, I didn't hear what was just said. I, I, I want to confirm this with, with, with uh, are, you say, are you saying two dead in St. Francis County? Is this, in, 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 this is in addition to the one person? So we, now have, we now have a total of three fatalities that have been confirmed. In the state of Arkansas. Two dead in St. Francis County. Okay. Because, of, because of the storm. Yeah. Um, okay, something weird just happened, and I just lost that. Um, here, I think what you were I was looking just at that. Looking at. If you need it there. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. I guess my computer is wanting to give up on right. me. Right. Okay, so tornado warning issued um, 2 o'clock for Little Rock. By 218, rotation was over Canis and Bowman. 220, debris was lofted in the area near Napa Valley Drive. 225, are you following me here? Yep. Um, passing over, it was passing over Markham and there was rotation around the promenade in West Little Rock. 228 today, tornado emergency. And that was when phones started going off. All, all over the place. All over the place, yeah. even here in, in our studio. Um, uh, Little Rock turned over uh, to Northwest. Okay, so 228 was the tornado emergency and that's when uh, the Na National Weather Service in Little Rock had to turn over things, you mentioned this, had to turn over things to Memphis, to the, Nor to the National Weather Service in Memphis because they were ducking for cover because that tornado was coming directly within their path. Um, then 231, it was crossing over Military Drive near Burns Park. So this kind of answers your question too in terms of the, the path and whether it was staying on the ground. 236, it was at Sylvan Hills near Keel Road, Keel yep. Avenue. Keel Avenue, yeah. 245, it was in Jacksonville. 255, it was south of Cabot in Parnell. And by 306, Butlerville. So from 2 o'clock to 306, an hour, one hour, devastation. Nothing but devastation hitting homes, businesses, you know, crossing over the river, going into other cities and towns and just creating havoc. Just one long tornado. Preliminary report, but that's definitely well, this is, what this it looks is, like. Yeah. yeah, this is from Car Carmen Rose and we are meteorologists here. We, we appreciate that, Carmen, to kind of help us put this all into perspective. You're looking at uh, drone footage right now of of the area right near colony west shopping center as we await the press conference with governor sarah huckabee sanders and mayor frank scott jr um i believe we're getting ready to go to that so let's go ahead and check in and see what they have to say Brian, come on. 
you and Brian too. I'm stuck. I'm Sanders. Somebody it wasn't me. Amen. I still have the audit. Making sure everybody's paying attention. Um, as we all understand, uh, here in the city of Little Rock and Central Arkansas, and of course uh, the state of Arkansas, we've all experienced a devastating uh, tornado, uh, which has created a state of emergency uh, for the city of Little Rock, Central Arkansas, and the entire state. Um, it grazed the heart uh, to see uh, many of our residents who are now uh, been displaced uh, across the city as a result of these tornadoes. Uh, we want to assure uh, the public uh, that your first responders are going above and beyond to ensure public safety, health, and welfare. I couldn't be more proud of the work that they're doing and will continue to do throughout the night, the weekend, and the coming days. Uh, what we want to share with you today is that I've been in constant contact with Governor Huckabee Sanders. We've requested uh, the state of the emergency. She has uh, dutifully accepted that and is already under coordination with all of the state parties as well as federal partners to ensure that we have what we need when we need it to ensure that we are responding to our residents as quickly as possible. Uh, today, uh, you'll hear from a number of different individuals, particularly from uh, the response mission from our chief of Little Rock Fire Department, Delphon Hubbard, as well as the Little Rock Police Department acting chief of police uh, during this period of time, Andre Dyer. Uh, we have uh, our Major Casey from the Arkansas State uh, Police and we'll continue to share more information uh, throughout this time. Uh, but again, we want to send the message to the residents uh, that we are here for you. We understand what's going on. Uh, we're rapidly working towards uh, all health and safety efforts at this very moment. Uh, so please know uh, that we got your back. Uh, that we're here for you. We also, uh, most importantly, are praying for all those that have, have been impacted by this tornado. Uh, we know uh, that God will prevail as always. Uh, Governor Sanders. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, we are so grateful for your partnership in, in this very difficult time for our city. Uh, as each of you know, um, Today has been a very hard day for the state of Arkansas, uh, but the goodness of this is that Arkansas and Arkansans are tough and we are resilient. Uh, and no matter what comes our way, uh, we will get back up the next day and keep moving. Uh, we will help our neighbors. We will ensure that every Arkansan uh, who needs assistance has it. Uh, our message and our mission is really simple. The people come first and the paperwork will come second. Uh, we have been working closely closely with Mayor Scott as well as state and local officials around the state of Arkansas who have been impacted. Uh, everyone from our sheriffs to our state police, National Guard. As most of you know, we activated Arkansas's National Guard and we have approximately 100 guardsmen that are on the ground uh, offering assistance, not just here in central Arkansas, uh, but other areas of the state that have also been impacted, like Wynn, Arkansas, um, where we are pulling all of our resources together. Arkansas State Police uh, as well as law enforcement here in Little Rock. Our fire department have done a heroic effort uh, and have been working diligently from the moment that we knew that storms were headed our way to assist the people of our state. Uh, I can't thank you enough for um, just the enormous amount of time and effort that each of you have put into and will be working on over the course of the next several days. Uh, we are very thankful not just for your work today uh, in this moment, but frankly the service that you bring to our state every single day. And uh, we are never more grateful for our law enforcement and for our National Guard uh, than we are in moments like this. And so we thank you on behalf of the entire state for the work that you're doing. We stand ready to help. If people need assistance, we ask if it's an emergency that you call 911. Uh, if it is not an emergency situation but you need assistance, we encourage you to reach out uh, to your local 
County Emergency Management officials. You can find those resources online. Uh, Arkansas and the state government stand ready to offer whatever assistance is needed. Uh, we've offered that to the mayor here as well as other cities across the state. I also spoke with the FEMA director, uh, Chris Well, uh, earlier this evening and have already requested federal assistance and they are working quickly to make sure that any resources that we need on the ground here will be provided as well as Arkansas already declaring a state of emergency providing resources for those towns that have been impacted. Uh, thank you again Mayor Scott for uh, your partnership in this process and your leadership as well as all of those in our law enforcement community that are stepping up today and helping our citizens get through this. With that I'm going to turn it over uh, to Lieutenant Colonel Aaron from State Police to give a few updates and comments. Uh, currently, we have troopers deployed in the Little Rock, North Little Rock metro area, uh, assisting Little Rock, North Little Rock Police Department, Jacksonville Police Department, Cabot Police Department. Uh, and also, we've got our emergency response troopers responding to Cross County, concentrated in the area of wind that right now appears to be the hardest hit. Um, and this is going to be a continued operation. Uh, we're assisting other agencies as these requests come in. Uh, right now, our efforts are focused in this Little Rock, North Little Rock metro area and Cross County. Thank you. We'll now have the response um, mission from Chief Delfon Hubbard and then following him, uh, Chief Andre Dyer. Good evening. Uh, Little Rock Fire Department, upon this initial um, impact of this storm, this tornado, uh, we've responded to overturned vehicles, heavy damage to residential and businesses in that community, uh, along with down trees, down power lines, uh, ruptured gas lines. Uh, they faced a lot of um, various uh, mitigating emergencies there. Uh, one of our fire stations is in that area on North Shackleford. Uh, fire station number nine was heavily damaged, uh, so that limited their ability to respond to those uh, calls for emergency. However, they did serve as a shelter in place for many members of that community who came to that fire station seeking uh, shelter from the storm. Uh, we have been in great partnership with uh, MIMS as we uh, triage treated and transported several of the individuals that was in that area that needed medical attention. Uh, we also assisted Public Works in their means of uh, clearing the trees from the uh, streetways, the down power lines, uh, I mean the down power poles in those particular areas to assist with our emergency vehicles being able to get in and out of those areas. And even with uh, uh, our fire station being down that's in that particular area, we had several of our other neighboring communities such as Conway, Maumel, Bryant, they came in to assist us. They're still here in the city uh, lending a helping hand wherever we may need uh, that particular assistance. And uh, also we partnered with our police department going door to door, uh, ensuring we had accountability of all those residents that lived in that community so that there would be a means of either rescuing those individuals or um, just getting them out of that particular hazardous environment. And so we were pretty successful at that. That particular number is not available at this time as to how many people uh, we were able to move from that area, but that's a continuous ongoing assessment of the fire department. Chief Dyer. Yes, sir, thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Assistant Chief Andre Dyer. Uh, this is a very horrific event that occurred here in our city today, but you can be rest assured that the members of this city's government the fire department, mayor's office, uh, the police department is doing all that we can to make sure that uh, you do not become victimized twice by the actions of anyone that wants to come into the the affected areas and, and try to commit any type of crimes. We are here in full force along with state police, uh, a few other entities. I want to I say thank you to all of the surrounding departments that wanted to come